Three minutes, three minutes. Can we uh, reset the time? We're getting ready for the first game of the day, Champions Cup 2022. And I have to say we are a little bit excited here with all the technical stuff still uh, in fine-tuning. 
cameras are on and Lisa will join me um, soon here in the live stream. Welcome everybody here to the first Champions Cup after the start of the pandemic. First big international competition since the start um, of the COVID pandemic. And we're super happy. I talk to a lot of people right now and everybody's excited to be here to see each other again and to play into rugby, in, uh, on the water rugby on an international level against each other. So welcome, Lisa. Good morning, Wolf. Good, Good morning, morning. everyone. Oh, and now the screen is black. Yes, we have some uh, news, uh, new features here on the screen. You can see the, the time uh, on in this red uh, line on the bottom. And uh, give us uh, probably one to two uh, games to fine tune everything. We have to check if you can hear us. We will also go into the live stream to see the comments. All the times you see everywhere in Central European time, of course, uh, this is um, UST plus one. And um, yes, the first game is Molde from Norway playing in blue against Luxembourg One in minute. white. Um, it is going to be a quite interesting game. Um, not very even from the level, um, but it it will be good. A good start to the day. We have as referee as you hear Otto's from Colombia and. On the other side, that should be Serkan, I guess. Yes, yeah, Serkan Baskül. Um, I just talked to him. <coughs> he, the last time he was here was 2017 in Champions Cup. He's so happy to be here. Mm. We've been in contact in the time, and uh, he was in Graz too. And uh, it's, it's very good to see. He wasn't? Oh, yeah, I thought okay. uh, he was in Graz. He told me, uh, no. I guess. All right, we're getting ready for the first game. Which screen is correct? Is this? Yeah, this is the... the we comment on this. Yes, okay. comment on this. Do we see the comments yeah, here? that's what I'm trying to... All right, if you have a question in the questions in the comments, please let us know if you can hear us, if the sound is okay. Hi, everybody. Morning. Uh, for those who don't know us, my name is Wolf. I'm uh, from the local club Sporthofer, doing the Champions Cup now for some years, um, uh, together with Winne. I'm um, doing comments and next to me is Lisa. Hi, I'm Lisa and I'm not from Berlin. Um <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I've been helping around in the Champions Cup for a few years and the game has started. Good. So first game of Champions Cup 2022 and we're really excited and we have... Uh, the first uh, attack by Molde, number 33 went over the basket. Molde in blue or black in this case and uh, Luxembourg in white. Heavy fighting on the Luxembourg uh, basket already from the start. So the goalie grabbed the ball and tried to push out. Um, we need some assist from underneath, maybe. The ball is really in a tight cluster. And now Luxembourg is free and is trying to enter the half of Molle is in the corner. Molle is uh, on the basket defending and Luxembourg is trying to set up their attack on the... Norwegian basket. Yes, so they're attacking from the close corner and waiting for a chance. Luxembourg at the beginning were a bit, there was just one player um, attacking. Now we have also Luxembourg player at the basket. Let's see what, how this evolves. I'm really curious, Lisa, how the teams um, made it through the pandemic because two more than two years uh, can have its toll if you uh, have to don't have training times, if you're not able to get up to your standard. So we are uh, curious to see what Molde is doing here, going for the Luxembourg basket, already attacking, pass to the open side and attacking the basket. Defense is there and pushing away um, the Molde attacker, but he's still in ball possession going to the surface. And the basket is empty. This is dangerous. I have two Molde players on the goal. And we see from the beginning there's a lot of pressure if Molde reaches the Luxembourgian uh, uh, basket and they push hard, but they haven't scored yet, um, which is uh, a good sign for Luxembourg in this case because Molde is very known for their fast, furious attacks on the basket. And uh, Luxembourg is defending uh, quite good in these first minutes of the first game of Champions Cup 2022. Yeah, they're very disciplined. Luxembourg is here, when they have an empty basket, they come back and uh, 
fly back on it. And Counter Luxembourg. Counter attack. Luxembourg got yeah. the ball and sent out. It's really difficult if you're under such a lot of pressure to push out again of the defense and to be able to uh, reach the other basket. Um, but Luxembourg is doing a quite good job here, at least defending and breaking out of the uh, furious attacks of Molde. It's good they're keeping the ball a bit midfield. They just need a bit more assistance. The play was now a bit um, alone. Which is too bad. So, we are, uh, like I said, we are fine tuning here our stuff. We have new equipment on our laptops. And uh, we need to put everything in order. It would be good to get the team list for the next games as well. Yeah, so we, we have the team list here, but I just have to install them. So, like I said, we're fine tuning. And this, this will stay this way for the whole Champions uh, Cup. <laughs> oh, uh, we have a multiplayer attack from the Interbasket, okay. So the multiplayer was on the close side and did a push-up um, goal. So just pushed up and we only had the goalie. The, the back was a bit too far from the basket and not positioned correctly. And the goal went in. But um, yeah, it's taken four minutes for the for first goal to come in. And it's uh, been actually more even than I thought it would be. Yeah, I'm a little bit uh, surprised is not the right word because I know Luxembourg is a good team. Like you said, Lisa, before we talked about it, Luxembourg has very experienced players, but they don't have the experience probably Molde is bringing in the water here. And Molde is one of the legendary teams of the Champions Cup. They won, um, I guess, more than 10 times. I'm not quite sure about the numbers. Um, so um, Luxembourg is doing a quite a good job here defending and also trying to attack, Ooh, but they only made one attack uh, so far. Another attack trying to do their uh, attack um, from uh, in front of the basket, trying to cut the side. And first goal here for Molde after uh, second goal already. Ah. All right. So we missed the first one, or at least no, I, I did. commented on it. Ah, you did? Yeah, I missed, <laughs> I missed it. That was a beautiful I game. missed it. So like I said, we have to fine tune our um, equipment here. But it's absolutely exciting to be back um, at a commentator microphone and to see these teams we missed so much for all these years. Molly again on the attack. And another goal for the Molly team. Okay, so this is going quite fast now. Um, this is the replay. Molly got a bit of um, yeah, a good movement now and they're a bit on the roll. Luxembourg needs to gather themselves and play as we were playing at the beginning because they were doing a really good job at the beginning of the game. This is a crucial time, I guess, Lisa, if you uh, defend it well and then you catch the first goals and you have to keep up um, against a team like Molde. This is really hard to give up the, the speed and the endurance to stay in the game like that oh I did no. in the first minutes. Okay, something happened. I think they were out of the Free field. throw against Luxembourg. So I guess they, were, they went out of the field mm. with the ball. I thought it was a really bad pass, but <laughs> <laughs> someone had already uh, beat and interrupted the game. And we don't really see what's happening here, it's all very pink. So still pressure on the... Um, Oh, and there and was another, another goal. goal. Yeah. I'm not sure what's happening. We had a bit of trouble with the camera. But this is, a, like I said, Lisa, it's a crucial point in this moment when you start, when you see a team um, um, after the first minutes, not breaking, but when there's a turning point, um, when there is a so much pressure like Molde puts on the, on the Luxembourgian basket and uh, the defending team um, tries to hold on but it's it's just too much and you see this in this in this moment yes lisa i will put the chat up in a second okay. <laughs> i had to restart so because uh, i had to reinstall the okay. software because i'm wondering if, if people also see this stuff like the screen pink or is it just a maybe it's Ooh, just this here. might that was a good chance good this player struggled a bit to score on an empty basket. 
Five zero, is it six zero? Five zero. Okay, Luxembourg tried to fish the ball out, but uh, the ball player managed its call on the empty basket. Straight over it. It's a good job we see here from Luxembourg because they uh, fight for every ball and you don't see them giving up. Um, when you play against a team like Molde, um, you always feel like over round and you don't see this moment here in Luxembourg. Yes, there is a breaking point when the when the, when the goals are happening and we have a call from the referee on the surface. Don't see right now. Ah, it looks like a free throw against Molde. Because Molde is already in the defense position with a defender and a goalkeeper. Yes, Luxembourg on the surface. Executing the free throw, and we have Luxembourg in ball possession going for uh, the Molde basket to score the first goal against uh, this legendary team here from the Champions Cup. Luxembourg in ball possession, trying to open up the space around uh, the Norwegian defense. We're still in pole possession. We have a 6-0 lead of 5-0 um, uh, lead. Oh, a Sorry if you're a little bit uh, not yet up to the task uh, of commentating here. We have to, uh, like I said, find you our stuff here. Luxembourg still in ball possession, holding on uh, in the closed side, passing back and forth, doing a good game, keeping the ball rolling between the players. We have someone at the basket as well, waiting for the ball. And now it looks like a surface come. Luxembourg gets the ball again in the corner. And we have one player attacking against three Molde players. Four. We need a bit more assistance here from the, from the Luxembourg side. But it's a good job and pretty structured. Okay, the problem with the screen getting red uh, is I think people are working on it uh, in the technic. Um, our technicians are working on it. And that was another goal, so that would be 6-0. And it's half time, so now we have a five minute break. My voice is inaudible. Okay, should I speak louder or can we, we have to put my in? Yep. Hold on, is it uh, better now? We have, um, you have to talk. So I have to not. talk louder. I know you, took very, you speak very loud. I can't speak very loud for three days like that. Um, the updated team list you can find um, on our website, uwr24.de. That is where you will find all the information about the Champions Cup. Does does this move my input or my? Yes, uh, um, I'm uh, just watching the chat. Tom Ritz commented. Uh, Good defense for Luxembourg, I agree. Um, they do a quite a good job holding uh, um, on against uh, the attacks of the Molde team. The experience in the water we have here is uh, amazing from the Molde team. I, yesterday I talked to Samuel Gavira, Gavira um, for the head coach of uh, the Colombian Orcas. And uh, he told me, yeah, all the big guys from uh, Colombia uh, from uh, uh, Norway are here at the Champions Cup, so we will have an impressive competition 
um, for the first place. And I think Molde is one of the teams um, really going for Sorry, it. Sorry, Wolf, I have to interrupt you because uh, I have to do some kind of a sound check. Am I loud enough now? Um, do you hear me louder than before or not? Because we're trying to work on the technique aspect of things. Please give us feedback in the chat if you can hear us uh, properly. And uh, we try to give you our uh, comment. Comment uh, on your uh, comments in the live stream. So second half is uh, coming up. Um, as you know, we play two times, uh, one time 10 minutes, two times five minutes here. And here we go. Two times 10, sorry. Oh, this is nice. Nice, tick tang chung in the water before the ball. That was a nice uh, thing to watch because the teams had to, to talk about that before. Molde in ball position going uh, for the Luxembourgian basket again. Did you see, Lisa, they did chick chung chung before the, uh, before the ball. They what stopped what did they, they do? do? Oh, okay. Um, what's it called? Rock, paper, scissors. Oh. Okay, I have to speak louder, apparently. I just need to shout. Um, Go for it. see what is happening. Okay, another attack from above uh, on the Norwegian basket. And Norway's in ball possession here. Luxembourg uh, breaks free out of this cluster on their own basket. Uh, the wrong pass into the hands of a Norwegian player, and they go again for the Luxembourg This basket. is going faster than the first half time. Yes, there's more speed now. And Luxembourg uh, also paced it up. Nice. Uh, he didn't see his player on the bottom. And uh, there was another one, and they really work each other, the Luxembourg players, and really up for it. But two Norwegian players on the... Against the one goalie. Yeah, yeah. One. This was a bit too fast, I think. The players didn't really realize that Downey had their goalie in the back. Um, but that was an exciting play phase, playing phase now. Yes, really fast. And... Uh, the goalie did a good job, but uh, yeah. they Looks were by themselves. Looks overrun, a uh, little bit overrun. There was no defense, and this is hard against two players. Yes, there is so much you can do. One second, one against you. Thank you, Doris, for your feedback. We both sound great. That's that's something we want to hear. Boris, uh, Boris, Vina just told me that I need to shout as if I wanted everyone to hear me all the way to Norway. So. Luxembourg has a ball midfield and they're trying to uh, move forward. Ah, Mollis well is just very fast. Okay, we are uh, some uh, uh, two meters uh, probably in front of the Luxembourg basket. There's a cluster, one Luxembourg player is holding on to the ball, uh, attacked by two Norwegian players who try to rip off the ball. Ball falls down into the hands of number 23. But he cannot really escape with the ball. Uh, another Norwegian player already on the spot and next to the basket and scored again. So that should be the 8 0 for Molde here in the second half of Champions Cup uh, 2022. It is. Um, it's a good game. Luxembourg is still keeping their structure. Yeah, um, exactly. Molde is just, as you said, is a very, very good team. It's a top level team. And Luxembourg uh, is playing pretty well. Uh, they're, not, they're not a bad team, it's just it's a level difference. But um, it's a good game. Yeah, the players, are, they're missing a bit assistance. They should be a bit closer. Now we have again two Molde players against one Luxembourg goalie and that was a goal. Um, yeah, the support assistance is a bit late in arriving, um, especially on counter attacks. So there's a couple seconds where the goalie is by himself and against Molde, this doesn't do it, unfortunately. Luxembourg swims ahead with the ball. Swimming around midfield and yes, someone down in the front. Trying to occupy the space. They're just slightly out of the danger zone, so Molde doesn't really have trouble um, coming out and attacking the, ba the ball. And now they're counter-attacking again, the basket is empty, and that was goal again. 
So this is 9-0 now. So at this point, Lisa, what would you do if you are um, Luxembourg? How would you structure your um, defense against this avalanche of uh, Norwegian attackers? Well, first I would take a timeout, <laughs> <laughs> take a breather, and then there is two options. Either you said, you say, anyway, they're one of the best teams here. We know we cannot win, so we try and play. We, we play risky because we know we cannot win. So if we lose 10-0 or 17-0, whatever, let's try to play as good as possible. Because in a game that's a bit more even, they might play a bit more conservative game. Because now if they just defend, 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 they would still lose. Yes. Yes. In, there was very little chance that they would have not lost yep. this, this game. So let's try and play the best we can, even though it means that we lose the ball and we get scored on an empty basket. But let's play as good as we can and do the best out of this game and enjoy playing get against one of the best teams in the world. Um, that's one way of doing it. Or you can say we play very conservatively and try and keep as little goal difference as we can. Um, I think now they're playing a bit more, they're trying and attacking and going out with the ball and playing a bit more open. I think that's how I would but I would do it, uh, but it really depends. I'm not sure who's in their group. Um, so it is Molde, Vienna and Luxembourg. So maybe goal difference will matter because it's just three teams in this group. I really don't know. Um, Luxembourg is really awake here and still motivated. If they have a chance to get hold on the ball, they, they use it. You don't see them giving up, um, even though they are under a lot of pressure on their own basket. Molde is going in here um, in wave after wave, pushing hard on the Luxembourgian basket. Here again from the open side, this is a dangerous moment. Ball is passed back in between before uh, the players under the basket and another score for Molde. This uh, scoring is not surprising, but uh, I think Luxembourg does a really good game here, keeping up um, with the speed. They're just they're lacking a little bit the, the coherence, uh, the, the team play they face with Molde, but they do a very good job. And they don't lose, like you said, Lisa, they don't lose their structure. They are still holding up and still attacking. We're now in the half of the Norwegian team. It's just that Molde is a bit faster, has a bit better technique and strategy in the game. Oh, this is advantage for Molde now. On the surface, <laughs> again, on the... The goalie oh. thought that his uh, that the other goalie came to change on them. Yeah, but it was a Norwegian player. And now there is none. Yeah. And that was the goal again. Th that's the, the chaotic situation. Uh, if you're really under pressure all the time, and I totally agree with Lisa, you should take a time out to, to take a breath and to, to recalibrate. Because when you're under this constant attack, you're um, losing a little bit of the oversight of the whole <laughs> things that are uh, um, happening around your basket as a goalie and a defender and like we had in this situation when the goalie thought uh, uh, the Norwegian player was his uh, his teammate for the basket. Okay, mm. Luxembourg in ball position try to structure their attack from the close corner and no way in ball possession again going fast again to the surface and you see already the the Norwegian player is diving when one, one player is on the surface and they're passing down. The Norwegian player passed behind her back to the other players on the basket. Heavy attack now. We don't see what's happening on the closed side. The Norwegian player in bar possessions on above the basket of Luxembourg. Very good defense here from Luxembourg. And Luxembourg is in ball possession trying to break free but stopped by a Norwegian player with number nine. And... Uh, Two players stopping him, and we're still dangerously close to the basket of mm -hmm. Luxembourg. So it's just one minute um, of play left, so I guess Luxembourg will do everything they can to not get scored on, and I guess the more they will try to score another one just, just because they can. Um, let's see how, how this evolves. If 
Luxembourg can keep this very structured defense for the next 47 seconds. And now they got the ball, their midfield. But the player is by himself getting attacked by a Molde player. In the close corner over the Molde basket, someone lost a snorkel. Oh, and this is an attack by Bob Grün on the goal. 20 seconds left. And counter attack by Molde. Very fast attack, just the goalie by himself. Molde is not scoring, and the game is over. So Luxembourg managed to hold off and not get scored on in the last two minutes, which was um, pretty good, I would say. Yep. They did a good game. Um, it was a tough start and uh, for, for the team of Luxembourg in this uh, Champions Cup 2022. So I'm uh, giving up my space here to Jared, and he will come in together with Lisa for the next game, uh, Switzerland against Victoria Sea Dragons. Welcome, Jared. So we Thank have you. A special guest, all the way from Melbourne. Okay, so now we're seeing the highlights from the last game. Did you watch the last game, Jared, a bit, or did you just yeah, do I watched warm that up on with the women? Yeah, it was a pretty good game. Lots of pressure from all game. But Luxembourg played pretty well, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, so what can you tell us a bit about... Um, the Melbourne team? Um, so, yeah, we've got quite an experienced team. Um, I guess three, uh, sorry, eight or nine of them are in our Australian national team. Um, and, yeah, we've been quite competitive the last two, well, the last few national competitions. Unfortunately, got caught up with COVID quite a lot in Australia. Um, and, one of the nationals actually, the Victorian the borders closed just before the nationals, so we weren't able to go and um, compete as Victoria. Um, but yeah, we've been training hard since COVID, and I think the, the girls' team's looking very good, um, very fast and fit, and so see how they go. Yeah, it's quite interesting because Victoria was in lockdown for a long time, so I think you were the state that had. Longest lockdown like yeah, the and the world or something. The least training <laughs> <laughs> the last two years. Yeah. Um, so that's this is very interesting that you have the most players and the national team. So let's see how this game goes. Um, so here we have the team list. So the Helvetia team is pretty much the Swiss national team because they don't have enough women to have proper women's teams. Um, yeah, so we have Sandra Vogel, Rachel, Rachel McLeod, uh, Judith Buchli. Oda Wiegen, Simone Büchela, Veronika Sen, Miriam Ragosnik, Ellen Reif, Katrin Hayali, Miriam Fuchs, Christina Arioli, Cecily Merkle, Isa Morgenstern and Deborah Morgenstern. And for the Sea Dragons we have... Sea Dragons we have uh, Nat Hartman, uh, Claire Roquet, um, Sarah McCarthy, Lucero is unfortunately at home watching right now. She had got COVID last minute but uh, she's supporting from home. Uh, Hannah Gunson, Emma Green, Vanessa Lopez, Jasmine Lee, Alicia Fong, Jennifer Acosta, uh, Romy Keppel, Natalie Solano, Andrea Castano, Sophie Lamande, and Candice Malchere. Mal I think there is some right. type in this team list. The commas, 
<laughs> the commas are a bit a bit confusing because uh, yeah, you would expect that the names the like first and last name are derived the other way around. Yes, yeah, so now we can see the teams warming up a bit. Um, I just turn off the mics for a minute. You can keep on commenting on the chat, and that way we can answer you if there is any questions. So we see the referee already on the water, that is Birgit Lütke on the open side, she's the head referee um, here at the Champions Cup. And on the closed side, I can't see. So we have here a team of 14 referees um, to our candidates for the national referee. And the game starts, the Sea Dragons get the ball, but Helvetia is fighting for it and not letting them pass through. And we already have the first attack. So the Swiss are very structured. In their defense we always have one goalie, one back. Sea Dragons are moving the ball around the basket. Controlling. Good attack from the Swiss team. The Swiss have some players who have been playing for over 20 years. Um, so they have very experienced players. It's just that they don't really play women's competitions, mm. like not often. Yeah, that's um, Simone Bücheler. She is the captain. I think she has been playing for 25 years, I think. And is a really strong player. Now in the scrum of the surface, but the Dragnets are pushing back the scrum and get the ball back. And it's got the ball passed down to Jazz. Okay, and this was they get dragged to the surface and then go back down to defend um, and push at the surface. Good, and now Helvetia is attacking again, or moving the ball around the basket. And they're keeping the ball, attacking the close corner, moving the ball around. And let's see if they really go for the basket. And the Sea Dragons get the ball, or the ball falls down, and the Sea Dragons recover it. I think that the main difference here in the, the teams, the level must be quite even. Mm. Um, but I think the conditioning and like this, like the Australians have more swimmers. Yeah. So they're Definitely they're faster. faster. Yeah. We'll see how how everyone goes as the game goes on, fitness wise and everything. But the games are quite short. Mm. But from what we've seen, when the Sea Dragons are attacking, like, are closer to the uh, Helvetia basket, they move the ball around way more, like left, right, left, right. Yeah. While the Swiss tend to stick more to the close corner. Close corner, yeah. Mm -hmm. Emma on the close side. 
and again we have a scrum over the basket and the Swiss push it back. Nova Helvetia is playing very, very well, like very structured. Mm -hmm. They are very disciplined. They always go back. Yeah, they're filling the positions, back and goalie. Okay, so you see Dragons moving the ball, coming closer to the basket. I think they miss the lack of a bit of support. You have one player attacking and the second one is coming a bit too late. Mm. But the Swiss are there all the time. Like you always have back goalie <laughs> and yeah, the forward coming. Oh. oh, and that was a goal. That was a goal. That it went in really gap. like it was a can of gap next to her neck. Yeah. That was a good goal. So 1 0 for the Victoria T Dragons. That's a replay. And uh, Helvetia is taking the time out. <laughs> yeah, but it's a um, pretty even game. Yeah, that was good first um, what, five minutes. Yeah, pretty much. Um, it's just, yeah, the Helvetia is, when they're in the Sea Dragons half, they stay and they move the ball like up, down, up, down, up, down. Yep. But they don't really go in yep. for the goal. And that Sea Dragons are playing a bit more aggressive, maybe, and they saw one, th they saw a gap and scored. Yeah, so I guess they're they're just moving around, tacking, being patient, and then um, yeah, that opened the gap, yeah. a very small gap. I was lucky. <laughs> and this is yeah. this is very exhausting actually when you always def or you're defending all the time, up and mm. down, up and down. Um, it gets very tiring. So they really managed to use a chance and now let's see how the game evolves from now on because that's the important part after a first goal mm. especially for even for the even games how does it evolve now what does Helvetia do do they play more open a bit more aggressive yeah more defensive we'll say I played against them twice at the European Championships um, with the Austrian team and they a very disciplined, very structured team. Yeah. They lack a, a bit more assertivity. They could have a bit, a bit, bit more offensive, mm. and take a bit more risks. They could benefit from that, but let's see how it all evolves. Who scored? Do you know? No, I didn't say. I was on the close side, unfortunately. Okay. Anyone in the chat say, say who scored? And the score is 1-0. Someone should adapt that in the, te in the technical room. Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, I don't know why the break is lasting longer. So it was a timeout now. And there is five minutes left on the first half. Can the teams take one or two times out? No, it's per game. It's I think one, one per game. One per game. And so in this group we have um, four teams. So we have Akaren from Norway, Vienna from Austria, Helvetia from Switzerland, and the Victoria City Dragons from Australia. A bit more volume on the commentary, so we both need to speak louder. As Lina says, um, we want people to hear us all the way. In Sorry, that Jorge. <laughs> Good. So let's speak louder. It's very hard because we have those headphones. And yeah, you can't the hear anything. We have the headset, and it sounds very loud, and we feel like we speak very loud, but we actually don't. Ideas. It looks like the game is about to. Start start again. Birgit looks ready, the players look ready. 
what is happening. Six players in the water. Game starts again. Helvetia has the ball because they just got scored on and immediately got blocked by the Dragonettes. Here we have a scrum at the surface. Um, the Swiss have a player underneath. Um, yeah, Australians should also have one. Here we go. Uh, they do. <laughs> Each team should have one and try and push the scrum away. There's quite a few players actually on the scrum. Yeah. Um, the ones the that like swimming. <laughs> the ball is still at the surface. And that will get the that ball. Oh, he's just swimming out. The ball is in midfield. But now this was just had one player and uh, the Sea Dragons had other players coming some and support. had some support and pass possibilities. No one is on the water. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, now we had like three people on the Swiss side going directly for the basket. Yep. Uh, that's why I was saying that they play very, very conservative. Yeah, especially in this small pool as well. Yeah, it's a very small pool. Very fast. <coughs> is that 16 meters? Uh, smaller. smaller, yeah. I should know better. <laughs> okay, we're a bit on the open side now. Um, and advantage for Helvetia. Or free throw. Free throw for Helvetia. Out of bounds, is it? I think so. So City Dragons also have full defense set up. Yeah, we had the player with, with the ball and she was by herself. Uh. Yeah, the Swiss staying in the close corner. Yep, got the support, but maybe not close enough. But it's they're holding it very Simone well. Simone in the close corner, and we have a player at the basket who got the ball, but immediately intercepted by the Australians. And she has no pass opportunity. Like the the support is a bit late and a bit far. Another scrum in the closed corner. The ball is again. Back down again. Okay, the Swiss are moving the ball. Um, they're in, in the danger zone, pretty much, but the, the Australians are doing a good job, like the forwards are doing a good job at always being between the defense and the ball, which makes things quite hard for the attackers. Mm. Now it might have been a gap in the defense. And again, a scrum above the basket. Yeah, Hannah, one of our forwards, and I, our back are in there, scrumming. For the Victorian team. Mm -hmm. Looks like Ooh, Victoria and now got the, the ball, but passed <laughs> to, Swiss, to the Swiss. Back to the Victorian. Where is the ball? Okay, counter-attack by the Sea Dragons. She's it's intercepted. <laughs> And here like, we miss a few players and the like to intercept mm. the counter attack in the center. Um feels like the Swiss went directly directly yeah. to the goal the basket. to yep. defend. I have someone working the basket really. Pulling out again, moving the ball and no, the Swiss are doing a good job. We have 40 seconds left uh, for the first half time. This is way more stressful to, to watch than the first game. <laughs> yeah, especially when <laughs> <laughs> your team's playing. So 
the goalie got the ball and pulled out, and now Swiss are swimming forward. Need some more support. 20 seconds left. Ball just fell. It looks like there is a scrum at the surface again, with slightly out of camera, but someone attacking from the top. And that's half time. Half time. This is intense. Yeah, that was it, it's a pretty even game. Get too many scrums. Yeah, for a few my scrums taste. on the surface. But it's okay because they always manage to get it down again. Um, yeah, there was a couple scrums where you really had like two, three players from each team and no one underneath. Like yeah, and do you think? Um, you know, you have one player with no support and they choose to just hold the ball and go to the surface rather than um, do a, a risky pass. Yeah, it feels like, at least for the Swiss, when uh, often you would have a player with the ball and she's by herself and you don't have support like in front and yeah. underneath. You would have support but they're like a meter behind or higher. They come a bit too late. Their timing yeah. is a tiny bit off. Um, because of that, they had a few missed opportunities. I think they would be way more dangerous if they had their timing a bit a bit better. Yep. Um, but otherwise, it's a pretty good game, and they have a solid defense. They're always there. Yep. Do you think that's why they the support is behind? Because they're more conservative on they, the they push They play out. very safe. They play, yep. they play very safe. So, like, if their forwards get the ball, their goalies and backs are a little bit slower to come out? Or... I reckon, so, yes, yeah. I reckon. Hi, everyone. It's our super special guest. This is not playing. Just here for fun. Just here for fun. All the way from Edburn. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Don't scratch my face. <laughs> okay, now the screen is very red. Um, so it's half time and Vina wants to tell us something. No, he doesn't. We just turned off the microphones for a bit, uh, but we're here reading the comments. The players switch sides. The halftime is five minutes in total. And we see they already have six players in the water. Um, how many players are here for the Sea Dragons? There are 15. Uh, 14. 14. And this was a bit less. Uh, a few less players. Helvetia can win this game. Yes, they can. They just um, should be a bit more offensive um, but I'm, I'm telling that to the national team coach sorry Dennis <laughs> and yes thanks Loby we do need to win so we can come play as well with our girls oh first action so the sea dragons got the ball they went to the basket and the Helvetia players recovered it strong and recovery that's a nice move good support on the counter attack And now the ball is in the Helvetia half. And they're passing, they like, have support, but the support's always to the back. So they basically went three meters back yeah. since they got the ball. It's starting to pass to the front. And oh, they're trying to break through the Australian block. Got some good forward checking from the Victorian team. Okay, now attack. Back to the basket. But the Victorians have a full defense. Solidly set. So one player in the corner. We don't have a goalie. 
Yeah, the goalie went down into back position and back up onto the goals. And the scrum at the serve. This that goes back down on the water. Yeah, the Swiss always have a player under under the scrums. Yep, immediately it's really good. Uh, okay, but the Victorians got the ball back. Who's number ten? Uh, Sarah McCarthy. Ah, yeah. So we got counter attack from the Sea Dragons with some support. And we just Sophie have Monday. Just got the goalie. The back was a bit late, but the forward pushed the player up into the scrum. Into the scrum, just over the basket. Which sea is Dragons managed to get the ball out. They really want to score again, the Sea Dragons. They do. They look hungry. Yeah. They want to make sure that Helvetia cannot recover from that. But the Swiss do not want the ball to go in. Yeah, very strong. And the Swiss get the ball. The goalie, Simone, goes out with the ball, tries to bring it forward. Struggling midfield, but see, you have like a very good four checking by the Australians. Yeah. You have one Swiss player, and they have three Australians blocking her. Yeah, really good, really good four checking. Got the support. The Swiss. Simona passes down. Okay, I have one player going in. By herself. And attacking from the close corner again. Yeah, it's really a difference. You see the Australians, they would move left, right, move left, around. right, and then try yeah. and go from either side. Yeah. While the Swiss stay way more on the closed side. But in this pool, stay coming on the open side can be very risky because it's the sub bench very, is very yeah, close. The sub bench is very close. Yeah. If you use a bigger pool, it's less of a problem to be going. It's less risky to be moving left and right all the time. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, again, a counter attack by the Australians. Three. Three against. One. Bit, bit scrappy passing there, but that was still maintaining. That was, that was not very good. It, was, it no. would have been a good opportunity for the Australians. And we still have no back. Oh. Stolen a basket. The Swiss need to have someone under the basket. Oh, that was, that was stressful. That was. But the Swiss have the full defense again. Uh, as you saw, that the, the back went for the ball. And yep. if and I had been the back, I would have assumed the back position uh, forward I would assume the, the back position because yep. that was way too risky. Oh almost a goal there. Okay, and the Swiss are trying Swiss. to pull the ball up and out. Swiss have recovered the ball and one person again. Good for checking from Yeah this player forty two is always like she always recovers the ball and goes forward and then she Yeah sh then she has no one coming to support her. Okay, Ellen passes to the front. Okay. And oh again, now it's a bit a bit there. more calm face. Uh, one player in the corner. They have four minutes, four minutes and a half to go on this game. It's been a tight second half as well. Yes. bit more offensive um, mm. than the first half. First half was like feeling yep. how everything is going and now um, I think the Sea Dragons want to make sure either that they don't get scored on or they can try and get that they can try to score second a second goal. one and the Swiss really need to score um, to at least not have a loss. Mm. So they should at least try and, equ and equalize. Yeah, you're right there, Lisa, with the sort of difference in attack. You've got the Swiss team staying in the corner. They're way more static. More static. Yeah. So it's way um, 
way easier to defend yeah. if you only know that you just have to go out in one direction yeah. than if you have to always go front and back. And yeah. And a little bit easier for the forwards to defend it. Yes. Sea Dragons got the ball out, swimming out again. And the goalie is and below. Ooh. Claire was waiting for the ball, but unfortunately. Uh -oh. No, the pink screen of death. <laughs> the basket is completely oh, open. Now we have an Australian Australia on the goal. The basket. Pushing away the Swiss player who grabs onto the rim. Okay, that's. Uh, <laughs> We didn't see that. The ball is at the surface again, but it's not really a scrum. Goalie pushes out to try and forecheck. Yeah, it's also a very important thing to do when you're um, defending, that you always have the goalie in the back pushing out and going to attack the ball. But Overlapping, yeah. But it's quite hard if you don't have the, the fitness for it. There's just two minutes left. It's a bit chaotic. Yeah, long sustained attack from the Sea Dragons. There Jasmine Ooh, the ball pushing for the ball. Went out and oh, to recover. someone is so wet. <gasps> one against one. On one, one and that, and that was, was a goal. Roaming, I believe, from Victoria Sea Dragons. So the back went out but she didn't manage to recover the ball and there was no other back so on the Sea Dragon side you I had did. one player just under the back side of yep. the goalie and did a nice push up um, yeah, goal. Very it's really hard goal. it's really hard to to defend that uh, if you're by yourself as a goalie yeah. you have a strong player you could try and grab it with your hands but the goalie had their hands above or behind the head and now we have a timeout for the Sea Dragons um, it's about three minutes left left on the game, 2.50, 2.30 so, something. Yeah. yeah. So it's just a breather. I don't think the Sea Dragons necessarily need. Is it? It's oh, oh no, time at blue. Time at blue. blue. So the Swiss took the timeout. So it's one timeout per team per half, yeah. actually. Ah, okay. That's like. Let's see if the Swiss can turn this around and um, at least score one goal. Yeah, still plenty of time left. Yeah. Well, one minute one thirty. And a half maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't call that plenty, but it is quite some time left. And who is playing next? Yes, Orcas against Firenze. Okay, the Swiss keep the ball and. We need someone like support underneath and really go to the front. We have one minute left on the clock. This is need to go all in. Either there's core and they try and equalize or yep. lose 2 1. Like this. Now it doesn't bring anything to play conservatively in the last minute. If you're already losing. We have a scrum at the surface. Miriam Gosnik has the ball, defense. moves around the basket. The attack always gets interrupted, like they, they st stop themselves. Yeah. Like they pull on the brakes and uh, don't go for it. Yeah, rather than sort of swimming and thinking at the same time, they sort yeah. of stop and... Well, the basket would be empty now. 13 again. seconds left. And here we again. Number 10, I think that's medium. Yeah, good strong defense from the Sea Dragons. Yeah. And... The game is out. That was, a, that was a good game. Yeah, very great game from both teams. Yeah. Really good. Um, I, th I think the, the Australians really took advantage of the fact that the Swiss were playing the, that very conservatively. Yeah. It was very structured defense. Yeah. 
but they had to do a bit of work to break through that really hard defense as yes, well. So yes. Moving the ball around. It was not an easy game, I think, for either team, and I think the Sea Dragons had a bit of a hard time because yep. the Swiss are quite strong physically. They have some also pretty strong players and would always get grab and yeah. the Swiss would take a few balls from them. Yeah, and it's sort of easy to get caught up in that sort of scrums and get carried away, but, yeah. you know, the Swiss had the support always. underneath. Yeah, um, but they only had the support in the scrums, which, yeah. is, which is a pity because then you would have always... Uh, uh, they would recover the ball and they would lack the support to yeah. go forward and to break through the blocks that the Victorians would set yeah. for them. Mm. It was a very good game. Well done, teams. Um, Jared, thank you very much. No worries. Thanks for having me. You it was can uh, good fun. You're very welcome to comment on the next Australian Games. Next Australian Games. I might be back. See you guys later. Great. Thank you. See you. Bye. So this is uh, me, Wolf, back here. Thanks, big thanks to Jared uh, doing the comments here with Lisa. Hello, Underwater Rugby community. It's good to be back here in the commentator box and it's good to be back in the Champions Cup here in the year 2022 after a long time. About two years break. Yep, that was quite too long and it felt like we were missing something. Next game coming up is an exciting game because we will see not only Colombia against uh, Italy, Firenze against the Orcas, but we will see the ruling Champions Cup champion, the Orcas from Colombia. And uh, I think 99% of the team or the whole team is also the ruling world champion. Yes. So. This is, this is a tough start for Italy, and I was talking to Gabriele from uh, the Italian team, and he said, Wolf, uh, why? <laughs> why is it always? And I, and I told him, yeah, but Gabriele, normally it's 7 o'clock in the morning and you don't have espresso. Yeah, but that's the only thing. It's again Colombia. But why Colombia all the time? And well, I told him, um, Gabriele, it's playing against beauty. You have no chance, but you can enjoy it. <laughs> It's true, it's, it's, it will be a bit like the previous game that we had, so Molde against uh, Luxembourg, which is a very, very strong team, like top-level team, uh, against a team that is good with a lot of very experienced players, but it's just another level. So you just, you know you're going to get beaten and you do the best you can. Yeah, and it's, um, if, you, if, you play, if you have the chance to play against these high-level teams, it's also an experience. Uh, because uh, it, it shows you the, the level of rugby um, that, is, that is a really high standard. And it's something, it's tough, but it's also something you can enjoy on the other side, you can learn from it. Yeah. And I had a lot of talks to um, new teams here in the Champions Cup, and I said they love to play against Molde or uh, uh, Firenze or Malch or, or uh, Colombia or Malch, because it's a big experience to play against these uh, and it's just teams. 20 minutes. It's just twice 10 it's minutes. It's just 20 minutes, Lisa. That's not true what you just said. It can be a long... 20 minutes can be a long it's time. Yeah. Oh, and the game okay. has started. Here we so start. Orcas got the ball, one player, and passed it up. Wow. Oh, that really was fast. <laughs> really fast. Start. And we see uh, what we will have here in this game and what uh, Italy is facing already. Goal. First goal after we 18 seconds. They just came and pushed the ball like it was very strong. Yeah. Push from the top and took advantage of the goal above the goalie's shoulder. Yeah. yeah, the goalie should really glue way more to the basket. They were positioned with their feet towards the field, and I think this is very dangerous against a team like Orcas yeah. because they can take advantage of left and right to score on you. Uh, we had a talk yesterday with uh, Samuel Gaviria from the Orcas, and he said everybody has, uh, is able to score in their team. Okay, Italy in ball possession, trying to break through in the middle, stopped. The ball was taken away from them in a really decisive way. And uh, we have now Colombia on the attack, but uh, well defended here, Italy. They don't give them uh, the chance to go through in the first wave. Second wave now coming in. And uh, Colombia is testing the defense of Italy. And let's say Italy has uh, experienced players here. They know the tricks and they know where they have to be. But the speed and uh, the, the experience Colombia brings in the water is amazing. Yes, absolutely. 
Well defended. And there was another goal, but I think this, this was a way better face and the first goal, the first goal was just like, okay. Yeah. They, they this has started now and it was a more of a start than the, actually the starting beep of the game. L like, like Gabriele said, we don't have a proper espresso, how can we play? <laughs> so this was, the first goal was their espresso probably. Yeah, Germany is not really the right country for the coffee, I'm no. sorry. Sorry, Italy. Okay, back in the game. So they're midfield and the Italians uh, have the ball and gets recovered by Orgas. Yes. And already on a fast uh, attack way um, on the Italian basket again. Pushing from the front, playing back. And there's always another Colombian player waiting to receive the ball. It's, it's so needless and again a goal. The Colombians have four people permanently around the basket. You don't see where the ball is. It's seamless. It's really seamless uh, how they, they pass the ball from one another. And things like switching goalies is really dangerous yep. when you play against a team like them because they they communicate so well and they pass the ball so fast and Definitely. see any opportunity. Okay, Italy, ball possession, trying to break into the Colombian half of the pool here in Champions Cup 2020 in Berlin. Switch the camera. Thank you. We are in the Colombian team and counter fast counter-attack against uh, the basket of Italy underscore. It's a one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, against a Colombian player is... Uh, it was anyway one against two. You had one goalie and I think the goalie tried thought that the player yeah. with the ball would pass yeah. to the other one. I guess yeah. that's why uh, they put True. their head towards this, the assisting player. Yes. And so it was very easy for the ball carrier to just push against their backside. Yeah. So we see uh, um, Colombia here in, uh, in the close to their prime. I, I don't think uh, uh, they, they, th they are in the, in the prime of their training and their experience. And this was a call from the referee. There was a holding to the mask. And it's a free throw against for Colombia, I think. Yeah, for Florence. And screen Oh, the Colombians got the ball and free throw again. We have a repeat. I guess that uh, the Colombians didn't respect the two meter rule or something because that's what this recovery, this ball recovery was way too fast. Probably Colombians are too fast. <laughs> no, but <laughs> it didn't look normal to get the ball by himself. No one was underwater. If there is a loose ball, it's almost immediately um, got a hold on, on. And look how fast they score. It's the, the counter-attack and the, the scoring is one move. And you always have two people counter-attacking, yep. three. Three. And the goalie was in position, but the back was way too slow. You really need, when you see them counter-attacking, go down immediately. There is no, like, they're, they're machines. They just go yeah. straight to the goal. Yeah. And we have to say, it's, it's, uh, in, the, in this case, uh, Colombia doesn't get that resistance. It will be um, interesting. Oh, there was a pass in the open and Samuel didn't see it. That, was, uh, that doesn't really happen off with Colombia. Um, so Italy is in ball possession of the because of this loose ball and is trying to get out of their own half. But the player is m missing support here. There was only one player holding the ball and attacked by... And no one underneath and Orca's got the ball back. And again, three, four, five Orcas going for the Italian basket. Basket is moving here. And the scored. And the scored. Uh, hope the referees can fix the ball. The, the basket, yeah. yeah, they go for the basket to fix it back on the. I mean, Orcas could also take it a bit easy after the goal number five in the first five and a half minutes and go less. percent. <laughs> Do you think they can? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like at. at like there is some teams that get into the mindset of we want to win and if they say okay now we don't need to win that much or we don't need that much difference then it's not good for the next games for the sure. for the harder games and again a lost ball from italy and uh, open basket now yep goalie was there but too late and uh, another score This is a, a tough start for this competition for Italy and it's difficult to uh, give any advice to the Italian team what to do here. Um, 
They, they defend well as far as they can, but the speed they are facing from the Colombians and the precision of the, of the attacks of uh, three people, you see it right here, they already uh, are moving in the move to go to the counter-attack and they break through the pool effortlessly and are on the Italian basket. We are now on the close side, pass uh, under the basket. There was a stop by the Italians, there was a kick. Uh, it was not a kick, but a boxing with a, with a fist and uh, the referee called it, so it's a free throw against Colombia. It's um, in the, the rules don't allow you to punch with a, with a fist because the, uh, uh, the danger of breaking fingers is too high. Or um, breaking noses. Noses. Who needs noses? You need fingers to play. So, <laughs> yeah, bleeding noses uh, in the mask is uh, quite a common thing in rugby. Another counter attack. Two players of the Colombians close side going in, but uh, well defended. There was a call from the referee. Where is the score? I think is the score correct or is it a bit behind? I didn't count. I have to admit. Yeah, uh, eight zero. I think this is correct. It comes directly from the from the protocol table, like from the pool side. So the score you see on the screen is directly from, um, yeah, from the pool side. We just talk. Good. So the Italians went into the Orcas half. Orcas recovered the ball almost immediately, and now are attacking the basket. And it's a goal from the close side. We had an Orcas player waiting and they moved the ball once to the open side and back and scored. It's it's a really hard position. Uh, Italy is in here because they could um, um, bunker in on their own basket um, but that wouldn't give them a chance to to break through and go through to the uh, Colombian basket. So it's it's a, you have to make a decision and they try to open up but the counter attacks are so fast of the Colombians and now we have a defender here from Italy, very well defended. He got the ball out of this uh, fast uh, ball play, but lost it again. And uh, the, the punishment of uh, a little mistake if you lose the ball next to your own goal or next to your own basket if you play against Colombia is immediate. So we have another score and it's 10-0. I'm um, seeing in the chat that people cannot see the score. It's written in the top left corner of the screen. Um, I don't know why you cannot see it, but most people can. Please let us know if uh, um, there is a problem with the stream or if... Uh, oh, that well, was another guy fast. The goalie was not in position yet. Um, yeah, I think so it would be uh, time for a timeout for Italy. There is just 30 seconds left on the first half. That's true. Timeout is coming. Uh, break of the first half after the first 10 minutes. I would definitely oh. take a... I would have taken a timeout just to get a breather. Yeah. Um, because this is... 11-0 in the first half. Okay, to Italy is in the opponent's half. We have a scrum here. Um, there's someone underneath. And, and another call from the referee. Rough playing and it's a free throw oh against throw. Colombia. Okay, and half time. So, hmm. It's amazing to see Colombia in the water again. The speed, the coordination of, of uh, the players is pretty amazing. The, the thoughtlessness of their team play, um, attacking with three players, always with three players. If, if they regain their ball, if they get a ball and they attack, it's like uh, uh, beaming another player left and right to the uh, ball carrier and they're immediately, immediately on the other basket. It's amazing to see. Yes, it's. It would be more interesting to see them against um, a stronger team. Yes, exactly. nothing against Florence. Florence is a good team, but it's just too uneven. But they're they're different categories. That's a, a bit of a problem of group games at the beginning. We just sort to uh, establish then who plays against whom in the next phase, uh, because seeing Florence play is. Um, is interesting. I like playing against Firenze, uh, um, but the more mid-level team. And Olkas now barely got stopped while playing, so they would just go un in un uninterrupted so all the way to the goal and would score very fast. So 
So it is, and uh, let's say, and we don't want to underestimate Italy, but it is an easy game for Colombia here, and an uh, easy start to get used to the water and the, the whole surrounding um, of the Champions Cup for the team. And it's tough for Italy. Um, in the beginning, it was not sure Italy if they could come at all. Um, they had problem to assemble the team. So uh, I talked to Gabriele and I said, uh, Champions Cup without uh, Firenze is not the same. And uh, they uh, mustered all their, their troops uh, to, to get them here. And I'm so happy to see the guys, Andrea, Luca, and uh, uh, haven't I, have I seen Luca? I'm not sure. Um, no, Mirko is here. Um. Valentina. We've joined a lot of uh, Firenze Cups in uh, Firenze and it's uh, very good memories there. So, yeah, Italy is a big part of the Champions Cup. Yeah, but Firenze now is not playing with any women. I think it's strictly men's team because nope. the yeah. Italians also have yes. a women's team. Yep. I know that the last Champions Cup, Valentina, so the captain of the women's team, was playing for the women's team and the men's. And that is quite a challenge. That's tough. To yeah, play yeah. for two teams at the Champions Cup is a, is a good performance. Yes, indeed. Okay, so... Ah, uh, here we see, no, Luca is not playing. Uh. We have some newer names as well, some younger players um, that are like in their 20s, which is good, um, always. Do you have look for, play for countries have that have been playing longer and that have a smaller underwater rugby community to see that they manage to keep on drawing? Newer, newer players always. It's, it's kind of a problem in several European countries yep. that you have players that are in the 40s or reaching the 40s and struggling to get new players, new blood. So uh, we're getting close to the second half here. Colombia in uh, blue against uh, Firenze in uh, white. We're already in the game. Okay, but Firenze went for the ball, like they managed to block a bit more midfield. It was not as direct as the first. Half. Ah, the ball is dropping out on the open side, uh, recovered by the Colombian player, dropped out again, recovered by a Colombian player, and we go on from uh, the from the close side. Uh, Juan Jose uh, Laverde is pushing from the top. Ah, that's Cali. Oh, sorry. Ooh, yeah. I thought that would have been gone in. Nice. Ah, the goalie is missing though. Nice defense here from Italy. They kept them away uh, pretty well, but then there was a little bit of a uh, chaotic uh, situation and uh, Colombia scored again. Yeah. There was a, a big gap. The, the goalie left because went for the ball and the second goalie didn't come, wasn't down yet. Um, that, was, that was a good chase up. So Italy attacking uh, close to the surface. Passing in front of a Colombian player, which is always dangerous, and punished immediately by a lost ball. And uh, this is Manuel, I guess, going um, somewhere here on the open side in ball possession. Wide pass right in front of the defense, but not stopped on the close side now. They've been playing forth on the open side, pushing in. No goal, very well defended here from Italy. Goalkeeper was, was very good on the basket. I see that's very dangerous because, uh, again, the goalie is with their head to the walls. So that's a very big gap. Yeah. Like when turning, they need to turn faster. Because when they stay that long with their, with their legs to the field, it makes their contact with the basket, with the rim, way smaller. And they really need to glue to the rim. Especially against a team like Orcas, who will see the smallest gap and use it. It's really relentless how um, Colombia is playing back and forth, attacking, playing back and forth. And it, you f it feels like there are 20 Colombian players in the pool here because they are always, it looks like the whole team is, is down in the water on the basket of the Italians pushing in. But Italy is defending very well. Ooh. That was a goal. Okay. Yeah, that was another goal. But that was a good sequence for Italy. Um, they did well against these constant attacks because it's uh, it's it's this this constant pressure that really um, drives you to make mistakes 
it really forces you to make mistakes. And this is where Colombia is with this uh, pushing, pushing, pushing going. We are in the middle of the, in the surface. Uh, we have a cluster there going up. Uh, Italian players trying to hold on to the ball, passing to a uh, teammate from Italy. Still at the surface, doesn't see any teammates. There was a call from the referee, holding without ball. So it's a free throw against Colombia. So Rüdiger Hütz just arrived. Um, he's uh, the BSTD. Uh, BS, uh, uh, BDST. BD, thank you for correcting so the me. National Federation. The yeah, German the German the National Federation. Representative. At and this CMS year. representative of underwater rugby. Okay, so the Italians are moving the ball a bit in front of the Orcas basket, but you cannot do that if you just have to play your zero. Oh, that was a fast attack, but didn't succeed. Goalie was uh, right there on the spot and just stopped this uh, fast throw on the ball. And uh, the back left. There was again, now on the switch of goalies, the Colombians oh, managed to use this chance. The Colombians are playing slower now. Yeah, it's, it's just a third, it's been four minutes and been three goals. Um, also, after the first goal, there was just one player that went, one Orcas player who went against the ball bearer, and not four, like after a second goal. I think they're doing it a bit easier, maybe. It's a limpa possession again, trying to get from the close side, at from the corner, into the game, into the attack mode on the Colombian basket. And lost the, they lost the ball again, and these counterattacks from Colombia are immediate. You don't see any hesitation when they, when they counterattack and swim really fast to the other side and start there playing against around uh, the Italian basket. Yes. The Italians are fighting pretty well though and they're not giving up. Uh, who's number 12? Is it Humberto? He needs to lie better on the basket. <laughs> but it is so hard with these constant uh, ball passing right in front of the basket back and forth and every one of these Colombian players is able to score and you have to defend against uh, it feels like there are 20 yeah. players of them. Yes, but th this goalie number 12 is always always lying like with her feet to the field. Yeah. And then switch to one or the other side. While well, you should, especially against a team like that, lie on one side and then switch to the other if needed, but not wait in the while being central. Okay, Olgas has the, have the ball and counter attack. Back and goalie are there but there is no forward between them and the ball. Do we have someone fighting for the ball? And the scrum at the surface with one player against two or three for Or from, from Orcas. Four minutes to go here in the second half. Uh, the Orcas in uh, blue and Italy in white and it's uh, third 15 Zero for the Colombians. Uh, 16. 0 Yes. That was another goal. From the open side, the Orcas player came and pushed against the goalie's head. See, the goalie tried to turn. Yeah. And that way they were sideways. Yes. That creates a very big gap. Yeah. And uh, creating gaps like this is uh, immediate goal against a team like Colombia. I'm pretty sure uh, we have uh, the other teams watching this game now to see the Colombian players play, um, to evaluate what they are facing if they're playing against them. Look at these counterattacks. Again, the goalie is going with the ball keeper forward. They are on both sides of the basket, back and forth, and pushing into the goalkeeper. This didn't succeed. The other player is coming from uh, down under, pushing into his own player, taking the ball and out taking a little bit of space here, creating space and um, playing back and forth. We have players of Colombia waiting around the basket. Oh, that pass was almost stopped by an Italian player in the middle. And again, uh, caught and executed on the open side. They, they really are positioned, every one of them is positioned to score at once when they are able around the basket. Beautiful underwater rugby, 
and it uh, sums up with what uh, Samuel Gaviria told us yesterday in our Underwater Rugby Academy talk we had with him. Back in the game, Italy now um, starting um, the next attack, stopped a uh, little bit in the half of Colombia in a one-on-one -on -one cluster on the surface, on the wall side, and the ball is blocked. Dropping out um, in Italian hands, and uh, Italy tries to build up their momentum against the Colombian basket, but they don't really succeed in getting out of the... Uh, here we go, here I have an attack um, on the this Colombia basket. This is Gabri? I think it's... I don't see the... No, number 17. No. Gabri is number two. 17 is uh, Juho, Alto Juho. That was a nice attack. I think the first You're attack. You're really the team. <laughs> oh, very funny. <laughs> so 17 is uh, Julio. 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 Sorry for that. I was on the wrong list. And another score of the Colombians. Yeah, it feels like Firenze is fighting like forward. Like it goes between giving up and really trying to make the best out of it. It looks like the, it alternates between both things. Okay, the ball is in the midfield again. So Olka's moving the ball around the basket. And that was again a goal. Again, when the goalie turned to reposition themselves. I don't know why they position themselves with their back to the ball. They've done that a few times. They see that the yep. ball is going to yep. come, like let's say, from the left. And they turn to position their feet to the left. I would put my head. Yeah, that makes them more vulnerable yes. uh, on the side. And then th as they turn, that's when they get scored on because it creates a gap. Yeah. So two seconds left, one second, uh, and this game is over. It's a 19-0, um, so almost a uh, uh, goal for every minute in this uh, game. It was not surprising, and um, it was tough for Italy. And it was a warm-up for the Colombian teams, who are the ruling champions of the Champions Cup. Uh, the one they played 2019. Yes. And uh, we are curious, uh, I am, and probably other people too, to see them uh, against a tougher team in uh, these next rounds. What's coming up now, Lisa? So now we have Triton Berun from the Czech Republic against USZ Zürich from Switzerland. Well, this is going to be interesting. I will take a break because I've been here for the last hour. Um, and I will see you for the game after that, so in half an hour for the next women's game. Yes, looking forward to that. Bye-bye, Lisa. Bye. So we see the replays now of the uh, game we just watched of the Orcas against Firenze, Colombia against Italy. So Triton, uh, coming up Triton, Beru from the Czech Republic against uh, Switzerland. It's going to be an interesting game because um, they are uh, probably on the same level and it's, uh, I'm, I'm not pretty sure um, which, where I should put my money uh, in the upcoming game. So, uh, yeah, Malch just arrived. Uh, Malch also one of the favorite uh, teams here of the um, high score teams of this Champions Cup, like the Colombians, like, uh, like Norway, Malch from Germany. As you can see, we have some uh, feature updates here in the live stream and uh, a little bit of uh, more features. It's uh, amazing what uh, Binet did uh, in programming uh, with the live stream, with you see the team lists 
and uh, you see the logo of the Champions Cup switching in and forth and you see the time and the scoring in another way than uh, you did in the last years. Uh, so there's a lot of improvement here in the live stream, which we are really proud of and big thanks to big thanks to Vinay uh, for creating the live stream as it is. So um, I'm watching the comments. Please uh, let me know where are you watching from? Um, what is your home country, your city? What is the team you uh, want to see or uh, know? And what's your guess for the upcoming game here, uh, Czech Republic against Switzerland? Let me know in the comments. Curious for what you can tell us. My name is Wolf. I'm uh, from the home team here in Berlin, uh, the Sporthofer Berlin. And I'm doing uh, the comments now for, I think, uh, since 2017. I um, uh, started with uh, Lorena to uh, we had this uh, idea of commenting every game throughout like uh, we were doing it for radio because we heard a lot of people are, uh, don't have the possibility to watch all the time but they can listen to it so we try to be their ears, uh, their eyes and uh, um, give their ears the possibility <laughs> to follow the game. Yeah, we had a um, lot of uh, comments um, people use it a little bit like radio so we try to give the best impression of what we see here and also to explain to the relatives of the players watching where's the ball what situation we have and uh, how the team or how the game is developing so I think uh, the referee on the open side is uh, Birgit Lütke I think not quite sure but it looks like um, also big thanks to the referees here on uh, the Champions Cup um, it's really tough to go through three days of underwater refereeing. It's tough on the players and on the referees. So a big thanks to their motivation. So we have uh, Julia watching from Italy. Hello, Julia. And uh, Julian wants to see Bamberg again. Well, you have to tell Bamberg that. Now we will see the winner of the German Championships, which, uh, which is uh, this year Malch, the team from Malch. So, we start the game. And we have Czech Republic against Switzerland. Uh, Lucky is asking if there is a planning you can go to our website uh, uwr2040e slash champions cup there you will find uh, all the schedules there was no goal no goal here in this situation the ball was not under the ring and we have Triton Baru in blue against Zurich uh, from Switzerland in white and uh, this was an attack from uh, Triton but there was no goal you see it here in the Replay probably there's the goal, the ball, and well, well, it's always a, a decision from uh, the oh viewpoint of the referee, and if they don't see it under the ring, it's not a goal. So, still 0 0, free throw for Triton Baru from the middle, and Triton goes in on the open side. Oh, that was too easy, that was easy from the open side over the head against uh, the Swiss Ball player. It looked like uh, the defender, yeah, they didn't see the pass uh, from the close side to the open side. The so the player, Triton Baroon player on the open side had easy play to push the ball into the basket from the head, uh, next to the head of the Swiss goalkeeper. And again, Triton on the attack in ball possession coming in strong three players from Triton pushing into the defense ball was on the loose right on top of the Swiss goalie and he got it he's on the surface and we have a cluster there Mm. 
you're asking me for a link. Uh, hold on, I will try to post it. I'm alone here right now. I'm sorry, try to be fast. Um, to get all the information here through the link I will post. I cannot post one. So Switzerland tries to attack, um, was defended, fended off uh, from Triton Baroon. Triton Baroon, two players against one goalkeeper and another score. That was uh, really tough for the goalie who was lying in front of the basket and the ball was pushed uh, a little bit from the open side over his head into the basket. So Switzerland in ball position again. They're trying to break through. Stopped uh, right in front of the Czech basket, but two Swiss players are attacking the ball carrier. Didn't uh, succeed. Triton Baru player in ball possession. Passing to back to his player. Stopped by a Swiss player in the middle. Now on the surface a cluster. And uh, several Swiss and Czech players are fighting for the ball. Ball in the loose with a Swiss player, but attacked by another two players. It's a back and forth here. That was nice, uh, recover the ball, the Czech player recover the ball, pass down to his teammate, and they go for a counter attack. Stopped in the middle of the pool. Call from the referee, wow. holding without <laughs> ball, free throw against Triton. So again, we have a cluster on the surface, Swiss players and Czech players trying back and forth to get hold of the ball. Cluster is still back and forth. Ball is dropping down in the hand of a Czech player. And I haven't seen what's happening Bobby. there in the middle. Throw. Free throw against Triton again. Swiss player now in ball possession, and this is a chance for them. Lost the ball, Triton player lost it. It's, it's a back and forth here. Both teams seem to have problems getting uh, a good grip on the ball, but now Triton is trying to push through from the middle of the pool. On the bottom, one player against one goalie, but the goalie is doing a good job keeping him off with his fins. And uh, Triton is now massive around uh, the Swiss basket on the open side. And another score. Yeah, the player here from the open side had uh, all the time um, pos take a position and pushing in into the goalkeeper who was presenting him in his back, which is always a good opportunity to score from the bottom. So it's a, I guess, 4-3-0 uh, from Titan Baroon from the Czech Republic against uh, Zurich from Switzerland. Another tag, another score. It's now really the game of Triton. Even though Switzerland makes it to the uh, Czech basket, they don't succeed in um, really putting pressure on the basket of the Czech Republic. And they are always fending off and have uh, to go in their own half back to defend against this attack from the Czech Republic. Same situation here, a ball drops down from the surface from a cluster, one-on-one -on -one situation. And again, uh, what we've seen already, the Czech player <laughs> placed the ball behind the head of the goalkeeper from uh, Zurich, who's lying in front of his basket. Uh, if there is no defense, it's really difficult for the goalkeeper to 
succeed against an attack. Two and a half minutes and we have a 6-0 for Triton Varun from the Czech Republic here in, uh, I guess it's the third, fourth game of this Champions Cup 2022 here in Berlin. Switzerland again in ball possession, but the ball carrier had to wait quite a while uh, in the half of Triton Baroon for his teammates to show up. The, the will is there here in Zurich, but they don't have the numbers around uh, the Triton Baroon basket to start putting pressure and uh, endanger the basket of uh, the Czech players and uh, there was a ball that didn't succeed going to the Swiss player and Triton intercepted and is going on the counter defense counter attack on the Swiss basket and uh, the basket was stolen by a uh, Triton Verun player and uh, this resulted immediately in a goal and another goal for Triton Verun so one minute 15 left probably would be a good point for Zurich to take a break and uh, take a timeout to restructure because they are um, losing their their structure here their own uh, playing structure more and more under these uh, well massive attacks from Chitron Baroon again Chitron in ball possession and yep same situation same same uh, defender was late uh, next to the basket and uh, the goalkeeper was lying in front of it and uh, the room player was putting the ball behind his head into the open basket. It's a dangerous game and it's always a decision for a goalkeeper if you lie on top of the basket, if you have a one-on-one -on -one situation or lie in front of it. If you do it uh, like um, Italy does it uh, um, before, if you have a good defense with your feet, you might succeed. There was a holding now, and it's a free throw uh, against Triton Baron. Free throws are always a good uh, situation, a good um, um, possibility to go fast into the half of the of your opponent. But here it takes quite a while for for Zurich. Yeah, and halftime break here in the fourth game of the Champions Cup 2022. So yes, people in the live stream, um, please give me comments. I'd like to know where you are watching from. And uh, you can see now in the live stream, um, we have uh, the, the Swiss players uh, have don't have this many players. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight players against a full team of the Czech Republic. This also takes its tolls after the first minutes. You go in with a lot of uh, stamina, but uh, you lose it in the in the run of this game. And if you don't have exchange player, uh, it costs. And you can see it uh, here in this game um, of Zurich against Richard Baroon. So we're waiting for the second half. You see the replays now of the scoring um, of the Baroon players. So people in the live stream, let me know where are you watching from? What's your hometown? What's your home team? So we have, uh, just to give you a little bit of impression here of the pool area, we have uh, um, selling points, we have the waterway uh, players, um, waterway fin producers from the Ukraine here with the, with the fiberglass fins and we have uh, the outfitter from Guasabo here. Um, they are selling uh, um, the official Champions Cup t-shirts. 
We have uh, Bosi here, uh, the Spanish uh, equipment uh, producer. Um, so uh, you can sell, you can buy um, uh, equipment here around the pool. And hopefully, uh, we all hope um, that the um, fin producers, um, the waterway fin producers, will sell all their fins they produce right now in Kiev in the Ukra Ukrainian. Um, I was uh, mailing with Bogdan, um, the owner of Waterway Fins, and uh, he told me it's really difficult right now with uh, the Russian attacks on Kiev. Um, they don't have this much electricity, but they try to produce as many fins as possible. So please, 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 if you know someone uh, who needs fiberglass fins and uh, you know someone who is here at the Champions Cup, order them from your teammates so you uh, don't have to pay the shipping costs. And hopefully uh, Bogdan from Waterway will sell all these fins. Back in the second half of this game, uh, Triton Baroon from the Czech Republic in blue against Switzerland. Uh, Zurich team from Switzerland in white, and it's already 7-0 for Triton Baroon. So we get uh, feedback here, watching from Sandje Ford, watching from Zurich, with people watching from Colombia and Australia. So another tech on the Swiss basket, change the sides now, and uh, the Baroon player from uh, the height uh, of the defender of the goalie is pushing in in the basket and scoring. So 8-0 already yes. now for Triton Baroon. Switzerland tries now to break into the half of the Czech team. But they lose the ball. Switzerland is losing the ball. Baroon is opening up the space, fly, swimming to the surface. Going in with two players against against the goalie lying in front of the basket. Dangerous play here because it's easy to steal the basket then like Triton Baroon did. We have attack from the close side. Hard push into the defense of the Swiss players. They're doing quite well. Open side above uh, but the ball was played above the head of the uh, goalie, Swiss goalie, into the hands of the <laughs> player, of the Triton <laughs> Baroon player, waiting on the open side. <laughs> and uh, he had uh, an easy play. Ah, it was again back back and forth. I didn't see that. Uh, back and forth. He played back to his player from the close side and he scored. So the goalie didn't see where the ball was in this moment. We have uh, Julian watching from Perth. Uh, Romana watching from Lucerne, Switzerland. Hello to everybody. It's good to see you here in the in our live stream. Another attack from Triton Baroon, right above the basket. A little bit chaotic right now. Switzerland really tries to defend with all their teammates. But there are huge gaps uh, on the basket and wow that was close the defender was lying next to the basket from switzerland and fishing the the ball away from the Triton Baroon player a nice play here from the defender from the goalie from switzerland he got the ball in his hands tried to break free didn't succeed another attack here another fence off this is now good play from switzerland to keep the Triton Baroon player away but it's too chaotic you can see they are not that structured it's really they're holding on with their teeth to the basket, and uh, in the end, Triton does score the with this relentless, tough pushes they put into the defense of the Swiss team. So it's a 10 0 now for Triton Varun, and Triton Varun was in ball possession. There was a wrong pass. Uh, from Triton into uh, the hands of a Swiss player. That could be a chance. Come on, Switzerland. But uh, the same problem as we've seen before, if Switzerland succeeds in uh, recovering the ball and trying to counterattack, there's only one player going for it, and he's stopped by several Triton uh, players. And now a one-on-one -on -one situation for a second here on the Swiss basket. And 3-2 Triton players. And the defender didn't see where the ball was, so we had a score from the open side again. We have Corinne watching from Holland. Hello to Holland. 
think there is no uh, rugby team in Holland, uh, Corinne. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You, you are strong in uh, hockey, I think, as far as I know. So Switzerland tries again uh, after they caught another ball, they another score. They tried again through the defense of Triton Varun. Didn't succeed. Triton Varun here in the attack. One on one situation, one on two, and score again. It's, it takes Switzerland a little bit too long to establish their defense on their basket. And uh, the goalie does his best lying in front of the basket to fend off the attackers. But if you're against uh, two players who pass back and forth, you really are uh, lost as a, w as a single goalie on the basket. Five minutes to play here in the second half. And we have a cluster on the surface. And again, Triton is going for the basket of Switzerland on the open side. He could have scored here, but he passed on to his uh, teammate. And Switzerland recovered the ball. Player tries to break through, but he's alone again. Again, he's alone, still alone, lost the ball and pulled, pushed it behind him in the hands, almost in the hands of a Triton Baron player who recovered it and got into the attack mode on the Swiss basket and scored Thank against you. the goalie. You can see it here in the replay. Defender didn't succeed on stopping him. He came from uh, high above He's the goalkeeper, the pushed him away and put the ball into the basket. Four minutes left and a 13, solid 13 zero of Triton Baroon. But like I said, we have eight Swiss players here in the water against a, a full team from the Czech Republic. And it's taking its tall ball is falling down from the surface in the hands of a Triton Baroon player on their own basket. And they go in uh, counter attack mode. Take a little bit uh, out of speed, ball is dropping down as the Triton Baroon player wanted to go to the surface. You can see the Swiss players are exhausted, no surprise here. Um, with uh, not being able to change and take a breath, it takes your toll um, against a full team with the force Czech Republic puts in the water here. Another attack from the close side and uh, the basket is already surrounded by Triton Baroon players. We are at the Swiss basket. Ball was pushed to the open side. Uh, the, s the Czech player was thinking there was a player. There was none, but nevertheless, Czech Republic covered the ball, pushing over the goalkeeper to the close side. We're really close. All this is happening really close to the Swiss basket. Ball was recovered from the Swiss player, and we are in a cluster on the surface. Two and a half minutes left. Tough game for Switzerland. And I don't see easy, don't say easy prey for Triton Baroon. But I'd love to see this Triton Baroon team against uh, a full other team here in this Champions Cup. Again, the uh, ball was lost from Switzerland. On the surface in the middle, Triton Baroon is going uh, two against one. Three from players from Triton Baroon assembling <laughs> around uh, the Swiss basket. And uh, I think there was uh, 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 like the Swiss players was going up with the ball to the surface. Ball dropped down again. Another attack from Triton Baroon on a Swiss basket from the open side. Close side now, and here's the, the ball. They're really fast in passing back and forth experience in their attack and they don't get this much resistant around the Swiss basket so they really can establish their attack patterns on the Swiss basket and another score. I think Switzerland will be happy to see the end of this game against Triton we have a 14-0 Meludi is asking here in the live stream chat um, where you can buy fins. 
Well, it uh, depends. Uh, if you are um, playing here at the Champions Cup, you can buy them here from Waterway Fins, from uh, uh, the producer from the Ukraine here at the pool. Otherwise, you, can, uh, you have to pay them um, in the internet. So back in the game, less than a minute left, 40 seconds left. And Triton Baroon is again in the attack mode. And easy game here because there was a huge gap. There was a huge gap right in the Swiss basket. 20 seconds left. We are in the replay. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, it's, it's enough for Switzerland. They really uh, fight hard with eight players. They do their best. But uh, they, here they go, probably their last attack. Come on, Switzerland, go for a goal here against Triton. Nope, that was, uh, the ball was uh, recovered by Triton and the game is over. And I have uh, Reinhard Schottmiller here with me, uh, right in the commentator box. Yeah, uh, Reinhard Schottmiller here from Malch. Uh, hello, Reinhard. Hello, everybody. Hello, Wolf. <laughs> Good to see you, Reinhard, here. Um, your team just arrived. You arrived with the whole team? Yes, uh, they arrived uh, half an hour before. And uh, yesterday in the evening in the Etza Hotel. Yeah. And now uh, I, had, I had breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> At least you had breakfast. <laughs> Who is your first opponent? Whom are you playing against in the oh, first uh, game? Oh, uh, Sea Lions, uh, maybe. Uh, From the US? Uh, US yeah. team. We, we didn't know anything about uh, the Sea Lions, but uh, we'll see. Yes, uh, how, many p how many players do you have, uh, Reinhardt, in the March team? Uh, today we have uh, 12 or 13. Uh, one is uh, missing. Still missing. <laughs> 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 one arrived 3 o'clock <laughs> in the night. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so we will see. Yeah. Are the, are the guys excited, the players, to play? Oh, no. Uh, I think uh, they do uh, their rugby games uh, since 20 or 25 years. So it's always uh, very nice to be here or to be in a championship at all. Yeah. But, uh, yes. Uh, but it, it's, it's always a special event to be able to play against teams like uh, uh, Molde from Norway, like uh, the... Orcas from uh, uh, from Colombia, like these high high playing games. It's a special event to play against them. Sure, also the games today because uh, we know we didn't know uh, as a uh, US team. Yeah, we ha had not uh, played against Aqua Quick and also against uh, uh, what is it? Aka not Aka yeah, against uh, Molde if, if it's Norway. Molde? No, not Molde. Uh, I think we, we tried to read the list here, but we both have a problem. We cannot read it anymore without classes. <laughs> <laughs> Ude Walla, Ude Walla uh, from uh, Sweden. Yes. So the next game is going to be um, Firenze, the female team against uh, the Hammerheads from uh, the US. That's going to be the next team. And uh, so March is going for the championship here. Oh, we will give our best and uh, we <laughs> hope to come to the semi-finals, but, uh, you know, it's uh, re uh, relative uh, short uh, games. Yes. And uh, you need a lot of luck, uh, yeah. not only experience. Yeah. So... Uh, Especially if you play in these high-level games um, where two teams face each other on the same level and it's always a little bit of luck like if you score you have a good chance to win this game because this will be uh, decisive if you score if you manage to score once and uh, yeah that's going to be really interesting I'm really looking forward to see uh, playing March here and uh, your two sons in the water uh, uh, Martin and, and Johan which is always I, I love to see these family connections in underwater rugby um, that's really great I think we have one uh, team from uh, Paderborn. They have uh, um, th he and his wife, uh, uh, Mark uh, Galash and uh, oh. uh, Uli Galash, they're playing. And they have, I think, four kids. And I think all of them are in the water playing. <laughs> it's really amazing. Well, it's a very nice sport. And uh, 
games there are a lot of advantages uh, like uh, playing in the elder uh, categories, categories yeah. or uh, yeah. starting very early yeah. playing. So it's a good sport for the whole family. Yes, it's true. Because and you always can find the team you want to play with in, in the league or category. Yo. So, yes. So now I will uh, go to Join the team. make something uh, clear with uh, Rüdiger. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You always have to. There's a lot of networking. Thank you, Reinhardt, for talking to me here. Talk to you later. See you again. See you again. Yeah, there's always a lot of networking happening here at the Champions Cup um, with referees and uh, the team leaders. And uh, this, is, this is what makes these events so important and so... Uh, valuable for for everyone joining because uh, you meet the people here you normally f uh, only find online you can sit together and it's always different if you uh, meet in meet space and uh, can really like um, see each other look each other in the eye and spend some minutes talking about things uh, you want to exchange plan and know so yes that was uh, Reinhard Schottmüller um, Reinhard Schottmüller here from the team Mulch talking to me and we're looking forward for this upcoming game of uh, Firenze from Italy against uh, the Hammerheads from the US. So Firenze is in blue and the Hammerheads are in white and the game started. Hammerheads from the US are in ball possession, going already for the Firenze basket. They uh, probe the defense of the Italians, go in and uh, it's a furious defense here from Italy. They're trying to get hold of the ball to snatch it away from the Italian attackers. Um, we have a cluster ball is dropping down. Hammerhead still in ball possession, coming in from the close side. We have a lot of uh, Hammerhead players positioned around the basket, but uh, they are tackled away again and again from Firenze. Ah, that was a, the ball was recovered here from uh, Italian players. In Italy is in ball possession, they try to break through. Already they managed to enter the half of the US team going for the US basket. Stopped here in the cluster, but already in the half of the uh, US ball is uh, passed to the goalie. That's always dangerous if you have uh, uh, this, this uh, opening of the basket when the goalie goes for the ball. But there was no, uh, not a real danger here. And the US team again in ball possession. Three US players pushing in on the defense of uh, Firenze and they scored. There was a, a nice attack from the open side of the pool into the goalie who was, uh, I think it was, she was not aware where the attack was coming from. And uh, so we had, wow, there were three players from the US on this open side and they created the space and the time for the ball carrier to push in and score. So Fidenza in ball possession, uh, they try to rescore against uh, uh, the Hammerheads, but they are stopped in the middle. We have a cluster going up to the surface, US in ball possession, but she cannot get rid of the ball, tries to break free on the surface. Ball was uh, snatched away by Italy, and Italy again in ball possession, but uh, they don't really can break through the defense, the forward defense here of the US team, but Italy managed to hold on to the ball and now they can build up their pressure on the US basket. They try to start from the close side, from the corner and push into the defense, but uh, didn't succeed, lost the ball and uh, the US are really fast breaking through without a lot of uh, resistance here into the half of the Italian team and they can build up their strength and their push into the defense and another score here. The defense of Italy was overwhelmed by two players coming from uh, the bottom into the basket area. They scored against the goalkeeper. 
So it's already uh, a 2-0. We see the replay here. How uh, very nicely. Uh, but that's the, the first. That was the first goal, not the second one. And game restarted. Italy on the attack. And the player on the surface tries to push through the defense, the forward defense of the US. They don't succeed here. Italy doesn't succeed. And uh, one US player is breaking through into the basket area of Italy. And uh, oh, the US player here holding the ball was waiting too long. And the ball was snatched away by Italian player. Call from the referee, I guess. Yeah, free throw against the US. So it's a fast game and a uh, slight uh, uh, advantage here for the US, uh, considering speed and coordination of the team. But uh, Italy is holding on and um, they have to find themselves. You, you see them, they're a little bit unstructured in their team play. And the US is doing a good job, uh, the players from the US is doing, are doing a good job to get into these uh, attacks from uh, Italy and another attack on the Italian basket from the close side. But fended off, tackled off to the surface. Italy in ball possession, but the player, no, no, sorry, that was the, yes. The defense of uh, Italy is furious. And they really do their best, but they uh, still leave a lot of gaps that are used by the uh, US players to get into the defense. Oh, that was a pass into the hands of the Italian defender. Uh, she's going forward, trying to swim forward, but uh, she cannot find uh, her teammate. Cluster on the surface. Italy in ball possession. Uh, that was a difficult pass. There was actually that was holding without ball as far as I've seen. Yes. Call from the referee. Holding without ball. It's a free throw against the US. Juan Pablo um, just told me in the in the comments, when I grew up I want to play Champions Cup. Yes. Looking forward, we're waiting for you. How old are you, Juan Pablo? Let me tell me tell me how long I have to wait. Another attack here from the US from the open side. Really nice attack, but uh, <laughs> the Italians are really biting with their teeth into the basket to stop this ball from going in. Then they succeed, tackle it to the surface, and we have clustered on the surface. Uh, Italy trying to fend off this attack from the US. Ball still on the surface. Drop down into the hands of the US. Juan Pablo, you're 26, so you can play Champions Cup. Come on, see you next time. So we have a 3-0 in this game here in the Champions Cup. Firenze, um, the women from Firenze against the uh, New Jersey Hammerheads from the US. And Italy is in ball possession. Three minutes left here in the first half. Italy tries to break into the half of uh, the US defense, but there were not enough players, not enough uh, contact points in their own team to go forward. She had to play backward, but now another team player. Oh, this is a dangerous attack on the US basket. One player is coming from above. Really decisive attack from above into the US basket. That would have been a chance if there would have been another um, Italian players, but there is only one player here in the basket. And another tag, two on one uh, players on uh, the Firenze basket. Well defended. Oh, huge gap here. No goalkeeper. Uh, the defender tries to go up to the basket. It's cluster on the surface. Not pressure. Oh, there was a, a s yes, player alone with the basket, but it didn't react fast enough. Pressure is rising on the Italian basket. They are going in heavily and the defense of Italy do their best to tackle them to the surface to push them away. 
and create a little bit of space for their own forward defense. Like now, a uh, defend, forward defender from Italy is trying to bake through, but she's all alone. Um, we're attacked by two US players, and they build a cluster and go up to the surface. In this moment, it's the only thing you can do if you're holding on to the ball and you have no contact stations in your own team to push forward. But still, Italy is holding on to the ball. Call from the referee on the surface. Didn't see. Sign language is not that clear. Ah, there's a penalty for a player from uh, Italy. That's tough in this situation. So uh, Italy is uh, with one player less in the water and we have 45 seconds left to play in this first half. Italy in blue, female team from Italy against the female team from the US and the New Jersey Hammerheads. 30 seconds left, free throw for uh, US. What's the hold up? Time is ticking. Here we go. Free throw is executed and the US has uh, 12 seconds to reach the Italian basket. Tackled off to the surface. And end of the end of the first half here. Ah, we already see a March player here, number 14 from March, warming up in the water for the next game. So end of the first half, and I thought it was a 4-0, but it's a 3-0 of the Hammerheads from the US against Italy. And we have 10 more minutes to go in the second half. So again, people watching uh, in the live stream, please let me know which country, which city you are from and uh, where are you watching from. Let me know in the comments, write in the comments. Difficult situation here for the Italian team. Um, let me have a look at the number of the players they have in the water. Team list. How many players there are in Firenze? They have uh, one, two, three, four, twelve, I guess. So they at least they have a full team. Um, that's better than the Swiss team that was playing before them. But it's really tough. Hi there, everybody. Uh, welcome to my little home for the next three days. My name is Wolf. I'm from uh, the home club Sportov Berlin here. And I'm doing the Champions Cup together with uh, Binne now for some years doing the comments. And I'm uh, waiting for my partner Lorena to show up uh, to do the comments with me. I uh, need to... Lorena, where are you? Still sleeping, your beauty sleep. So, yep, we are super excited. Uh, for those who uh, didn't uh, watch the first games, we are super excited to be back here with the Champions Cup after the start of the pandemic. Almost, uh, more than almost three years we didn't have a Champions Cup. We really missed it. And uh, I was talking to Manuel, the uh, referee, uh, Manuel Tito de Morai, um, I was talking to him. It feels like it's been centuries that uh, there was no Champions Cup. On the other hand, being here, it feels like it's been yesterday that we last played and uh, commentated. So it's uh, good to be back. Uh, you see all these people are so happy to be together with each other. We see them talking, networking, and it's, it's really like, oh, I haven't seen you in such a long time. And a lot of I'm hugs and, and a lot of uh, love here in the pool area. So it's very good to be back, not for me in the water, but in the commentator box. 
and uh, it's good to have you all back here in the live stream. So, second half is on. Firenze in blue against uh, the Hammerheads from the US in white. And the Hammerheads are leading with 3 0 in the, the second half. Try to get back in the comments. Selena is watching from Colombia. Hello there to Colombia. All right. Uh, picture we already used here in. Uh, we see the uh, US Hammerheads in ball possession, putting a lot of pressure on the Italian basket. But there was a long pass into the hands of the Italian player. And uh, she tries to break through the forward defense of the US. And one player is holding the ball. I think she's, uh, oh, she has uh, one uh, bandaged arm. So this player is playing only with one arm here in this game. Tough decision. But if you play on the water rugby and your heart is in it, you play. Uh, respect to this player. So another pressure situation for Firenze on their basket. The US are coming in from the close side, pushing in from above into the defense, into the goalkeeper. Pass overhead. Uh, oh, that was a... Uh, probably holding on to the basket uh, from the goalkeeper, didn't see penalty. it, but it's a penalty against Wedgie Italy. So yes, uh, if you are on a lot of passion, uh, pressure, um, mistakes happen, and these are the situations uh, which are really tough when you try to Time defend as good as you two. can, but uh, still... You make mistakes, you start to make mistakes. And that's a timeout for blue. That's the usual thing to do. If you have a free th uh, a penalty against you, you take a timeout to restructure and give the goalie time to take a breath. So penalties are always uh, interesting situations in the in a game. Because you, you have a one-on-one -on -one situation, and it's always exciting to see these penalties, how they are executed. And I'm curious uh, about uh, what we will see right now, who will be defending and who will be attacking on both sides of this game. Hammerheads from the US against uh, Firenze from Italy. Referees get in position. For those who don't know it, uh, penalty is 45 seconds. And uh, the defender, the goalie, is not allowed to leave the basket uh, farther away than his own body length. Okay, here we go. Uh, the attacker from the US is going in from the bottom. And uh, the goalie is trying to find uh, the position to turn around. Oh, that was, yeah, she was, was creating a gap here. And uh, US player scored. See it here in the replay. She tries to repositioning. And that was push up with a, yeah, with a leg. Uh, the scissor movement under the goalkeeper pushed the goalkeeper up and scored from the close side. Very nicely executed and difficult to defend for a goalkeeper. Lisa is back in the game. Hello, Lisa. Hi. How are you doing? Coffee. Yes, White. coffee is a uh, good stuff here in the Champions Cup. It's really important to have coffee. So I think the counting uh, here in the uh, is not right. We should have a four, five, a five zero, I guess, for the Hammerheads. Didn't count here. US uh, again in ball position. Um, two players now going into the defense of Firenze. Defended off by the forward uh, defense. Oh, that was well defended, but the Italian player lost the ball again, and we're still in ball position going in back 
into the defense of Firenze. And there was a US player stealing the basket. It still has the goal, actually. Yes. That's a dangerous situation. Yes, and she just has to turn around and drop the ball in. That was a very long time, actually, for yep. Firenze to not have white. someone at least going on top Number of 10. that person who stole the goal because they were by themselves. Like the Hammerheads had a player on the basket for solid five, yeah. seven yeah. seconds. Normally, uh, you would try to lie uh, on top of this uh, player stealing the basket. And I think the back didn't realize that um, it was someone else on the goal. Yeah, the defender on the, on the bottom, yeah. And another attack, they're really fast here at the US um, with their switching from defense into the attack. Um, call from the referee on the surface. Let's see if we can identify. It's like a free throw. Two minute penalty, white number 44. Or the combat, is it? No, a free throw for Firenze. For Fisalis yeah. for punching. punching the ball. Time out, white. Time out. Thank you. Time out, white. Teams, separate, please. Okay, the right. referees. Okay, timeout uh, white, so the Hammerheads took a timeout. Yes. So the score is 5 0. You said? Yeah. Is I back I was or is correct now? I, that should be correct, yeah. Okay. So this gives Firenze another second uh, also to uh, collect their senses and um, find their structure back in the water. Like we said, when we have a game where you are a lot under pressure mm -hmm. and uh, you have to, to maintain your team structure, and if you start to break, you have to take a time out, take a step back, take a breath, and go back into the game, because but otherwise... No, it's not the Hammerheads who took the time out. Yeah, but uh, um, Firenze did two before the penalty. Time so it, it's just like it's a good moment for a team that is under pressure to take a breath and restructure. Yeah, and even if you don't say a lot, it's just gathering yeah. your thoughts, maybe switch tactics or something. Or Actually, it's best to never, no one says a lot <laughs> in the breaks. Yeah, just let the coach talk. Yeah. So back in the game. And they're on the surface, and it's a free throw for Fisalis. Repeat, two minute distance. Free throw, blue. I don't know what the call was. Oh. Maybe out of bounds. This it has the ball. And free throw for the ham heads. Free throw right. Oh, it's going to be a free throw uh, shootout. And the hammerheads are playing with just five players actually. You have a you have a countdown on the hammerhead side. Ah, yeah. It looks like they're they got a player excluded. Maybe the one who was punching the basket before. Yeah, could be. I only and saw in the first half. I saw um, Italy having a penalty. But that's why th I guess that's why they took the the timeout, timeout because yeah. they had to restructure because they just have five players. Definitely. So this is a good time actually for Fisalis to um, go in and try and score. I'm not I'm not used to these fancy displays we have right now. <laughs> totally overwhelmed. Good job done by Winne. Yeah. I'm traumatized by my infamous timeout clock at the World Championships. <laughs> <laughs> so Firenze tries now to build up their attack pattern. Um, but there was, uh, uh, wow, there was a second, just a second. Uh, uh, and it took the uh, US to, to get the ball away from uh, the Italian players. One-on-one -on -one situation on the basket. And the US player pushed the goalie from the Italy up, but didn't succeed to push the ball into the basket. What is this chaos? <laughs> this is a really chaotic situation, yeah, and it's, it's difficult to, to keep up a defense in this chaos. And it's always uh, uh, an advantage for the attacker. Yeah, and you had the Italian players, you would have people going on the basket, but I guess it was not actual goalies, so they would roll away back to their position. So the goal was open for a very long time and in this situation actually when you have a chaos and set so dangerous over your goal you just go and stick to the goal whatever if you're not good at it but just be on it 
Um, we have a question here from uh, Nicola, Nicolo, sorry, Bruna. cannot. Nicola Bruna, Bruna. from Italy. Um, the pool depth is, it's tr 320. 320, yeah. That's the depth. It's not that uh, deep. So Italy, again, in attack. The Hammerheads are back to six players in the water. And we just have one minute 30-ish left to the game. It would be nice if Italy could score one goal because it was nice to at least score one. Yeah, they, they earned it because they worked hard in this game. Um, but I don't see the US uh, giving them the chance and they don't have uh, gaps or uh, any holes here in their defense. It's solid and their forward attack, uh, forward defense is really good in keeping away Italy from getting too close to the basket here. So one minute to go. And uh, Italy is in ball possession and now trying to come from above. There was a little insecurity here of the ball uh, keeper, ball uh, carrier uh, above the basket. And she lost the ball to, yes, uh, we have a 45 seconds. cluster. Uh, there is a referee call coming from underwater, a free throw against the hammerhead. Just 30 seconds left on the clock. They should play fast. Yeah, but this is the moment you throw in everything you have. Nothing yeah. to lose for Italy here. Take yeah. all your players, throw them in, and try to score at least once. Yeah, but I think they... Yeah, the hammerheads, of course, you had one player go very fast. I think she went too fast and mm. too close. So, of course, it's a repeat. And, well, until well, they pass the ball, the game is over. Time is counting against Italy here. Yeah. yeah. And that's yeah, it. Game over. 5-0. For the New Jersey Hamheads. <laughs> have someone wave at us in the camera. <laughs> It's very nice to see these replays um, of uh, the, the scoring moments. So you can reflect a little bit uh, on what happened here in the game. Mm -hmm. We have a question, why did the goal, the wide goal not count? I think that was the call for punching. No? Could be, yeah. I think yeah. When they had one player less. Yeah. yeah. I didn't see the, the punch, but uh, that could be the, the penalty, the time penalty and the not uh, counting of the goal. Mm -hmm. So. Next uh, game coming up. Um, oh, we have, uh, like we said, uh, just talked to Reinhard Schottmüller, uh, the, the, how can you say, the patriarch of uh, uh, TSV Malch against uh, the sea lines from the US. This is going to be really interesting to see March in the water now. And uh, like uh, Schottmüller said, um, they don't know anything about the Sea Lions. I think I haven't seen them playing uh, yet too, but... Uh, where are the Sea Lions from actually? In the uh, US. Yeah, but where in the US? Newark. Newark. Yeah, let us know, Sea Lions. Tell us something about the Sea Lions, please, in the comments. If you know about the team. I guess uh, you have a uh, uh, good insight here for the people watching. Ah, oh, nice, we have a, a camera on the boat. Now you see the pool area, the atmosphere of the Chance Cup. To the left in the corner, you can buy the fins uh, from waterways. And it's good to see a lot of people standing there looking at the fins. So yeah, I'm looking forward to see Malch. Um, I think Malch, Molle, and uh, the Colombians, uh, the Orcas, are uh, one of, of, of three top teams here in the Champions Cup. You see the backs of the Malch players concentrating before the game and doing their team mantra. Uh, because we have some questions in the chat about the score. So, so far, against Luxembourg, 
Helvetia against the Terra Sea Dragons. We have game 2 0. Very tight, very good game. Orcas male against uh, uh, Firenze male game 19 0. Triton Berun from Czech Republic against Zurich. Ah, oh, I didn't write it down, but it was a 0 for uh, uh, Zurich and I think, I'm not sure, a 19 or almost. Okay. But a really high high score for Triton Berun. Okay. Oh, I think you said the things wrong. Sorry. Helvetia zero, the Sea Dragons two. Uh, 19 for Orcas, zero for Firenze. Triton won against Zurich and Kessalis against Hammerhead, zero five. I will let uh, uh, the uh, the tech uh, winner know he should uh, update the um, s the scores. The results on the website on the is website, because we're yeah. not updated yet. Um. If there's, as always, any questions, anything you'd like to know, or technical problems, let us know in the chat so we can try and fix them or answer the questions. So the teams are slowly getting in position for the game. And the game has started. And the camera switch is not happening. I think our camera technician is grabbing a coffee. <laughs> and that was not a goal. We have now free throw against Mash for pushing without a ball. So no goal. So what happened? What happened, the Lisa? Games, the game started, it looked like a goal for Malsch, but then it was not one because of pushing. And um, yes, I think our camera technician, the one who's switching the screens, had been working through for the last five games, so he was not up <laughs> to the task. <laughs> he was not here <laughs> to switch the screen at the beginning of the game. Um, we're a small team. So uh, you see the light situation. The sun is now shining into the pool area, which can create beautiful colors or no light at all. I think the cameras are a little bit overwhelmed. Yes. So mulch in blue and uh, sea lines from the US uh, in white. And mulch pushed hard on the US basket. And uh, the US players recover the ball, try to break into the half of mulch, but mulch is Forward defense is very fast, very decisive, and they stopped the attack of the US players. And are now in a counter attack, two players going for the mulch basket, pushing in hard from the open side. This is a rough game, you it's see it. It's a very physical game. Yes. If you see it in the movements and in the contact uh, uh, the players have with each other. This is, this is physical. Wow. I know that the US team tend to play a bit rough. But Mulch, uh, um, they they don't uh, they pay back here. It's, it looks really crunching if you, they go okay, in the into the, the defense. So the ball was over the basket, a bit of a scrum, and Mulch did a very nice and actually had a very uh, open passways and managed to take the ball out a bit and retreat it to the corner, to the close corner. So. Until now, uh, the US is doing a very good job here um, defending against the attacks from Mulch. And Mulch is pushing hard. As far as we can see, they are really close. They, they don't leave a lot of space from the ball. They're really around the basket, fighting hard. But the, the attacks from uh, the defenders are tough. It's tough for Mulch to build up their pattern. Ooh, the pass got intercepted. Free throw against the U.S. Holding without ball. Okay, here we have a player from Malch getting into a perfect position for Medla. Um, yes, so he's completely blocking the back from getting into position. Um, respect to the defense here of uh, the Sea Lions. They're setting a standard here for Malch, uh, they have to overcome in the first uh, three and a half minutes of this first half here, Champions Cup 2022 in Berlin. 
And Malch has to find its way into this relentless uh, defense of the sea lines. Let's see this, this moment. They, they don't have a split of a second to concentrate on the ball, and they are uh, immediately under attack by the U.S. players. And again, the free throw for Malch out of bounds. There is a lot of fouls by the Sea Lions, though. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, out of bounds, okay, but there was like a few holding and... Uh, if you play on a physical level, it happens. Yes. So you again, you can play physical without fouls. Though. That's true, but it's easier. Uh, you have the fouls happen if you play physical. Okay, U.S. in the counterattack now. Now we see them uh, going to the basket of the German players. Very but fast. Very fast uh, um, solution from Malch here. They recover the ball and are uh, in the counterattack again. So uh, as good as the defense of the U.S. is here, we haven't seen much of their attack capability um, to, the, to the second yet. Yes. Malch has way longer attack phases and they manage to move the ball around the basket of the US team way more. And they recover if they get under attack they recover the ball way faster. Ooh, oh the ball, the ball is, is like it's it like it's squished out of this this cluster of players. It was was pressed so hard and nobody knew where it was. Open basket, that is really close open basket here with all these uh, uh, game going on. Uh, I'm not sure what the player did because he took the the ball up. I thought he would swim on the surface and then yeah. dive down more and forward, but he dove back, like he passed more to the back again over his own basket. That was very risky. That would have been a, a situation for Mulch, but there were no uh, German players, and we have now a cluster on the surface, um, on the close side. We're sorry for the pink screen. <laughs> That's a bit of a cable problem. That's a new feature, like the others. <laughs> Berlin is known for its techno scene. Yes, it's like uh, you just have to imagine the, the techno music. So, like I said, uh, Malch really pushes hard into the defense, but the uh, the forward defense of uh, uh, the the sea lions is impeccable. They are really fast. They are really sharp in their attacking good and at yeah and they manage even to steal away the ball or the rip the ball out of the german hands and ball drops down to the bottom they have to drag the, the ball to the surface quite a lot though yeah the the question is can they keep up this uh, speed this level of uh, I, I say aggressiveness and i mean it in a in a in an underwater rugby way it's not aggressive like uh, bad but like they play aggressive in a good way and if they can keep it up uh, throughout these uh, 20 minutes. And again, Malch is pushing hard into the basket of the US players, but uh, the, you have the, 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 the feeling there are only US players. And now there's a good chance from the close side. There were two Malch players on the bottom. Yeah, but the goalie who came to exchange on the one who was already lying saw the danger and pressed the other one on, like, on top of the basket. So it was. Would be almost impossible really good to defense game here we see from the US. Ball in the open side, pass back and forth. The March players are pressing hard into the defense, but uh, even have to go up with the ball to the surface. You don't see that very often happen with March. They, they need to go to the surface of the ball. Call from the referee. Um, out of bounds, I guess. What yes, I uh, out of the uh, water, I yeah, guess, yeah. One to the surface, and so it's a free throw for the Sea Lions. Free throw against Marsh. That's an exciting game um, because uh, I didn't know what to expect from the US, and uh, neither I think did uh, Marsh. Didn't either. Like yeah. you see some attacks, they go in with two players. They have to go in with three. Like yeah. their Marsh often lacks a third player to be there yes. to help score. Which is astonishing because uh, normally you would see them building up their waves of the wave, but the the defense, the, the forward defense, the attacking defense of uh, US is really aggressive in a good way. Mm. And now US is in ball possession, um, trying to build up their attack pattern around the German basket. Just outside the danger zone. Yeah. Highway to the danger zone too early to start something. Really? Okay, I stopped then. 
So it's it's really difficult here for the US to find a spot to get into the defense of March. And March does a different job than the US on their basket. They uh, they hold them on distance and the US are not going that aggressively inside. Now we have first uh, the scene US players going really into the defense, close to the basket, pushing from the open side into the basket, but the the defenders are referee call. After it, call from referee. Hold, was holding, I guess. Mm -hmm. Free throw against uh, US. Yeah. yeah, pushing. Still zero zero and forty five. Uh, for, yeah, forty seconds left. Yeah. Do you hear the honk on the live stream as well? I hear the honk all the time. Ooh, that's well. So, uh, oh, here is March. The chance for March. That is really close. The, heap, uh, the attacker, I think it was Johan Malch, is pushing. Pushing in into the basket. And. Sorry, we're a little bit interrupted here because we hear the, the, the horn blowing and we don't know where it's, it's coming from. So still 0-0 zero, zero after the first half and it was a close situation. Probably we will see it in the replay. I was a little bit distracted here, but uh, I think it was Jochen uh, uh, Schottmüller um, pushing into the goalkeeper and he had the back of the goalkeeper and tried to push the ball behind him into the basket. But I guess there were a lot of hands from uh, US players stopping the ball from getting into the basket. So, Lisa, yes, it's first it. half is over. That was an uh, impressive game uh, we saw there and um, surprising in a good way. Like we said, we didn't know what to expect from the US team. Um, I would say the advantage is a little bit in the, in the hands of uh, Malch, but they couldn't uh, put it into action into a goal. Yes, Malch are way calmer in the way they play so far. Yep. And they're very very good at controlling the, Control, the ball yeah. and passing. Then when they do a tiny mistake, then that's when the US, the Sea Lions, are able to go for the ball. But uh, I don't completely agree with the comment that says no chaos. It feels very uh, a bit hectic when they, you see the, the defense of of Malch, you have one person and they're lying, like they're kind of in control and way more calm because the forwards manage to create the space between the, the back and the ball to let the back and the goalie have space and be calm and um, when the slides uh, are the in the basket, um, they don't have the space yeah. between the defending block and the ball. Malch is closer to the, to the goal. On the other hand, as you say, they're they're very physical, the Sea Lions, so let's see how it evolves in the second half. Uh, but I, I wouldn't say the defense of uh, the, the Sea Lions is uh, chaotic. They, it, it's really fast and aggressive, like I said, in a good way, aggressive. They really go into it physically to fend off March, and it looks a little bit like they're uh, fighting hard. It is uh, physical, but I think it's really controlled. I think they know what they're doing. But we haven't seen them doing the same kind of uh, forward aggressiveness on the March basket. But I guess it's due to the defense of March, which is compared to the um, US defense, calmer and more controlled. That's, that's totally true. Compared to it, it looks chaotic, but I don't think it is. So, so I'm curious, second half, what the both teams for the, because the first half is testing, what are we up against? So the second half will be like, uh, now we make a decision, now we know how to um, break the other team and go forward. So I'm curious what we'll see right now. Yes, so March was first at the ball, but it got immediately recovered by the US, and now we have a big scrum on the surface. And okay, both teams now have a player underneath. And uh, it's, it's March again in ball possession, going forward into the basket. And this could be a chance now, come on, from the open side. 
No, but we see the same thing over and over again. The US are very good in going into these attack structures of the mulch team, stealing away the ball and going in the counter offensive. And now we have a counter attack from uh, the Sea Lions. But it gets topped by Marsh, and Marsh is pushing the ball against into the midfield. And okay, we're a bit midfield, which we haven't had much game in the midfield so far. But the player is a bit mm, by himself, lacking a bit of support, maybe. Kid got a bit faster than the beginning of the game. Now we got into this phase of the game where it's that aggressive and the, t the players get that offensive that we move on to surface cross. And the pink blinking is uh, a problem, actually, I think, with uh, the cables that we have. We have that too. It's not just a stream. It's here as well. But we're working on it. Yes, it's always the first uh, day in the, in the live stream, setting up everything and getting work. Uh, they have little glitches in the whole uh, spectrum, so sorry about that, but we'll try to do our best uh, to give you comments and give you a view. Um, Lisa, I guess if you see s these clusters on the surface, that's always a sign for me, either uh, the teams are lacking air or strategy. Yes, and what should you do? Like and we I, have I, I, I know I'm not, <laughs> personally, I'm not good at scrum, so I would I usually get out and like, let's yes. wait until the ball goes so back do down. I, so do I. So there was a, a huge cluster here in the corner of uh, the mall team. And now the US is attacking really tough. Yeah, but see, like we said, yeah, it's really controlled how March defends. They're picking out uh, the ball off the hands of the US players and go for and a counterattack. Like the back came quite late and the US player had the ball under his arm and it just got turned out like immediately the match player saw it and managed to pull it out yeah yeah okay we have a referee call from, from the, the surface, surface. Uh, uh, see the players the team leaders are did a little quick discussion oh, it's free throw against mulch no against the sea lions ah sorry um, i was in the first half And Marsh is at the goal. And we're back uh, at the US basket. And Marsh is pushing hard. But again, a uh, really decided uh, defense from the US. And they, but they have to fight every every inch now to get in direction of the March basket. I think it was a call. No, no call from the referee. It was a, just a break from the player he took on the surface to uh, to orientate, and uh, the March players were waiting what will happen. And inch by inch, the U.S. players are crawling with the ball in direction of the March basket. Yeah, but you see, the forechecking was good. Like, I managed to stop the ball quite early, early like yeah. before the basket, and then the back and the goalie could get into position yeah. quite easy, and they didn't have to rush, so they can keep a, a calm uh, heartbeat, a heart rate. The mulch is in good control of this game here. Yeah, but it's still like, for being one of the most famous teams and best in the world, it's still 0-0. Zero zero yes, after yes, 15 exactly. minutes of game. Exactly. And that's uh, due to the amazing game from the sea lines. And here you see Malch just has one player and no support underneath. It was came a bit late. late. Yeah. So we really have to give it to the sea lions. They're fighting very well. And fast. I think uh, Malch has to deal with the speed of the sea lions uh, they put here in the water, which takes uh, your the it's tall from uh, the defending team. And so uh, Malch lost a lot of uh, their energy in the defense of the US uh, basket and now they try to recover and go in from the close side very good defended by the US from the close side the the attack didn't go through to the basket 
much really struggles now to get closer to the basket like they did in the first half. And the U.S. Is, is up for it and always on the ball. Now we has recovered the ball, but lost it again. Still a little bit in the danger zone. Pretty well solved by the U.S. Fight for the ball in the middle of the pool. Ball goes down again to the U.S. player. Stopped immediately by a March player. And he signed he was, uh, was holding without ball. But uh, yeah, now we got the call from the referee holding without ball. Holding. Uh, White free throw. They, they gave advantage and waited. Now it's a uh, free throw against Malsh. So it's still 0-0 zero, zero and we have uh, three and a half minutes uh, to play left. Ooh, one against one. It was interesting that the Marsh players chose to go from above because there was no back. Like they could have gone underneath and tried to push from the bottom. So both teams now uh, will throw in uh, the last of the energy in these uh, last uh, three minutes of these totally 20 minutes. Oh, he stole the basket and he didn't manage to get it in. Really? I haven't seen it from the quality. It was a call from the referee, Goal. probably. Blue team. A replay now. We see the replay. Number what 10. happened? Uh, there is holding. There is a holding. Ah, we, we are in the wrong replay. That's the wrong replay, yes. <laughs> it was the... White team, timeout. White team, timeout. Timeout here. White, the, so the Sea Lions took a timeout. Was it a penalty? I haven't seen the sign, actually. Why is it been a penalty? Yeah, we're aware that the picture is glitching. We're trying to get it fixed. Um, it doesn't go faster if you remind us about it. That is two seconds. Sorry. Uh, Bobby Simpson says uh, uh, the German style is too much uh, out muscling and wrestling. Um, I would call it more like uh, this this controlled ball play, which is uh, more like uh, not physical, but uh, it looks slow against the, the fast play of uh, the sea lines here. I agree with you here, Bobby. Um, the, the, the game of the US team looks faster. And like I said, and I repeat myself, it's, it's uh, seconds more left. aggressive in a, in a fast way. Um, um, and Malch is, is dealing with their, the way, their way to do it, with their control game. But they are uh, struggling here and in certain situations to get through against this tap, 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 tap play it's of the US. It's two different kinds of game. And so they block each other, they cancel each other, kind of. Because one is fast and passing, I and see. it comes against the wall of muscle. That is way slower. But so it, they, they kind of, yep. it's like a puzzle. Usually you would have two teams try to fit in the, in the gaps that the other leaves. But they have so different playing styles that it I just agree. cancels each other. Yeah, yeah. It's very interesting to watch. Yeah. And even though uh, March was a lot in the advantage on the basket and still is uh, put more pressure on the on the U.S. basket, but they don't succeed in scoring because they they are a little bit um, you don't know how they it looks like they don't know how to deal with the fast game of the U.S. So U.S. players again in ball possession they broke free of this attack from March and are stopped in the middle. Ball fell down again in the hand of the March players who goes up to the surface and we have a cluster on the surface. One minute 25 to go. I have to admit I'm surprised in a good way by the game of uh, the US and I would have thought uh, we see a, a clear, almost clear win from Malsch without knowing anything about the sea lines. Mm -hmm. Amazing game we see. Yeah, so Alicia here is saying that the U.S. team is lacking support. Every time they get the ball, they have too much players on them. And the U.S. needs more fake passes and more players to add unpredictability in the midfield. That's true. Like, Malsch recovers the ball very fast. But it also feels like Malsch also kind of lacks support sometimes, especially at the basket. Yeah, when uh, they attack the basket, they, yeah. yeah. When they attack the basket, they with the style they play, they would need another 
player or two they to be cannot, there to manage this court. It, it, it looks like the US is filling every gap that uh, Malch creates with a player, so they cannot play their game at the at the basket. Now it's 30 seconds left, so oh. it should be all in. Ooh, po pass to the goalie from the attacker. That, that was a dangerous situation. 20 seconds left. Ball is falling down. Still was quite a dangerous ar uh, area. And the US is going for a counter-attack. Now is the time to throw everything in to score. We're going to just have the last five seconds at the surface in a scrum. And there is... Okay, that's it. Wow. That's it. Total respect Game here um, to the Champions Cup newcomers of the uh, Sea Lions. It was an amazing uh, game we saw against um, the German champion Malch. It's very interesting and I'm very curious to see uh, how many of those players will be in the US national team in Montreal next summer because that's a very physical team, with very fast, play very Colombian style. Mm -hmm. um, that would be very interesting to watch. Yeah, so we have a new, uh, um, how do we call it, uh, our, our teams that are able to win this championship. Um, uh, so we have to put, I think, the sea lines on the list uh, for yeah. on the male side. Or at least on the up and coming yeah. list. So I would love to see them uh, playing too against uh, Colombia and uh, Norway. So in this group we have Malch from Germany, Aquaquick from um, Denmark, Udevala from Sweden, and the Sea Lions from the US. So getting the second spot for this group will be really, really yes. tough. Yes, yes, that's a tough group. That's a very physical group. And so now Aquaquick is warming up. Um, so we have Aquaquick against Udevala right now. I don't know if we have the team list here, but I know that Udevala just has eight or nine players here. Because uh, some people got sick or couldn't make it. Udevala here. Yeah, so here yeah, you have a full team, yeah, yeah, but they're yeah. just... Ah, the people who are actually in the water in the pool. Yeah, I was yeah. talking with, um, with one of the players before, and they're just eight or nine. So they oh just right. have two forwards. Yeah, whoa. <laughs> yeah. That's that's really tough. It was the same with Zurich. Um, you can <laughs> hold on to this, but uh, it takes your toll um, after some minutes on if you have play against a tough opponent, if you don't have a partner to, cha to change throughout the game. Yeah. So I, I would be curious now to listen to the deep briefing of the March team. I would like to listen in. I have a feeling that someone is shouting yes, at, I at other uh, people. Probably yes. <laughs> do you know if they have an external coach? Or, or do you have a coach player or um, is the coach not playing? They have a coach player, yeah. Okay. And I think if uh, Reinhard Schottmüller, who just have been here in the, in, the, in the box with me, he would say, Yeah, Jungs, das war aber nix. So... Um, in, in their uh, home dialect, it, it, it really sounds like a, a, like a beer grumbling. Um, beer or beer? Beer, beer, beer. I always mix that. Remember I drink beer and I don't play with beer. Bears. <laughs> Better not. Nope. I'm going to go check with the technicians to see what's happening with the yep. cable. Looking forward thing. for an update <laughs> yeah. on the live stream. And maybe I get them to pull up the team list so you can have fun reading Swedish and Danish names out loud golf ah super thank you that would be my my pleasure to do that so yeah everybody again uh, every time we have a new uh, game coming up i asked you tell me where are you watching from um, which is your home team which city are you in where are you watching from And uh, what's your guess for the upcoming game here in this Champions Cup 2022 in Berlin? <laughs> here we see the playlist, but I think that's the whole list, not actually um, the people in the water, like uh, Lisa just said, uh, some, pe some teams are missing players. So Denmark, Aquaquick, I think Aquaquick has been in the Champions Cup before. Um, but Udevala, I'm not sure. I don't think they, uh, the Swedish team played before in the Champions Cup. 
If you know more, please tell me in the comments. We try to interact as much as we can with the comments in the live stream because this gives us uh, insight and gives you the possibility to talk to us and um, keep uh, the feedback loop with us acting. Lisa is going out now to ask uh, what's the problem with the transmission and these glitches we have in the picture. Sorry about that. Canberra, Australia is Alicia Stross watching. Yes, that's far away. Vernon Hang from Singapore. Singapore, hello to Singapore. Also far away. Amazing, the world is watching. White team ready. Udevala, Sweden, yes, your home team. Very good, Lot. Very nice. So I guess I know whom you're uh, um, siding with. <laughs> So, yes, do you know about uh, anything about these teams? But before, can you give us an update, Lisa? Did you get any information about uh, the glitches in the... Wait, is this a game? Oh, did yeah, you already start it? <laughs> Sorry, uh, we just saw it. So, game started. And uh, let's have an orientation. Aquaquick in blue and Udevala in white. You can see it now here in the, in the display. So the glitches are a system error and the technicians are working on it, but they're trying to figure out what the error exactly is. We will fix it when it's fixed. That's how, that's how life works? Yeah. But we were aware of the fact that there is a problem. So Bobby Simpson is writing us, Udevala is a small town from the west coast of Sweden. They won the Swedish championships for the first time this year. Thank you very much for this insight. So Udevala here as a newcomer team and a Champions Cup and as a champion in Sweden. And they're doing a good job putting pressure here on uh, the basket of Aqua Quick. Juan Camilo is asking where can I find uh, the schedule and results usually on the website, but I think they are not updated yet, but we are working in that too. We have a lot to uh, work on here. I think the most urgent issue right now is the stream. Yes, and uh, let's go in this game here. Udevala is, uh, it looks for me like they're a little bit in, uh, oh, I'm on the wrong side. This is Aquaquick. Aquaquick uh, going now into the defense of uh, Udevala. It's getting more and more difficult for us too to see something in this live stream. That's a bit dark now. <laughs> yes, we see the yellow ball, so... Uh, but Aqua Quick is attacking and they're spending most of the time next to the Udevala basket. Yeah, and the defense in Udevala is doing a good job keeping them at least arm length away from the basket. But like here, Udevala player recovered the ball but didn't, didn't have a, a contact point to play the ball to and uh, get rid of it. So he, he ends in the cluster on the surface uh, it's a one-on-one -on -one, uh, fight for but the ball. But there is no support. There is yeah. all the other Udevala players were to the back and at the surface. The and it's a bigger scrum now. The schedule is on the website. If you go to uwr24.de and click on Champions Cup, and then you go to Schedule. And you have all the team lists as well. Minus some last minute changes and people who got sick. And we changed the basket. We are now at the basket of Aqua Quick and uh, Udivala is attacking, but uh, not yet managing to get really close to the basket. They're staying in the close corner. Aqua Quick is not really pushing out to try and attack the ball. It's like in the holding position. But now uh, Aqua Quick interfered with the waiting positions of Udevala. Did you just say Aquavit? Aqua quick. <laughs> Aqua bit. <laughs> Udevala was in ball possession, but the ball fell behind the, the player. Didn't see it. He was waiting there. So um, advantage for Aqua quick. And the goalie 
went out and got the ball. But he went to the surface, which is always dangerous to be above your own basket. Ball bell just falling, we have holding without ball. No, the I think he was just in the, was in the referee. An was just, yeah. It's an advantage. Okay, still come to attacking. So the referee is still like letting it run. Odevala now is really close to the basket of uh, Aqua Quick and Ooh. is pushing hard. And uh, there is a stress moment here for uh, Aqua Quick from Denmark. We now have a scrub, um, surface crumb just above the Aqua Quick goal, but they're pushing it back. Direction midfield. It's a it's a very equal game here between these two teams. Um, they are facing each other on a on a very uh, equal level. Um, but it's interesting to see Udivala when they are in ball possession, they uh, really build up their attack patterns from the distance, start slow and then try to get in. Um, but uh, this this is not enough. But they had a nice uh, uh, attack. But they take a little bit too long to start. Uh, it looks, in my opinion. So like these moments, they are waiting, waiting, waiting. Here comes the first wave. Stopped. But it's a it's a slow approach. Maybe they try to uh, grind their way into the. Uh, Danish defense, but it looks slow to me. They're taking a bit of rest in the corner and ah. Pass uh, in the hands of the opponent. And they have to fight for the ball again. Danish player is holding the ball, but attacked by two uh, Swedish players. We have again a surface crumb. And we had an aqua quick player under the goal. Quick counter attack. Hello back to uh, Adelaide. Uh, thank you for watching us. Yes, Christian Schaeffer said, which is very true, both, like the players know each other very well. And that's true for both teams. Yeah, I would that's say. that explains a lot uh, what's happening here in the water. Because like it's, it's a testing and they know um, what they can do and what they cannot do with each other. And uh, so we see, yeah, that explains a lot. And I reckon that Sweden and Denmark, like they also play against each other. Yeah, yeah. Quite often. Like, uh, and have very Christian similar play playing style as well. Because it's the Scandinavian yeah. playing style. It's Ooh, not, oh, that, that was a good chance here for Aqua Quick under the basket. And someone, like a, a forward um, uh, Aqua Quick player position for a Nebla. But it didn't turn into a goal. So they pulled out again to the corner and now they're going in again, moving the ball again the against the round basket. And now again one against one and the back was a bit late there. Th there are chances here for Aqua Quick uh, to, to be at the basket. This is a push up. I think this this player was not holding the <gasps> ball, but still pushing. Oh, that was close. There was no goalkeeper, and the player was above him and tried to turn around and push the ball in. But the goalkeeper stopped the ball with his head and had a, a, a sec split of a second to get hold of the ball and get away with it. That was close. Yeah. I feel like... Oh, we have a call from the surface ball referee. Ball out of, of the line. Free throw against White. Four aqua quick. Free throw yeah, what white. I want to say is that I have a feeling that Udavala is getting maybe a tiny bit out of air. Mm -hmm. And especially the back positions, the defensive positions, when defending at some point, if you yep. go down three, four times, that's when you would switch. But if you have only eight or nine players, it's a bit hard. Totally true. And you see more gaps now in the defense of Udavala. But still, they're uh, very good holding on uh, in the last second. But this, these are the dangerous moments. It's a nice game, and it's also the kind of rugby I'm used to see. Yeah. I'm more familiar with, so it's easier for me to see what's happening than when I see the Colombians yeah. or like the, yeah. the Sea Lions play, like the US. It was different to what I'm used to because in Europe it's not really the style that we've heard them be yeah. used. Oh, and Udavala got the ball out, and 
is swimming towards the Aqua Quick goal and have a good forechecking here. Intercepted here Interception. by Aqua Quick. Returning back again into the half of Odevala. And the time is ticking. 30 seconds left here in this first half. And probably the last attack here from Aqua Quick. Oh, they didn't see the ball. Is free. The ball is completely <laughs> free. <laughs> it was lying on the open side behind the defender. He didn't see it and uh, was recovered by the Kovic player. The cluster going up to the surface. There's a lot of very close calls. A whole day without ball advantage. Or just does this referee signal no, an advantage? I think it, no, or no, they no, just no, no, hold no, their hands? just holding his hand. This is very confusing. Okay, Udevala got the ball again and just holds on to it. Then that's half time. Half time break. No. Yep. Half time yes. break. Did the halftime break switch for from five to three minutes? Was it always three minutes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because our timing is, is really close, and uh, so the breaks are mm -hmm. quite short. So yes, um, nice game with uh, um, I'd say now uh, equal level, but uh, uh, Udivala, like you like you already said, Lisa is a disadvantage with less players, with only eight players here in the game, which uh, puts a lot of pressure on the players in the water if you don't have an exchange player. Depends on how you uh, rotate. You can rotate through the whole team, but normally um, some players are really missing, are, are just missing their exchange partners. So it's tough for Odevala. They have uh, three minutes now to recover. But they're playing, like they're also attacking yes. and counter-attacking, good at four-checking and pretty stable. Um, let's you see how the second half-time goes. Yeah, you only saw it like you you, um, you mentioned in the more opening breaks in, in their defense. But uh, altogether, I wouldn't say uh, in the first half they they lagged behind Aqua Quick. Yes. So what, what would be your guess, Lisa? I think it's. I think the advantage is in the, in the Aquavik area because of more players. I guess so, but I wouldn't give up on Udevala. No, no. Um, they're they're pretty good. Uh, it's nice to watch. I like watching them. Also, I like that the captain is number twenty-seven. That's my captain as well. Ha ha! Now we have inside. <laughs> <laughs> Automatically, my friend. Have <laughs> <laughs> the same cut number. So three minutes is not a lot of time to recover in between these high-intensity games, and uh, also this is not uh, uh, a simple game. This is the Champions Cup, and there's a lot of pressure and excitement uh, in the players, mostly uh, in start of the game, um, because you you want to score, you want to win, and you want to bring your team forward. So. This, uh, you have to take this into account if you watch these games here at the Champions Cup 2022 in Berlin. Yes. 15 uh, seconds left. And we have some insight. Get ready, here second half. Bobby. Team get ready. That the Udavala team never does warm up before playing. Really? Should, should we believe that or is just a smear campaign from wow. our favorite Australian in Sweden? <laughs> I couldn't do it. N not warming up would be uh, the death of my, my game from the beginning. All right, nine minutes uh, and 55 seconds uh, left in this first half. So 10 minutes here in the first half, in the second half of this game. Aqua Quick and Blue against Udevala um, in white. And we are again at the basket of Udevala. And it uh, looks a little bit like the attack is stuck there. Did Malch win the previous game? No, it was 0-0. Zero, zero. Zero, zero. So, sorry, a uh, little bit distracted here for a short second. Uh, Udevala is defending and we are on the surface above uh, the basket, which I already mentioned is a dangerous situation if the ball drops down 
and uh, the attackers are ready for it. It's, it's close and it's fast uh, happening then. But um, Udebala managed to bring the ball away from the basket to the surface, but still in the hands of uh, Quark Week, who are uh, recovering their attack pattern and try to position themself, themselves under the uh, defense of Udebala. Nice uh, defense here. Really on point defense in the moment they needed to be to uh, distract the attackers. Pass back uh, from the Udebala player to his defender and forward again. And we're already in the half of the pool. So oh. I have not recovered the ball, it looked like. Uh, tried to pass in the midfield. And then we had two Udebala players going directly for it. And now we have some fighting for the ball in the center of the pool. Would you not have many players on the water? Okay, and now we have two players from Aqua Quick going very fast to the goal, but the defensive block got into position on time. And we're back here, like uh, and from the beginning in the second half, we are at the basket of Udevala. And if you are on the constant pressure on your basket, uh, this is exhausting for the defense. Um, you have to break free to, to recover a little bit at least, uh, especially with eight players in the water. We're kind of missing like the forward checking. Where are the forwards? <laughs> I think they concentrate more on the on the close quarter defense because if they open up too too much in the forward checking, they exhaust too much yeah, but they just had players. Yeah, but they still had just two players on the water. They were missing like a forward going between mm. the ball and the defensive block. And it's true what Christian Schäfer says that if you like in the small pool, it's kind of okay if you just have eight players but for one game then let's see how it goes then with next games this group is a very tough group so we have Malsch, Aquaquick, Udevala and the Sea Lions which equalize like 0-0 zero, zero, uh, like with a even game against Malsch so this is a very physical group so yes we are aware of the problems with the live stream with the cameras uh, the, the glitches um, we try to fix that and try to find out what the problem is um, we beg for your patience, working on it. Ooh, that was a pass it's direction surf on the surface towards the back over an empty basket. That was interesting. So five minutes uh, in this second half and we are almost spent most of the time at the basket of Udevala with the under heavy attacks. The back was holding the basket with a close hand. Um, which costs you as a defending uh, team and uh, Aqua Quick is uh, pretty much in control here of the ball most of the time and I think it's from this moment it's just a matter of time before they score first that was close to this attack here on the basket from the open side pushed in but uh, luckily they they the, this last movement pushed the goalie away didn't succeed yet and again, oh, there was a gap. Nicely done by the defender to interfere with the attack here, but he didn't get hold of the ball. Oh, and we just had a goal. Number seven. By I think after some time it gets. Yeah, that's, that's the strange there, there. there was a gap. Yeah, yeah that's the moment you. You Ooh. just lose concentration. Time we get to score. Time out. in the city. Don't need that. We are on the water rugby players. We play rugby. Time out for White for Rudy Valla after this uh, first score from Aqua Quick here. Uh, we have about four minutes left in the second half. Very well defended by Rudy Valla. Would be really nice. I would like to, to sneak in and listen here to the uh, what they discuss or what the coach is saying. Mostly, um, I prefer so only one uh, person is speaking, and uh, that's the coach in these breaks in his timeout. 
because if everybody is talking, uh, uh, you don't get a feeling it gets more healthy, more distracting um, if everybody is talking. So, Udivala now has to um, go in the offense to equalize uh, this score. And uh, switching from good to really bad. Odivala in ball possession, but on the heavy attack by Akakwik players. Now they're coming in from the close side, trying to reach the basket from the bottom. Stopped by Akakwik players. And cornered. No, uh, no player from uh, Odivala there to, to pass to. So they are not able to, lo to to get out of the corner to start getting in the, the danger zone of the basket of Akakwik. Three minutes, four minutes left, less than four minutes left in the second half. Tackle to the surface, but still in the basket area, above the basket area of Akakwik. And a cluster. Uh, on the surface that is pushed into the half on the surface. So still cluster. Ball is not free. Now uh, the ball is free in the hands of an aqua -key player. And uh, he's pushing forward. And already we're back at uh, the Udivala basket. And Sweden is again in defense mode. While Denmark, Denmark can uh, slowly build up uh, their attack. And they're in advantage. They only have to hold and keep on to the ball. That's a good chance for them to score. Wow, that was the first success, uh, first push from the open side. Uh, the, the player pushed the goalkeeper away, didn't succeed, but the second push succeeded. So it's a 2 0 now with uh, two and a half minutes left in the second half here of Denmark against uh, Sweden in Champions Cup 2022 in Berlin. Nicely done. And the uh, advantage now is definitely in the part of Akakwik. And Udivala has to open up and go in the offense to create a chance to score and equalize, which will be difficult in the last two minutes um, compared to the game we saw in the first uh, half and in the first half of the second half. Uh, it will be really difficult for Udivala now, um, after these tough game minutes, to build up the strength, the energy to go into the defense and score. And Aquavik is quite uh, uh, able to hold uh, Udivala players off and uh, prevent them from scoring for the next, uh, yeah, less than two minutes. Uh, yes, they lost the ball. Udivala lost the ball. And uh, Aquaquick is pushing through the half of uh, Aquaquick and already reached the basket of Udivala and is attacking. It was a nice pass behind the, uh, behind the uh, next to the defender in the hands of the offense player. But Udivala recovered the ball and they're pushing away from the basket and trying to get into the half of uh, Aquaquick under heavy attack from the forward defense. And we're back in the corner of Akakwik and less than a minute left in this first half. Forty seconds left and uh, Akakwik is holding on to the ball, breaking free and a uh, little stop in the, in the middle but not that much from a forward defender and we are already on the basket of Udevala with 25 seconds left, which is next to impossible for them, um, for Udevala to turn this uh, game around. And uh, Akakwik really wants to know if they can score again, go into the defense and shortly stole the basket from Udevala.
And game the game is over. Game over. So it's a 2-0 for uh, Aqua Quick. Okay, and Malsh Sea Lions was actually 1-0. It just didn't show up on our screen. Wow, so we saw that uh, uh, we realized it wrong. I didn't see that uh, goal, yeah. I have to admit. No. Sorry about that. So it's 1-0 for Malsh. And now 2-0, Aqua Quick from Denmark against Udevala from Sweden. But it was a very good game. Yep, that was a uh, uh, and very well for a players played by Udevala for their uh, newcomer as a newcomer in the Champions Cup. So well played and uh, nice to watch. Thank you. Thanks for uh, to both teams. So next game coming up um, is uh, a women's game of the Orcas from Colombia against uh, Amager from uh, Denmark. No, so Amager is uh, Denmark. Yes. So it will be interesting to see um, Colombian players. They have a lot of uh, new young players in the team. And I'm curious uh, to see them in water. I'll be back in a second. Right, back again here. 
looking forward for this game of uh, Amager, uh, Denmark against Colombia. And uh, Colombia with uh, Lilo and uh, Gloria and Silvia. We have a lot of experienced players, but also young players in the team as far as I've seen. Angelica, I see here, is also an experienced player. Um, so curious what we would see um, our team, our uh, squad of team Berlin played against uh, Colombian uh, female players on Monday. I said they are in really good shape. So let's see what, uh, what this game will bring us. It's beautiful, this picture. I love it. The sun comes through the windows and reflects on the water. It's not good for the cameras and it's not good if you play there because you, if you have the sun against you, it's uh, blinding. But um, in the live stream, this picture now really shows the atmosphere of the Champions Cup. One minute, one minute. And it's a beautiful atmosphere with all the teams coming in and out and greeting each other, haven't seen each other for such a long time. And uh, it's the, the, the atmosphere at the Champions Cup is really special. It's, it's family, community, Everything is relaxed, uh, fighting hard on the water, but uh, being friends on the surface when you meet each other. Quite beautiful. So again, um, tell us where are you watching from? I guess we have a lot of uh, uh, live stream uh, uh, visitors from Colombia right now and from Denmark. And we start in the game with a lot of glitches here. Ball is, uh, was in the hands of Colombia, but pushed away, free falling. And, uh, oh, this is gonna be a fast game. I can see that already. Colombia is uh, doing their back and forth, swimming with the ball to opening up space. And uh, Denmark, Denmark is, uh, is uh, responding the same. Uh, Colombia is in ball possession in the half of uh, the Danish players and trying to get into the defense, probe the defense of the Danish. Um, but they are really well defended and pushed away, tackled away. So they didn't have a, a real chance to get close to the basket uh, until now. But the pressure is rising. We have now a cluster on the bottom, four, five, six players uh, are on the, on the cluster around the ball. And the whole cluster is pushed into the half of the Colombians. Uh, slowly, slowly drifting. Colombia is going into their defense positions. Choking. And the Choking. ball is above uh, the Colombian Light basket on the surface. Choking. Choking. So I got a call from the uh, referee. Free throw against the basket. Oriana, yes, we are aware of the camera. It's not that easy. Uh, we have to find the problem first before we can fix it. I'll just copy paste the message I wrote before. And uh, still in the half of Colombia. Ball fell down, recovered by Colombia, and now they try to push through into the Danish half. But uh, the Colombia lost the ball on the bottom in the middle of the pool and we're now back on the way to the Colombian basket but it's uh, really slow because the forward defense is trying their best to stop the Danish players and we are on the cluster on the surface ball out of the cluster in the hands of Colombian players and they're going forward really fast now to the Danish uh, basket two on two around the basket well defended and tackled away to the surface again. The surface in a cluster and Colombian player try to get down from above the basket to reach her teammates around the basket. But uh, the defense is relentless here from Denmark. They're interfering with these uh, typical Colombian attack patterns around the basket. They're stopping the players at once, tackling them the way as soon as they open up space. So they are really difficulties 
getting uh, the rid of the ball and playing to their teammates. So it's, it's a lot of interference here from Denmark. Really good game from Danish players to interfere into this attack. And, and Colombian players try now from above to reach the goalkeeper. But uh, there is always a Danish player in between. Uh, so they cannot execute their, their usual elegant uh, attack patterns. Although we have to say they're um, uh, in, in good ball possession, they don't lose the ball and uh, can keep up the pressure on the basket. And if you do that, it's, it's a matter of time before you will uh, be able to score because this, this relentless pushing onto the, onto the defense creates mistakes, creates little gaps where the ball can be pushed in. So. Uh, Colombia, in my view, is getting closer and closer to the basket, closer into these gaps. Um, if I can keep up the pressure, um, referee shows advantage sign for Amager. But don't stop the game. Another tackle to the surface. There's a question from Niels, uh, if you can scroll back the games. I think if, if the games are over and uploaded, yes. Uh, so all the games will be there, but not yet, yet. Oh, that's a chance. That's a really close chance for, yes, and score. That's, that's like I said, uh, it was this constant uh, nine, pushing on the basket. We see the, the nine, replay Dorothy, here. Dorothy. Very well done. There was an attacker. She was tackling uh, the player, but she had a. Nine. She was free on, on top, on the open side, and could, with this move um, from her arm in the shoulder, to push the, Time out. Push the um, goalkeeper away and push the ball in. That was nice and well done. Um, in this in this attack so we have a 1-0 lead for the orcas from colombia and a timeout for blue for amager uh, for colombians very well done um, and uh, good advantage here um, in in time of ball possession and attack time for colombia but uh, like i already said um, Amaga does a really good job to interfere with the tax structure of Colombia. So this game is not over. Um, we have still um, minutes to go in the first half. And we have a second half. So let's see who can, uh, if both teams can keep up the speed and the level of rugby we see here. It's, uh, it's very experienced rugby. And uh, you don't see in the Colombian team, uh, in my experience, uh, you don't see any unexperienced players, even though they are younger players in the team. So, ball, uh, st the game started again after the uh, timeout, and we're back at the surface in a cluster. The start was stopped uh, by Colombia, and the cluster is uh, drifting in the area of the Colombians. Ball recovered by a Colombian player, pushed down, but uh, there's fighting around for the ball in the half of uh, the Colombians, and the ball is in the hand of the white Amaga team. And they're getting now very close to the Colombian basket, fended off by the defenders, and put up, uh, pushed up to the surface. Always dangerous to have a cluster above the basket, but the the defense of Colombia looks quite solid. Um, holding, holding. Goalie on the basket Dark and defense. Throw. Holding. Call from the referee, I guess. Free throw against Amaga. Yes, free throw for Colombia. Going forward again. And already we have a Colombian players positioning under the basket. But again, Amaga does a good job interfere and stopping the ball carriers who try to reach the player waiting um, already under the basket for the attack. This is a really fast 
close game here. We don't see that much uh, sprint swimming, but it's it's a really close close quarter uh, fighting around the basket. Now the Colombian try again from the close side. Already a player uh, positioned on the open side, waiting, getting the ball, pushing in. Nope, stopped by a, a, a attacker, I guess, from uh, Denmark. Very well done. Uh, very well uh, solved uh, this attack, but uh, relentlessly here the Colombians are pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing on the air market basket like they did before they scored the first time. So this is really a stressful moment and we see uh, the, the goalkeeper got pushed away from the, from the goal. There were gaps. Uh, we see more and more gaps, although uh, the defense is really well structured from Denmark to go in between the attacks of the Colombian Orcas. Dangerous pass here on the open side, but no other player there. A bit of insecurity, one player with the ball trying to find a partner to play to. And again, uh, on the open side. But the forward uh, checking uh, defense is very good here with Amaga. But the pushing um, of the Colombians is relentless. They are really not giving a, a millimeter away from the basket and are really, really close and getting closer. And it's like you, you pull a, a, a string around and you tighten it and tighten it and they are getting even closer and closer uh, the basket. And uh, in this situation, like I mentioned, it's a question of time before the gap is there at the right moment and the player is there. Another attack from the open side and now from above, Namaga is really struggling now. It's really hard. They are holding up. They are still have a current defense. Now a uh, Colin player stole the basket. Yes. And that's the score. That's the, 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 the moment when the defense, they are not breaking. That I wouldn't say. But when, when mistakes arrive and like this situation we see in the replay, when a Colombian player had a chance to steal the basket away from the Amaga player, from the goalkeeper. Very well played by um, Colombia. Not an easy game for Colombia, even though they are in the advantage because they are have a lot more ball time, possession time uh, compared to Amager. But uh, Amager is uh, not to underestimate. And first half is over. That was a half good time. game. Um, half time. And advantage Chain for sides. Colombia who keep their structure, their team play, when they attack more um, together. You saw the attacks of uh, the Amager team crushed in the defense of the really fast Colombian defenders who snatched the ball away from them. This is something the Amager team is not able to do. They are able to um, interfere with the attacks of Colombia very good, but they are not able to get away the ball. Uh, and this is the point where you just um, where the Colombians exhaust the defense, and then we have the situation we just saw when uh, the attackers are able to steal away the basket. So very well played by both teams um, with a very good advantage on the Colombian side. Waiting for the end of the break. Um, already first half is over of the break. One and a half minutes left. That's not a lot of time. We see uh, now on the left is the Amager team um, preparing, discussing what they're gonna, gonna, gonna do in the second half. And it's still two minutes, uh, ten minutes to go, and it's a two zero lead for the Orcas, which is solid, but not a decision for this game. 10 minutes is a long time on water. We all, or everyone who knows, uh, who plays knows this. So um, there's a lot of room for them to get in with the strategy to break this relentless attack of the Colombians. Let's see what we'll do, but uh, the advantage is definitely on the Colombian side. And I think in, in ball controlling team play, 
they uh, um, they have also an advantage. So Amaga really has to go in, hold the ball when they have a chance to score, and keep it, keep their attacks like the like the Colombians do to score and turn this game around if they're possible to. But it will be difficult because the Colombians uh, know this too. And they will do their best to now to hold uh, at least uh, the 2-0 uh, run they have. Keep it that way. And that's always easier, easier than to score yourself and turn this game around. Both teams ready? So, 10 minutes in the second half. Exciting game, I have to admit. Very good rugby we see here. Colombia, first one to touch the ball. Very nice game, Paul pushing up. But uh, um, they, they saw through, Amago saw through and stopped the one who got the ball, who was on the surface or close to the surface. So we have a cluster now on the surface. Both teams fighting. And no movement there, ball is not free. And we are uh, still have a cluster on the surface. No movement there. Uh, it's a it's a really close situation. Now opening up, ball is in uh, possession of Amaga, and now we see an attack from the from above on the goalie, but uh, intercepted by the four checking defense of Colombia, so uh, the, the attacker from Argonne didn't even touch the goalkeeper. And uh, Colombia is in ball possession again, pushing really fast forward into the defense of the Danish team. And we already have three uh, Colombian players under the basket of the Danish defense. But no score. Is there a call from the referee? No, I don't think so. Well defended. Even in this uh, dangerous moment when, when, th when there was a three against two on their market basket. But now we are back in the situation where Colombia is controlling the ball. And Amager has to uh, get hold of the ball and break free of this constant attacking. Like they did right now, very well done. The ball was dropping down in possession of uh, Denmark. And they are trying to push into the half of Colombia, but they didn't succeed. Stopped uh, in the middle and are again back on the surface in a cluster. Uh, Ulrich Eck, uh, Engström is asking where he can uh, find the results. We don't have uh, the website updated because we try to fix the glitches in the live stream. We try to do it as soon as possible. So, same, same situation. Uh, Colombia in ball possession, and it looks like they're uh, playing with time now because they are not under pressure with a 2 0 lead. And they are playing the ball back and forth, looking for a possibility. That pass was to a player waiting on the basket on the open side, got intercepted by the goalkeeper, and the Danish player is now trying to push away from the basket, but heavily intercepted by two players and pushed to the surface with the ball tackled. So again, a cluster situation on the surface. And this whole, this whole cluster was pushed in the middle. Amag could play a free with the ball. Ball is falling down right in front of the Colombian basket. And Colombia recover the ball. Ball is pushed. And uh, there was a back and forth in the middle. Amager uh, recovered the ball, but it was stolen back again from uh, Colombia. And we're back in the area, in the open side of uh, the danger zone of the uh, Amager basket. And Colombia is reopening their attack game on the defense of Amager. So same, same, six minutes left. And this is the point where Anaga really has to um, to probably take a break and rethink their strategy, maybe to open up more 
and risk to catch another goal, but being able probably to uh, score because uh, in, if the game goes on like this, like it does right now, we will not see a, a change or an advantage for Amager here. Amager in ball possession going forward, but only one player stopped by two Colombian players in the middle of the pool. Uh, not on the bottom, not on the top, really in the middle, middle. And again, another cluster. Colombian player coming out of it with a ball. Ball is dropping down in the hands of Colombian player again. And forward back to the Amager basket. Well, this is really tough now for Amager to decide which strategy they should put in. Um, I guess opening up and pushing everything forward is the would be the way to go. Um, putting less energy in the defense and trying to get out of their own half without the constant exhaustion of these attacks from Colombia we see right now. And even if Colombia loses the ball, if the ball falls down, they recover it themselves because um, Amaga is really tight around their defense which enables them to stop these constant uh, attacks. Like we see right now, again, Colombian player uh, positioned on the open side and uh, almost totally free for, for seconds without a defender in between. Balls dropping down on the close side, falling down and going back in the game right in front of the basket of Amar. We have four minutes left and Amaga really, really, really has to step up now because I don't see Colombia uh, slowing down here. Juan Camilo, um, we would love to have better quality in the cameras. We're working on it, but it's uh, Light free throw. not that easy if we have a problem. You had already one. Time out one for game. Denmark. Right. Light free throw. Looks like the referee didn't see it, so a free it was a free throw against uh, Colombia, I guess. I haven't seen it, just saw the sign of one of the players from Denmark uh, uh, asking for a timeout, but looks like the referee didn't see it. Three minutes left here. Out of bounds. Dark no, free was, throw. Uh, Daniel Arango said penalty. No, Dark free throw. Penalty. Free throw now against uh, Amager. Less than three minutes left. So Colombia now really can play it cool. Hold on to the ball. Just uh, push Amager in the defense and pin them down there so they are not uh, dangerous. Keep on holding to the ball, play the ball around and let the time work for the team. Very well done here by Colombia so far. Also very well defended by Amerigo. But uh, it's not enough to defend against uh, this constantly attacking and probing of a team like the Orcas. Call from the referee. Dark free another throw. Holding. Um, Dark free throw. Free throw against Amerigo. Looks like uh, pushing or a rough play. And seeing the sign. And here we go, Colombia is again uh, attacking really close to the basket. They're getting even closer, though these are really huge gaps now we see in the defense of Amager for a second until uh, there's almost only Amager players down here. It was a good chance for Colombia here. But still, uh, Colombia is in ball possession and you don't see them inching away uh, just a bit from the danger area of Amager. And Amager it they only make a small mistake, they're going to be punished with, a, with another goal. So it's defending on the defending side, it's high quality uh, rugby we see here on Amager side. And on the attacking side, it's uh, amazing the speed and relentlessness we see on the Colombian players. Um, like they, they push into the defense and stay there and rebuilding, rebuilding in wave after wave, going in, not losing the ball. Impressive, both teams and the way they play here at the Champions Cup 2022 in Berlin.
Less than a minute left, 50 seconds. And I uh, think this game uh, is done for Amager. And uh, I have to admit it was uh, uh, well, well earned by Colombia. Advantage was on their side, uh, ball possession time, attacking time. Um, they they were the dominant the team Dark in this free throw. Uh, pushing down on the head in this game. Dark free throw. Um, Mustafa asked how deep is the pool? Three meter twenty. It's not that deep. Free throw against Amaga. Six seconds left. All right, this game is over with a two zero. And uh, the two zero, I have to say, is uh, uh, is not that and high the for for the ball positioning time and attacking time the Orcas had, and this speaks well for the defense of Amager. But nevertheless, we don't win a game by defending, and uh, Colombia scored and did very well in this game, um, keeping up the pressure until they found a gap, and they found it in the first half and scored two times. So it's uh, definitely the game of. Colombia here in this Champions Cup. So we see the replay now. If this was the first uh, goal, I guess. Very well how uh, the player turned around and pushed, uh, used the strength of a movement in the shoulders, holding on to the ball, have the ball saved and push him next to the goalkeeper into the basket. So, next game coming up is uh, Wales against Barcelona. So I will uh, give the microphone back uh, again to Jared, and he will, together with uh, Lisa, um, uh, commentate this uh, next game here. Thank you very much for listening. And uh, yes, we are totally aware of the quality of the live stream. Uh, we do our best to fix it. Uh, just give us a second. Uh, we have a lot on our plate here, organizing and keeping up the uh, technical stuff. So uh, it always, Champions Cup is always the first day, it takes uh, time to tune in. Thank you very much. And I give uh, over to Jared. Hello, Jared. So, um, we're back. Both can take a break, grab some coffee. <laughs> a bit of bad jokes here as well. Um, because we had a question, is there no playback on the video? There will be playback, but in the evening. The problem if, is that if we activate playback function on YouTube, it only works for videos for up to 12 hours, like streams up to 12 hours, but we're streaming for longer than 12 hours. So we do not activate this function. You can watch playback in the evening. So we upload the whole stream to YouTube, after the games are over, and then you can watch them to your leisure. Um, but in the meanwhile, you have to watch what is live. That is it. And Jared is here. And you can speak now. You Hello. <laughs> it's everyone's favorite Australian, French, Greek, Austri Austrian duo. That's what I've been told. Uh, let's block all the spam. We don't have the outfit set. Good, so what can you say about the whales, Jared? You've played against them a few times. Yeah, no, they're, they're very strong at the moment. We, um, the Australian national team, men's national team, had their first uh, training camp two weeks ago in Sydney, and um, we were playing against the whales in there. Yeah, they're very, they're very strong at the moment. So, looking forward to seeing how they go today.
And I think as a guest commentator, you can even grab coffee from the very exclusive coffee area. Oh, lovely. It's weak filter coffee. <laughs> I guess the teams are still warming up. Um, I think they have both full teams. So on one side we have Barcelona and on the other we have the Wales in blue, actually black. And they also have a full team, right? Of 14 players? Uh, I think they've got 14. True, Moby is playing. So number eight, Andres, is actually from Hungary originally, but he's living in Australia for some time, right? Yeah, he has, and he's played with the Wales. He's uh, so strong. Long. Yeah, very strong player. Played against him a few times. He's physically very strong. He's very big. He's a tall person. I think the referees are getting ready. And so far, no glitches. So the schedule is on our website, uwr24.de forward slash Champions Cup main forward slash and then you have um, the schedule. The results are not updated yet, but you can see them on our Instagram story. So this is um, the second game in the men's group B. So the first game was Malsch against the from Germany against the Sea Lions from the US. It was a very physical, very strong game. Just it ended 1-0 for Malsch. They had a hard time scoring. And um, I'm talking about the wrong group. <laughs> we already had the second uh, game in that group. That was Equipic against Udevala and that was two games ago. Sorry. So we're now Blue back to ready? group A and it's the first game in group A where we have Finland, Australia and Spain. And now the game has started and the Australians got the ball. A bit of a struggle for the ball here. Yep. Now they're moving it well around the opponent's basket. And Barcelona has a good defense. They're solid in position. And the forwards are assisting there as well with keeping the ball a bit away from their goal. So turnover to the Barcelona team. Some four checking from the Sydney New South Wales team. Yeah, okay, there's some slightly sloppy ball handling here. Yeah, first game jitters maybe. The Barcelona is quite a, like they're quite strong physically. They have big players. Yep. Um, you don't really want to get in a scrum with them. I know I don't, <laughs> because they, a lot of them have 30 centimeters and 40 kilos on me. Yeah. Um, the ball is in the close corner. Ooh, good open pass. Moving, moving the ball again around the goal. New South Wales attacking the basket. Fast counter attack. Managed to hold on to the ball. And they had the player really like under the, the back. Yeah. Now they were just on the wrong side of the basket, like they couldn't. You had an attacker with the ball on the closed side and two assists on the open side, but they couldn't get through the hands. Oh, 
Australian player dropped the ball. Yeah, good swim out from the Barcelona back. And we Gonna have pull. a call from a referee. Free Grabbing throw. the mask. Holding. White free throw. Yeah. Holding. White free throw. Got a Barcelona player on the New South Wales basket. He was there a bit late though because he was not really lying on it properly, but no. still it attracts two, yeah. two people who have to pressure. be there to block the basket. Uh. Barcelona doing well, pass it around the New South Wales basket. Yeah, the grid are going yep. up and down and left and right and right yep. and the wheels oh, got the ball. Overturn. <laughs> nice work. From Jason there. <coughs> and recovery by the Spaniards. Manuel attacking. Barcelona is still recovered. Yeah, the player was a bit by himself because he was against three wheels. Now we, we have the same scenario that he had one Australian player against two Spaniards, but mm. the, he got some support to the front and could pass. Australia at the Barcelona basket now. The Barcelona has now quite a few players on the water. We haven't yeah, yet good, had a defense. phase with like a long attack phase on yeah. one basket where you see your team getting tired. There's Gonzo attacking from the top. Got wrap, wrapped up. Okay, someone and now Oscar. The top. Which is always hard. And the pool is not very deep. It's 3.2 meters deep. Yep. And so you can get grabbed pretty yeah, attacking from Easily. the top is hard as you have a lot of people on you immediately. Ooh, and now there is no one on the goal. There's a bit of an open face. Just the goalie. And going up again with the ball, the whale is opening and trying to move the ball. But it's still quite at the surface. Yeah, I think now they're trying to get in a phase where they tire Barcelona. Which, well, if the fast counter attack doesn't work, then you settle in a rhythm. Mm. You get a bit of air for yourself and try and use any gaps there might be. Yeah, let's see. One player against two or three is a bit hard. Yeah, yeah so good to game. keep the pressure up and maintain the ball. And the question is, why do you go in? Do you go in to score or to disturb and then pull out and just to exhaust the others? Yeah. And this slip just was a more option B. Mm. Oh, and they have a good, like the forwards are good at helping um, on the Barcelona, Barcelona side team. because they yeah. always position themselves between the defense and Oh, is the it? Ooh, there is no oh. back right now, but ball recovered. There's always a player with the number 16. I find it very funny. Oh. Nice. Ooh, that was a nice very steal long from Ben Muslin, that was a very long pass <laughs> yeah. to go see the goal. Got it back, unfortunately. Yeah, but he passed to the player who was completely yeah, on the other away. side and it was a back and a goalie and the other one was completely to the other side. That was meant to land in the hand of the opponent. Okay, the Wales have the ball. Manuel. Wrapped up. Oh, mm -hmm. Good steal mm -hmm. from Barcelona there. It's a lot of swimming in this game. Yeah. Back and forth and back and forth.
It's quite an even game, actually. And they have pretty similar playing styles. Mm. That's some good defense from both teams. So the whales going in from the close corner. A bit of scrumming in the close corner. It's a bit hard to see what's happening. Looks like the ball is at the surface, a uh, surface from in the corner. The pass down there. Do the wheel set to have yeah, the ball. Good. Gonzalo going in and oh, close. That was very, very, very close. close. So the goalie was lifted and there was and a whale player got the ball and almost scored on an empty basket but the new goalie got in. Just got in, yeah. Okay, just one minute left on the first half time. Why free throw? There's a lot of surface scrumming and play happening. Oh, no okay. free mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So Barcelona going again with four players. It's just 30 seconds left. Even without the glitches, it would be hard to say. <laughs> a lot of people. Barcelona going in again. Found there by himself. That's someone under the basket. Very nicely positioned. But oh. Okay, and it is half time. time. That was a good finish from Barcelona. Yeah, very strong. That was an interesting first half time because it's the first game for both teams. So mm. they're fresh and they're excited. Yep. I think now they were feeling each other. Yeah. Uh, might get a bit frustrated in the second half and might get a bit more heated. Yeah. yeah. I think the first game for the Wales, um, yeah, still getting used to the pool probably as well. It's a lot smaller than what we deal with in Australia. Yeah, the Barcelona is quite good in both of their sides. Yep. But as per playing style, um, quite clean, good passes, but missing some support here and there that would yep. make them a level higher. It's always a thing, I think. That's how you differentiate teams like for supporters the and, being support. and being able to anticipate things happening. Yep. Apparently, my microphone is way too far from my mouth, and George should speak louder. Let us know where you're watching from in the chat, everyone. I think we have a lot of Colombians. Looks like there's a lot of Australians up. Yeah. Got one. Come here. We have. Got the Brisbane Gauls. Tommy from. I'm Austria. assuming that's Ricardo. We have Bobby currently in Sweden, I guess, and uh, Messing with my teammate in Austria. But it's been some good games so far. It's still the beginning, so um, we have a lot of very uneven games. Yeah. But um, it's been quite the games as well. Good. People from New York, Angus and Nathan from Australia. David from Australia, back in Victoria. 
So 20 seconds left until second half. Lyle's back in Australia as well, supposedly at my house. Um, Watching your dad. I hope he's not. <laughs> Six so the referees the are ready for the second half. White team ready? Waiting. We are all waiting. Blue team ready? And go. Uh, okay, Wales were first at the ball and went through. A few meters and then got stopped by Barcelona. Let's recover recovered the ball. And Barcelona goes up to the surface. Strong poor checking from the Wales. I know that the, the women from the Barcelona team, they tend to go, like here, that a player got grabbed by um, it's one of the whales and went immediately up. Like he had, he could have passed the ball, but yep. went up and the, the women's team does that a lot. Okay, holding. holding without ball, holding free throw to for the, blue. the whales. Blue free throw. Holding. Blue free throw. Okay, the pass went down without any interception. Three yeah. pays going in. Both sides of the basket. Oh, the ball went out. Okay, I'm passing now to into the closed side of the basket. Okay, some of the messages in the chat, I'm not sure if it's spam or if it's people just messing <laughs> with us or with each other. Okay, so the whales are better at recovering the ball. Like they'll stay in midfield and they don't yep. let Barcelona go through. Yeah, some good good poor checking. And that so might far. get tired tiring for the Spaniards. Also scrumming just above the goal as well. Yep. Yeah, probably the forwards coming in and grabbing those attackers. Good pass off. We can move it around a bit more. That's like the second or third time that this happened, that you have the whales, they come in, they try to attack from the top, then you have one of the of the forwards. Oh. Look again, they come, they attack, get pulled up, yeah. then they push out again, and then I guess the whales will keep the ball and will attack again yeah. from like three meters out. That's like the third time that happens. And I don't know how long they can keep on doing that. Okay, first of all, I got the ball. Ooh, a fast fast counter counterattack, attack. but uh, no sport. Oh. Four whales down. Yeah, but his teammates yeah, were way no. too slow. <laughs> yeah. It's unfortunate. Like if the whales had been a bit more maybe assertive, they could have gone for the ball and he would have definitely lost it. Instead of going to mm. defend, they could have gone directly for him and he would have blo been blocked. Barcelona now holding it nicely around the whale's basket. We have Colombo on the open side and got the ball, kind of lost it. Ah. Recovery from Number Nick Kumbus. And we're back into the Barcelona half. Quick turnover from Barcelona there. Appears by himself. Yeah, maybe that was subbing. Another fast counter. Number one taking a good position, but yeah. getting wrapped up. By a forward and a back.
And I said, okay, like, for quite some time at the basket, and we went out. They're doing some, you know, good passes under pressure. Managing to maintain the ball. Yeah, we have again a surface from going back underwater. One against Another one. Get the defense is back into position ish. Yes. And why is no one on the basket when you have his crumb so close to it? <laughs> Okay, well, so we like, recovered the ball, looks yeah. like. We're Please still to recover, yeah. Looks it still looks like a scrum, I reckon. Or referee called free. Free throw to... To the whales. To the whales. Time out. Blue. Time out. Time out. Time out. Blue. Time out. Blue. So the whales took a time out. So I guess they will adjust some parameters there. Yeah. And no, who called time out? Time out for the year. I think both teams called one. Oh, they're both. <laughs> <laughs> but blue counted then. Got Celine back. She was one of the well, founding people for the Wales. Watching. Yeah, definitely some good defense from both teams. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure how Wait. it will end up. It's a very tight game. Yeah. Just yeah, need a lot more movement probably to open up the open up the, the backs. Just hope they don't start punching each other or something. They yeah. switch up the, <laughs> the aggression. <laughs> Blue block. Okay, self free throw for the whales. So that's where we start again. It's interesting that the uh, whales have a player underneath actually at the free throw. But the pool is also really shallow. Yeah, ready for it. And of course. You mean too far away or just No, up just away? underneath yeah. the, uh, the person with the ball. That's not the constellation used to seeing. Because the, whale, the whales are working the basket. Ooh. Sebas passing around the basket a bit. I have a feeling that Barcelona worked on their ball handling since September quite a lot. Um, because they are open Nations League. Um, we're stealing the balls quite a bit. We're just kicking it out of the hands quite a few times, especially in defense. Barcelona is very disciplined in defense. Oh. No. Blue free throw. No, if it's advantage. No, taking equipment. Yeah, nice free throw. What is the um, the goal of the teams? Do you reckon? Like, do you think the the whales want to equalize, or do you think they will switch it up and try to score even more and play more open, more risky? Uh, yeah, potentially in the last two minutes, they might open it up a bit, but um, yeah, I'm not sure about their they definitely want to win, I know that much yeah but let's see what they because as the, the the game, like that's for those two teams the game that they have to win if yeah. they want to make it to the top two yeah, that's right because it's harder, it will be harder for them to beat Finland yeah for sure. And then they've just got a small group of three, is that? Yeah, it's a group of three. Group of three. So, yeah. After one, Ooh, win at least this one. is a kind of the counter attack. There was no one on the basket, but there's only got the oh, oh, that was a goal. goal. That was a goal. Is that a goal by Jason? Let's see if I can beat Jay. Boom. 24. And I think the player yeah, on, on the, the side, no, yeah. on the close side, close he scored side, from sorry. the close side. He passed it around, and the goalie was lying very, like straight. His backside was Time out. high up. Why? So yeah. maybe there was a time out there. there. Yeah. Why? So one minute thirty-three. Um, Barcelona has to go hundred yep. percent, all in. 
a timeout. So Barcelona huh? just took a timeout. So now they have a minute and a half left. They have to go all in because if they lose 1 0 or 2 0, they lost anyway. Yeah. Yeah, let's see if the, the wires can hold them off. Go in the water with their starting six. No changes. Like, no more subbing. <laughs> the last minute and a half. And they must score. So on the water, it looks like we have Birgit on the closed side and Oros on the open side. Right in the water. One minute, half left. Ooh, and it's started again. Barcelona breaking through the whales and... We've got four Barcelona players down. It's a bit hectic, but there is some fight for ball control. Ball slips out. Barcelona is at the Wales basket. We have some players very well positioned on both sides and not anymore. We're back at the surface. There is a scrum. Back in the 2 3 meter zone. Barcelona going in. Number 15. Ooh, here's the ball. Good work by the Wales forward off the, off the bench. The Barcelona is under the basket waiting for an opportunity. And the ball is again. Missing a back at the moment. Oh, the Wales got the ball back. And tried to counter attack. 20 seconds left. They'll probably hold it. And the ball fell down, it's just 10 seconds, so I guess. Yeah, yeah. just holding it now. Just holding the ball and pretend to want to do something. Yeah. Oh, no, go. I think they're going no, for it. They're going for it. <laughs> and okay. The game is it. over. Yeah, it's very good game, game on both teams. And the score's showing new all, but I believe. Okay, that's re that's a problem again. It was the yeah. same for Malsh against um, the play, the Sea Lions. That yeah. was showing 0 0. Yeah, but I think yeah, it's final one score. For one for the Wales from Australia. I and zero for Barcelona from Spain. Oh, more spam. Thanks, Bobby, from your comments in the chat. You have to tell what the comments are because um, I'm not sure. When, no, but when, we <laughs> when you watch the videos again on replay, you don't have. Um, oh, I don't have one. You don't have this, the text. I'm, I'm sure everyone can uh, knows what Bobby's saying in some way. That was a very good game. It's the first game in the male group A. The next game in that group will be Bluetooth because it's just three teams in this group, so they have to take some more. I think they have break. Tonight. Yeah, they have game number 19, so in 10, in ten games. Um, they play. So the Finnish team, Hamelino Sukaltayat, against Barcelona. And the will. Then and then, okay, and then tonight, the last tonight. game of the day. Okay. Yeah. Coming up, we have a women's game. Uzi Langen from Germany against Hola. the Isbjörnana, the, 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 the Ice Bears from Sweden. Um, this is the women's group A, so it's group E, female group E, Hola. where Hola. we have Langen, Isbjörnana, Piersalis, and the Hammerheads. It's the second game in that group. And yes, we take a tiny break and we'll be back. Bye. Hola.
Gut. One minute, one minute. Ready? Ready? So, uh, Wolf back here in the water, and we're already in the in the next game. Uh, I'm really curious about Uze Langen, the German uh, champion, uh, the female German champion against Esbjörnan uh, from uh, uh, Sweden. So this is going to be interesting to see Langen here in action uh, in blue and uh, Esbjörnan in white. So Langen is uh, in the area of the ball, East ball the water. Um, basket ball. ball is dropping down call from the referee from uh, the surface referee ball. Yep. Uh, ball out of the water as far as I interpret this and uh, Langen play already stole the basket of uh, Ispion and uh, and this is what uh, free throw actually is, is for. If you react really fast, you can steal the basket. And that would be a good chance if your team is up for it and uh, executes the free throw in, uh, in a split of a second. Cluster one on one on the surface. Ball is dropping down. Call from the referee on the surface. Live free throw. Free throw against Langen. Chance for Ispiranan to go into attack on the German basket. Cluster. Um, Already in the half of Langen. S. Björnan. S. Björnana. Is that right, uh, Bobby? S. Björnana? Okay, I, I do my best. S. Björnana. S. Björnana. <laughs> Thank you for the teaching. 
please comment everything in the, in the comments. Uh, we try to have a little uh, conversation with you. Okay, S. Björnana is going now on the basket of Langen, UC Langen, the German team. And Langen recovered the ball from this attack really fast. So S. Björnana didn't have a chance to build up uh, their attack and uh, put pressure on the German basket. And Langen tries to push through the forward defense, through the attackers of the Swedish team and go into the half. But Sweden is uh, quite good here, keep them into their, off their half and occupied on the surface in the cluster again. They don't uh, give uh, the German team any um, free way into their basket, but now we have uh, one player from Lange, I think it's uh, Cativelo under the basket. She tries to pull the referee, the, 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 the goalkeeper free. It's a C cluster on the surface again. And the cluster does not resolve. Struggling. Why free throw? Let's drop it down, call from the referee on the surface. Once you're sure you have to pass it, blue free throw. Is Björnana. I will try that every rehearse then until tomorrow. Is Björnana. <laughs> So, free throw for Langen against the Swedish team. And uh, Langen has to find its way into the defense structure of the Swedes. Another call from the referee. There's a lot of breaks here uh, caused by uh, fall playing. Free throw against the Swedes. Again, Langen is taking its time off the surface. Again, Langen player stealing the basket. And so now even the Langen players are Warning. exchanging player on the Swedish one. basket. That's a dangerous situation Blue, if uh, the team can Execute the free throw really fast now. Please excuse the bad quality of the live stream. We still try to find what's happening. Um, Swedish team got hold of the ball and is breaking into the half of the Germans who recover the ball in their half and are themselves now attacking into the half of the Swedish team. But are uh, heavily intercepted here by the forward checking. So although um, Langen is pretty much in ball possession here, um, it's uh, equal facing because um, the Swedish team is very good in interfering into the attack structure of the Swedes. So this is a good chance for, for Germany. Um, the ball carriers attacking the goalkeeper above the defender didn't succeed. Another wave is coming in. So the pressure is rising on the Swedish basket. And another cluster tackling on the sur to the surface. Um, actually, I cannot hear the referee, that's true. I have to ask uh, how I can uh, build that in. That would be pretty nice to have this, old, have this old view. So, back and forth. Espionana tried to attack the German basket. Again, stopped before they could. And Langen is in ball possession and working its way into the half of the Swedes.
So very good defensive work here on the Swedish team. And they don't give Langen a chance to use the pressure they are putting on the basket to score and interfere in the last moment always uh, when, when there is a dangerous situation, they interfere and stop the, the attack. And even succeed like in this uh, play to get hold of the ball and break free and get away with it. Again, the, uh, they try to enter the German half of the pool and they face a really tough forechecking. Now that will be a chance. First player almost in the danger zone of the German basket. Second and third player from uh, Esperanana right there. But the interception by the Langen team is good. Another attempt from the open side to go into the defense with two players. Already stopped in a tackling to the surface above the German basket. And back again in direction of the Swedes and counterattack. This is uh, this is changing the the game structure. Um, the Swedes succeed more and more in breaking free um, out of the attacks of the German team and approaching the German basket. Um, this is really a, a change here in the first half, in the end of the first half. Um, Amaga is working. Uh, no, <laughs> sorry, his Björnana is working its way slowly forward and they need to to duck in around the German basket to be able to score and this is where they face heavy uh, defense work as we see now from Germany attempt to come from the uh, close side and, uh, they will not succeed with one player going in into this heavy defense of the Germans. End of the first half. Time break for uh, three minutes. No. Uh, yeah, no, it's okay. Um, yes, we have a comment here from uh, Dundee's Dundee Steve. Dundee Steve. Dan Dive Steve. <laughs> Uh, Lange defends very offensively. They often don't have a defender lying under the goalie and get in quite late. <coughs> well, if you have ball control and if you uh, go into the, the last second, they are very controlled players, so they calculate how fast they can get intercept uh, into the offense. And as far as I've seen, Espionana didn't get that close to put real danger on the basket. So they can play offensively because they have more bell control, time control on the ball. That's my interpretation of this game of Langen, why they look like, like they um, more openly. And this gives you a chance to start forward and counter attack much faster as if you duck in really deep into your own defense. So I'm curious, but still it's 0-0 uh, zero, zero after the first half. So uh, the Swedish team is doing a good job Depending off these attacks from the Germans, who are very able um, to score, so it is hard work to keep them off if they are that close because they have <coughs> they reached the basket of the Swedish uh, many times and put them in dangerous situations. But uh, Swedes always managed to clear and get space between the ball and their own goal and even to break free. And this happened more and more <coughs> in the end of the first half. So, very good game here from um, Esperanana. And uh, Langen has to step up in their attack um, to score here. It would be uh, interesting to see in the second half how Langen probably changes their attack seconds and go in even with more pressure into the defense of the Swedes. Six players in the water. 
Uh, Billy, the Hubas, uh, asked, is it possible to see the players each team has available? Uh, you can uh, go to the website. Uh, I will... I will post the link. In the comments. Are you ready? With the link I just posted on the Underwater Academy, you can find the team list. So, in the second half here of this uh, game, Langen uh, from Germany against Isbjörnana from uh, Sweden. And Langen is going in really decided into this first attack of the second half. There's a player lying under the basket, and that was the first chance. Now the second wave comes in, second chance to score, but pretty well defended here, pretty well resolved uh, and taken away the pressure from the basket. Uh, third wave coming in, this is Kati Gillard, yes. And he scored, yeah. But that was too much. Goal, uh, blue. This is what I expected here in Six. the... In the second half, we see the replay now. Time out, Very white. Well done. Time out, white. The third uh, attempt, out. third wave going in, pushed away the goalkeeper from the open side and scored. We have a timeout for the Swedish team. So uh, one minute to take a breath and reorientate how they deal with this uh, first goal. Thirty seconds. Can I have Six some players information? Uh, Bobby, probably you have some information about the Swedish team, um, about the experience. I haven't seen them playing um, yet at the Champions Cup. I think it's a uh, first timer here at the Champions Cup. Um, Ready. What is their structure? Do they have an experienced player? It looks like um, they don't play like newbies, the whole team. And to, to keep a, a team like Langen away from scoring for uh, a full half, uh, full 10 minutes is uh, quite a feature. So here, the Swedes try to go in with force. Three players uh, in the first attack. The heavy defense by Langen, called from the referee. Looks like a free throw. Blue free throw for Langen now. So Langen again in the attack. Building up their momentum, chaotic situation in front of the basket, and uh, Swedish player was able to steal uh, the ball away, um, tackled at once by two Langen players, uh, two German players, and Germany is back in ball position and installing them. They are installing themselves around the basket of the Swedes and creating these gaps you need to score. Another attack from the close side, players going above, tries from above, didn't score, threw the ball on the, on the ring of the basket. And uh, Sweden is in ball possession, trying to break through the forward defense, through the forward checking of uh, Langen and really has to work step by step, inch by inch to get anywhere near the Langen basket. Again, ball is falling down. Langen is not giving them uh, uh, an, an, an inch of room to move forward. And Langen is in ball possession. Now it's up to the Swedes to hold up their forechecking. Uh, um, for and they do quite well. The second stole the ball. Back in ball possession. That's really good. They stopped the attack of Langen in the half of Langen and are now returning the favor going back to the Langen basket. 
It's back and forth, lung and back and ball possession. Really fast game now, really concentrating. You see the concentration of the players being there for each other, and playing back and forth, intercepting, and uh, offering their help to the ball carrier. Very high level game, and uh, there is no present here for any of the player of the uh, teams from each other. So they are fighting really hard. Lisa, welcome back in the game. Thank you very much, Bob. Um, the score is 0-0 zero, zero, or? No, it's, it's a 1-0 or I, um, uh, there was a score and probably was annulated. I didn't see that, but there was a score and I'm pretty sure it's 1-0. Okay, it's so we again have a problem with this and I will go check how we can fix this. We're back uh, in the Swedish half on cluster. Ball on the water. Wide free throw. The referee looks like a free throw again. A lot of free throws in this game. Back and forth. And this one is for uh, the Swedish team. And the Swedes try now to go forward already in the half of Langen, getting closer to the Langen basket. Player installed under the basket. And now they're again uh, with two players into the defense area of the Langen uh, defenders. Langen has to work here. Coming from above, Swedish players trying to dig into the defense from above. Didn't succeed, ball was break, brought free into the hands of a Langen player who immediately turned it around and go for the Swedish basket, but stopped in the middle. Nice forward checking here, but now the forward checking is gone and Langen has a free pool to swim to the Swedish basket. Didn't see what the Blue play was, throw. but they uh, called from the referee. Free throw, yes, free throw against uh, the Swedish team. <laughs> Still not executed. Uh, referee is going to the surface, underwater referee is going to the surface and he tries to find out what's happening. No. Discussion on the surface, we don't have a camera on the surface, now we see, okay. like a referee is discussing still free throw against Sweden I don't really see what's happening uh, maybe problems with the clock so the game is not restarted yet. One of the underwater referees is still on the surface. So the game is stopped. So in this break I can tell you why it sometimes takes time for the score to show up properly. This is controlled at the protocol table. Um, so the people who are managing the clock and everything um, forget to update the score on um, the system, then it doesn't get reported here. We're going to need some minutes. There's some power issues. So we'll be right back. OK, so Isbjörnana from Sweden is a pretty new team, I think, and they're composed of different Six players from different 
teams um, uh, from around Sweden, and they won the nationals this year. I think it's their second year as a team, and they won nationals. Um, they're a pretty good team, but they're based as a team from around Umeå. Yeah. And I have a good friend of mine, uh, Urban uh, from uh, Umeå. I think it's his birthday today. Birthday today. Sorry. So happy birthday, uh, Urban. Four minutes left. He played with Four us uh, many years ago. So I don't know what's uh, what's going on right now. We have a little bit of a break, but I think Langen is also kind of the similar a uh, similar constellation. Now that you have its players, like it's a women's team, they, they are a proper team. They always play together at the German Championship, but they train in different cities, uh, but mixed. And then for the women's championship, they make a Spielergemeinschaft, as we call it in German, yes. so a group of yes. players, because they wouldn't have enough players or not yeah. competitive players um, for a team by their own. And most of the women's teams in Germany are like that, right? Yes, uh, we have a lot of problems here getting enough uh, players from one uh, club uh, to build up a, a whole team. So um, it's the same with my home team here in, in Berlin. Uh, the women here have players from, uh, I think, three, four different clubs together yeah but do they always play together it's not like the mix they invited players from other teams no, 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 for no, the no, champions no. cup is they always was, play yeah, like yeah. that and uh, all the teams but i think uh, langen is now split up uh, so this will be the last uh, champions true. cup to play true it is they made a new team or they went yeah. to switch to another team yeah. um, it always depends on the top players uh, of a team if they change the team they they restructure and uh, I think this is happening with Lange now too. Yes. It's very interesting because there is a lot of underwater rugby teams in Germany and a lot of women playing, but then you don't have enough in any single team for yep. um, to have uh, in a club to have 15 players for a competition. It, it's always a question of the club structure, how many um, players you have in a club. And with us uh, in, in Germany, I think it's another country too, the, uh, the women play with the, with the men, but they don't have a, 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 a proper team for themselves in the club. So they train with the men and they play in the league with other players. Yep, they have to reset the clock, which is not that easy. Mm -hmm. Bin is troubleshooting. And... Um Okay, we start again with a free throw for Langen, it looks like. Yes. The Isbjörnana players are too close. They have to retreat to the wall, looks like. And uh, we haven't seen the first half, uh, but uh, I get to sum it up. Um, Langen was putting uh, heavy pressure on the Swedish basket and uh, Spiranana uh, did a really good job to fend off um, these attacks and I have to say Langen only scored once in this first half. Mm -hmm. No, it's um, the little I've seen looks very like a good game, like a good intense game. Yes. But the, the Swedes didn't manage to break out and put enough pressure on the German basket to score. Mm. Yes, so, so back again, uh, we have four minutes left here in the first half. And uh, the already known situation, we are in front of the Swedish mm -hmm. basket. And pretty defended. Now we have a chance uh, from the Swedes to break free. Three players are going for the German basket. And uh, the German defense was a little bit behind, but uh, regrouped fast enough to stop the attack. And back again on the way to the Swedish basket. Intercepted in the middle. Ball changed again in the hands to the Swedes. Pretty good game uh, we see from the Swedish side here against a really strong team like Langen. Mm -hmm. How is Langen ranked in the German nationals? Well, they are the champions, otherwise they wouldn't be here. <laughs> and in other competitions, I don't know if they 
go as Langen to other well, international competitions? To, 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 to give you an insight, I think, uh, I don't know how many, but there are many national uh, team players playing in Langen. And another tag here from um, Ispjörnana. Ispjörnana. And this was the, the, the really the first one that was close where the um, Swedish player touched the goalkeeper and was able to put pressure on the goalkeeper directly. So we're getting there. Uh, either uh, Langen is slowing down or Ispirana is putting up uh, the speed. What do you think maybe Langen is um, saving their energy a bit? And like, okay, they're winning anyway, so why try and go 100% if they have more games to play? So Definitely, but um, I, as I see it, a 1-0. Oh, so there was a referee call and... Time penalty Yeah. for a player. So uh, Ispiranana does play with uh, only five players in the water now. Um, I don't really think Langen is uh, serving energy with a 1-0 lead uh, and a pretty good game from uh, Ispiranana. It's not that safe to, to lie back, I'd say. And uh, even with one player less, Swedes are on the attack at the German basket. So the Germans recover the ball and push out. And again, counter-attack, uh, Langen recover the ball and it's now on a really fast counter-attack on an empty basket and scored on an empty basket. So a 2-0 for Langen. And this is where you notice that the Swedish were playing with one player less. less one player less. And uh, it's they really try to go in the offensive because they have to um, catch up with Langen. And this is the risk you're uh, risking. Yeah. You risk a risk. You take a risk. Take a risk. You take the risk. I didn't. It's beyond did. They did. And this is what I said the previous game. There was 1-0 for um, the Wales against Barcelona. Um, that they were 1-0 behind, so you have to go all in because if you lose 1-0 or 2-0, two, two the outcome is the same, you've still lost. Yep. So if you want to turn it around, you have to try and go out and stop. Like, you cannot play conservative if you want to score. So time is ticking down for the uh, player on the penalty bench and the time is ticking down for the first half. And it's a 2-0 for Langen, uh, playing in blue, and a free throw now for Langen. And the time is ticking, 10 seconds. This is first half? Second half. Um, I really lose track, I have to admit. The, so it's over, this is... I think that the game is... Ah, I think because of the time... They had to reset. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. that was my mistake. Yeah, second half. No, but there was a problem there. They had to reset the clock. So, yes, no, they switched sides. I was, I was at the pool. So yeah. we will um, observe in a tiny Excuse bit. Excuse me, could I please, please have everyone... Out of the water, I think a minute of silence for Erika Lindström from Sweden. Could I please have everyone's attention? Last month. Yeah. Excuse me. Ex excuse me, could you please have uh, your attention? Thank you. We're going to have uh, a minute of silence for uh, a Swedish player who died recently, a couple of weeks ago. Her name is uh, Erika Lindström. She was a national player. She played the European Championship. Uh, a couple of months ago. She was a frequent player here at Champions Cup. She played uh, quite a lot of years. And uh, she was also Swedish representative at the CMAS Underwater Rugby Commission. So, please, one minute of silence. Thank you.
Thank you very much. This was uh, a minute of silence for a Swedish player who died, uh, I think, two weeks ago. And uh, yes. Always a chilling moment to be reminded. Enjoy your life. So next game coming up is Molde against Wien. So it's the second uh, game of uh, Molde for the day. First one was against uh, Luxembourg with 12-0. Let's see how Vienna is managing against Molde. Oh, you see the in the live stream you see uh, the team members. <laughs> so just uh, some minutes ago I saw the, the team from uh, Vienna walking in uh, Thomas who did uh, the commentaries with us in uh, Graz was the, is there too it's a tough uh, game for them now against a strong Molde team here at the Champions Cup. Um, and I was talking to uh, Reinhard Schottmüller too uh, after what he said to the game uh, against the Sea Lions of Malch, the German team of Malch at the Sea Lions. And he said, uh, well, let's see how they do in the rest of the games. That was pretty good, but you have to have the stamina to keep it up for the whole Champions Cup. So it's a, <laughs> it's a really German uh, interpretation. They played very well and uh, a lot so of uh, white respect for them. So uh, Molde will play in blue and uh, Vienna is playing in white. white team. You see here the Vienna team Ready. preparing the last seconds for starting the game. And here we go, game starts. Vienna managed to get uh, first to the ball but cannot uh, keep hold of it. Pushed away by a uh, Molde player right in front and we're already at the at Austrian basket and there's a lot of pressure, you see it here. It's uh, quite hectic for the defense of Vienna. Molde wants to score within the first seconds here of the first half in this game. And they're pushing, pushing and here it is, well, yes. That was relentless. That was just like uh, showing no, everybody, OK, this is eight. our game. We control it. And Four this is how we score. Very well done. Um, and the defense was uh, pretty overrun here before they even had a chance to get into the game. Impressive. So Vienna in ball possession. And Molde is going into the defense. Ah, that was a holding free throw against Molde. Molde is going to the defense. 
Right uh, now it's a go. chance for Austria to get close to the Norwegian basket for the first time. Trying to build their attack patterns. Molde is heavily interfering. And you see the Molde players, the defending, sprinting out of the defense into the forechecking to at least touch the ball and interfere with the attack. And Austria has a big problem here to establish kind of pressure on the Molde basket. What are you interested in? Where the ball is right the now. Area. The on the surface, yeah, Mold is holding the ball. So they're just waiting, getting into position, orienting, and on the basket. Coming from above, trying to push in. Next wave is coming in. Nice defensive action here from Austria. And another attack. Austria is a little bit more in the game than uh, if they have been the first and even uh, managed here to get hold of the ball and going forward. But lost the ball two on one on the basket and attack from the open side didn't succeed in pushing the ball in. The goalkeeper was lying pretty good on the basket. This is heavy for the defense because this constant pressure High physical pressure on the defense takes its toll. And it's uh, good work here from Austria going this this far. Call from the referee from the surface. White free ball. So tell me, Wolf, what have you missed? Well, you missed uh, one zero in the first uh, seconds of this um, of this uh, game, Molde against. Uh, Vienna and Molde was really establishing uh, their territory here with a with a fast heavy attack in the first second final score but now Austria is in the game defense is a little bit woken up and uh, the Austrians try to break through the forechecking defense we have a cluster on the surface in the middle of the pool no movement there now the ball is free, Austrian player recover the ball, intercepted by a uh, Molde player. You, it's so dangerous to play openly here against these guys who just snatch the ball away and interfere within seconds. They punish every, every millimeter you go for it. And already pressure on the basket from above. Defense is holding, still holding pressure from the open side into the defense. And again from the close side, going in really tough. This is physical too, but on a, on a high level from Molde's side, they, they use as much force as they need. And from above, nice pass back to the second wave coming in on this side, but not succeeded. Well defended, I have to admit. It looks chaotic, but uh, Austria really does a good job. Not in its next wave coming in. This is relentless, how they just push and push and push until the ball is in the Blue basket goal. and it's a 2-0. Wow. Number five. Molde is really Blue goal number five. signing uh, the contract uh, for this championship. They want to win. And they claim this pool as their territory. It's going to be fascinating to see Molde play against um, the Colombians or even uh, against the Sea Lions, for example. That would be fascinating. All right, here comes Austria. So they're in the Molde half and dropped the ball. And Molde immediately went for, for it. Like they're, they're faster. Um, but Vienna is fighting. Yeah, uh, uh, really very well, well. Very strong fight. They are, it looks like they are lacking a little bit behind, but nevertheless, they get ball possession. They hold on to the ball and they fight really hard. So they don't make it that easy for Molde. 
two is not an easy game. <laughs> okay, the player completely pushed without ball. But yes, Another score. the support needs to be there way faster number on nine. the Austrian side. Because here we had three Low seconds. Wait. Like the number 12 had time to try it twice to score. Yeah. And the back was still not in position. Yeah. And this is a mistake that Molde immediately takes advantage of. You cannot let one against two against such a team, you have no chance because they're fast and they attack with at least two players. But you see uh, the cost uh, the, the Austrians pay for their heavy defense in the first first half here. And they did very well, but it cost them. And another attack going in. And, another, and it, it's just like... Blue goal number eight. Oh, another goal. No. Blue goal number yes. eight. Goal. There was a goal. And <laughs> you can see the referee who really gets in to see what happens because from the side yeah, the referees do. cannot really say what's happening so it's just they build clusters around uh, the basket and it's really tight and, and you, you see the physicality um, there must be in there because these guys are strong and it's big men yes <laughs> so yeah. you have six around the small basket like you don't really see what's happening yeah like Samuel the the, the, the coach of the Colombian said He's not the big guys <laughs> no no but he said uh, uh, well, the big guys are coming from all the Okay, so Vienna is in the close corner on the Molde side. One player passing around and again one going in by himself. Um, yeah, and gets caught. It looks like the beginning of a scrum. The ball stays in the Vienna hands. They pull out a bit. We have a v Vienna player on the basket. Oh, that would have been a goal. They kind of bounced on the wall and Molde player got it back. But that was a very good goal opportunity from from the Vienna team. Um, they're really like they almost scored. Okay, now we have again two Molde players against one Vienna goalie. Blue goal and number eight. Vienna didn't roll back fast enough to stop goal the counter attack. Eight. It's really a pity because that was it was a very good goal opportunity before from Vienna, and then they don't swim back fast enough. It's a small pool. Mm. Yeah, but, but I think uh, it, it's really, it cost them, the first minute cost them. They were defending heavily and it, it's tough to, to stand. And they did pretty well and it's, uh, it's tough to withstand this constant pressure. Oh, this is a chance, one on one uh, for a split second. Uh, one on three. <laughs> yeah, now one on three. That uh, before, really the fast. one before on the, on the empty basket, like when Molde left the basket, that was very good. So 30 seconds left in the first half. Okay, we have one one attack and the back was a bit late, so wasn't really in two positions. The attacker could really grab the goalie. And now it looks like a molded player had stolen the basket and left. We have one goalie. And it's just 10 seconds left. The Vienna team needs to keep the ball and hold on to it for one more second and it is half time. So, uh, yeah, as we see in the, in the first uh, game of the day when Molde played against um, Luxembourg, Molde is really strong and uh, Vienna does its best to defend, but the exhaustion must be on a high level now for them. And uh, the Molde player look pretty fresh. It's what Vienna should really change now is um, like they should really watch out that when they attack, they immediately they roll back, at least <laughs> back in the goalie, uh, that they roll back more towards the basket so that they can't stop a counter attack because they they don't swim back fast enough when there is a counter attack and it's happened a couple times that. Um, they got scored on because they only had one goalie at the basket against two Molde players. This is almost impossible to stop. So here we have the coach and Dash Nalabawa talking to his players. 
looks like Vienna also has a couple of players set and others in order. And you see Jan Hubezisna outside holding the side the back of fence. If he could play, he would. So I reckon he'll say. Team 17 out 25 in. Blue team 17 out 25 in. So teams, uh, mind getting ready. So the game is about to start again. The players are getting ready. And here we are back in the game. Change the side and already on the Austrian basket. So let's see if uh, Austria can keep up their defense work. Ah, here we have the first score. That was pretty fast. And uh, I guess this is what I imagined. Blue goal, Blue goal number five. They are really suffering from this first half and the exhaustion they brought into the second half. Because yeah, you can see the Moldy player went in from the closed side and the Vienna player had left a bit of, of space next to the wall and the, the Moldy attacker just went in, pushed him away and scored And this over him. didn't happen in the first half. No. Okay, Austria in attack mode going forward. Now with uh, two, three players, four players. They just need to keep it up to yeah, do waves. Rotate, and yeah, yeah, but, but here we go. They have all been forward. Now it's, oh, it's a really dangerous situation with uh, many Molde players here around the basket. But he didn't score. There was, uh, I think it was lucky for the Austrian goalkeeper in this situation. Yes. It was pretty close. Looked like it would be a goal and it wasn't, but it was pretty cool. Especially there was no back either. So they were lucky that... Um, the attacker didn't pass down because yeah. it was two yeah. Molde players under yeah. the basket. And now we have again the Molde player lifting the goalie and Vienna recovering the ball, pushing out. And it's not that easy for Molde. It's not like what uh, the player just tried when he attacked. Oh, that's the player from Molde, the female player from Molde, um, uh, made a fast counter break goal and uh, scored on an empty basket. You can see it here in the replay. Uh, they recover the ball from uh, from uh, the forward movement from the Austrian player. And the play was passed forward, and she swam really fast to the basket and 25. scored on an empty basket. Yeah. Well Blue done. Goal number 25. Fast reaction time. That's what you need another one. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not. I mean, it is a bit of an uneven game. Yes. But it is. It is a good game. And Vienna is doing what they can. Yeah, and they are not giving presents to Molde, so they are really fighting hard, and uh, Molde doesn't succeed in the first, uh, always in the first attempt, but it's, yeah, it's grinding uh, Austria down. And you see it here again, uh, the situations when when the rest of the team, when they are in attack, does not make it in time back to the basket, and you have a dangerous situation where the uh, Norwegian players can duck in in the defense. And that both fell to the bottom on the closed corner of the Vienna side. 
and White it is throw. a red free throw. It was holding without balls, a free throw for uh, Vienna. Holding. Six and a half minutes left. It's a 7 0 for Molde in blue against uh, Vienna in white. And Vienna is trying to enter the basket area of Molde. Stopped, ball taken away from them, recovered, taken away from them. Heavy fighting here in the middle of the pool. But uh, winner is Molde from this uh, close quarter fight. They're coming in above from the basket already. Players waiting from the side. The female player of the team here going in. She didn't succeed in scoring. Peter Maracek recovers the ball from Vienna. <laughs> Drops it. After a very short scrum. And, and another score. On an end basket goal. like them. I think the, the Vienna player assumed the back position because he felt someone Number behind 33. him. Like he just. Yeah. He moved and Blue went down. Yeah, he it, because really I guess went he away from the basket, I, I yeah. think that he might Could have be. thought that someone was coming to switch up on him, yeah. but it was the opponent. Yeah, or he was already out of air. It, it looked like he moved away from the basket yeah, and opened up the space. Well, he was very alone. Yes. Okay, 8 0. Um. The female player, by the way, is Marie Jeanette Alton. And she's a very good national Marie Jeanette. team. I can imagine to player. <laughs> to be uh, uh, able to play with the, with the big guys, like Samuel said, uh, from Molde, you have to be a good player. All right, Austria, five minutes to go. Ooh, there was a ball to a player who was standing up and not looking at the ball. A fast counter-attack from Molde, but the defense gets into position on time. I guess it really worked on, on that. On being a bit more safe and not leaving the back that open and without defenders for so long. Okay, Vienna recovers the ball and tries to push out. Kill it back in the midfield. Managed to pass around. Do they have someone at the bottom? And uh, Vienna does a good fight here. I have to admit, it's uh, after, after these... Uh, first half they're still in the game and I, it, it sounds terrible but Vienna is a good team just that yes. all days better yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. Not a bad team no, at no. All. but 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 you know with a 8-0 score um, against uh, Molde you would say but but uh, Vienna is uh, it's, it's doing pretty well and you could say they don't give up it's it's just like uh, the, the pressure is so hard and another score another goal oh yeah. Blue goal. By another female player actually <laughs> Molde has two female Lisa played. and Mari are playing. Thank you for the Blue information. Hi, I'm Lisa Knutson. Time out white. Uh, Thank you, Eva, for, for this uh, comment update. <laughs> okay, so Vienna white. just took a timeout. Um, honestly, they have some very good faces. And then course they get overrun by by Molde or the ball gets taken away from them but they managed to get when defending they managed to recover the ball exactly. quite a few times and push out then they don't make it all the way to the Molde basket or if they do they don't manage to score but it's, it's a pretty good performance by Absolutely. Vienna. I, and don't it's I don't see them destroyed by Molde it's it's not like they're they're really like uh, pushed by the side they give a good fight and they they um, have to be good players to play on this level and to hold against uh, Molde. There was like three goals on an empty basket, or empty-ish, so or <laughs> one against that's two. That's the cost, yeah. Those are like goals that should not happen, but most of the goals were like after a good fight and just happened because the other team was better. But those are the goals that happened. The ones that should happen are the ones on White a completely team. empty basket or because... You just have the goalie against three people on a counter attack. That should not happen. No. But other one was really good game. Three minutes, a uh, little bit more than three minutes left. Again, a fight in the middle of the pool for the ball. And Molly goes out with the ball and at once in really high speed. And that was this ball was intercepted. Don't see that many times, many uh, you don't see that that often 
a ball of a pass from uh, Molde being intercepted and we're under the Austrian basket from the close side. A lot of pressure there on the close side and another score. Did it go in Blue the closed corner? I, I saw it 33. Close corner. Yeah, let's see the replay. Blue no. goal number 33. Yeah. Yeah, it was close. It, uh, it looks like some kind of medlar mix. And it, it, it physically, um, on, on, on your concentration, it, it costs you to play against a team like Molde and to keep up with them. So uh, it, it's really like you see these little mistakes are happening because you're just like, wow, mm. it's exhausting. Yes. Oh, and Molde is going very fast for the Vienna basket, drops the ball. And have a ball recovery by Vienna trying to slowly slip swim forward while dragging a big Norwegian is not that easy. Less than two minutes left in the second half. Okay, the Austrians are missing some support, especially under the, the scrums, or like they lack a, another player to be able to pass to. White free like throw. Times. Free roofing. throw for, for holding roofing. white what free ball that? roofing. Holding onto gear? Hold yeah. Without ball? Yeah. Free throw for Vienna. And the Norwegian player very close to the ball there. And for uh, Austria it would be like in, in this point of the game it would be great to score to see you be able at least uh, to reach a basket and, and score, uh, even if you lag behind 10-0. Oh, that was a very bad pass, and yes, it went way too far to the back. Attack. Yeah, the Vienna player passed it to the back, but way too far. <laughs> and it landed on in the hands of a uh, player. Well, from the referee. Oh, penalty. 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 It's a penalty throw, um, probably holding by the goalkeeper. Or oh, shoulder in the basket. Yeah. Shoulder in the basket. This is what you, penalty. in these situations, what you risk as goalkeeper. You try to risk to get a penalty because um, it's another chance to prevent the goal. So this is uh, tactical fault playing you can do. So who is going for the penalty on the Molde side, number, number nine. nine? This is Jon Dreider. Sorry for destroying his name. Um, the goalie. 11. Uh, Ma Matthias Neunteufel, very good national team keeper. Let's see what happens. Okay, so we have the Molde player going back up for air. 30 seconds to go. Great to get on the goalie's nerves. And Matthias oh. uh, got pulled away from the basket. Yeah, I think it was, uh, the, was uh, the, the point where he, uh, in, in this last second, he didn't even uh, Game uh, try to reach the ball. Now he, he turned away, and this, this movement was like, yep, yeah, he, he got too far away. He, he was up. too, far, too yeah. far away. He got, um, he went for the arm, and then the Norwegian player managed turned to around. turn around and switch him yep. completely to the other side and managed to score. And that was a good game. Yep, really enjoyed it. Good game by uh, Austria, by Vienna. Good fight, Vienna. Oh, is it now 11 or 12 0? Oh. Uh, 12, I think. Good game to both of the teams. And then now coming up, we have <laughs> the female version of this game. So, Akarem from. Uh, Norway against the Vienna female team. Uh, the ah, Triton Barun team just opened up an old tradition we had from, uh, from uh, the World Championship in Graz. Uh, we were uh, bringing each other beer, and I said when they score, they will bring uh, them beer into uh, their uh, changing rooms. So they Not brought sponsored. me. <laughs> <laughs> you oh have well. to hide. No, watch out! You have to hide it because otherwise we get a problem with they might take a downer stream or whatever because we cannot advertise alcohol. Really? Hide the beer. 
Okay. So they brought me water. Um, Pilsen Urquell is pretty good water producer in uh, the Czech, Czech Republic. Republic. Yeah, they're famous for their natural water. It's very healthy. It's also why they drink poolside at the, during the games at Czech League. Yes, they do. They do. So thanks a lot, uh, Triton Baru. I think I have to uh, uh, return the favor now again. Yes. And uh, are you excited for the next game? I am. I really like excited. The, I don't know the, the Norwegians at all, but I know the Vienna women's team quite well because I play with a lot of them in the Austrian national yes, team. Yes. I don't know all the players though because Vienna has over like almost 20 women in the oh. women's team. They have a lot of women players. Like, they can select who they take with them to comps, That's which luxury. is really, uh, th this is luxury, yeah. like uh, from, from Graz, it's very frustrating to see them have so many players. It's really happy for them and it's also good for the Austrian, Austrian national team because we get, we have enough players as new bloods and new players all the time, which is really great. Um, I'm excited to see how they do. So we have some questions in the chat about the team lists. The team lists are not 100% accurate on the website because there were some changes, some people are sick. Oh, the game has started. Sorry, we are already in the game. We didn't see the, the start of it. So it's uh, Akaren in blue against uh, Vienna female team in white. Akaren is really the legend of the Champions Cup right now. I think they uh, won the Champions Cup as much as many times as any other uh, team before them. So, yes. And yeah, they nice. just brought back the trophy that they had with yep. them. And they're fast and they pass well and they're always there. And they're already putting uh, pressure um, here on the Austrian basket. Yeah, the Austrians are are defending well so as far. As far as we can see, it's really dark. Mm -hmm. Okay, we just have a goalie in no back there. And that looks like it was a goal. Yeah, yeah. first goal. One that's the thing, after like a minute of defending, that's when you start getting a problem that a rotation won't go that well because you will have people starting to sub out because it started very intense and then you miss a person for five seconds and then you have the goal. Yeah, yeah. That this is what you do when you go in these constant waves and uh, teams like Akaren, they are just like machine-like going into this this wave system and putting pressure and keeping the pressure up. Especially in such a small pool. They're yes. always there. They don't give you a chance. If so you don't navigate the pool, open up and trick them, they're really hard to trick. Um, yeah, I really hope that Vienna manages to stay solid and also pushes out, recovers a few ball. Let's see how the game evolves. Again, uh, great pressure here on the basket so of Jackie the Austrian team. Jackie had gotten the ball. Okay, Vienna has the ball, and pushes out, pass in the midfield and gets grabbed by a Norwegian. See, that's the thing. You yeah, yeah, cannot yeah, do a pass if you're not sure that it's yeah. basically not a pass. You have yeah. to give it in the hand of the other player. Uh, and it costs you again because you ha you're swimming behind the attack then, the attack wave coming into the basket. The camera is a bit dark. I don't know if someone in the techni yes. technical room can switch it. Okay, I kind of attacking again I with three players. And it's it's like uh, what we've seen from all a little bit. It's a lot of pressure and a lot of players from the Norwegian team around the basket searching for these weak spots and pull in positioning players all around so the defenders don't know where the ball will be passed. We d even don't see it here because it's pretty dark, the picture, but we see um, the current players constantly um, putting pressure on the basket. Vienna has recovered the ball and dropped it to the bottom. Uh, the player was too slow then to go to the ball and the current player had gotten it. We now have a surface scrum and back into the current hands. Goli is by herself. And again, same situation, the, the current team increases the pressure, increases the pressure. 
and you deeper you go into the, the first half, it costs more and more for the defense to keep up and hold on to it. And another score here mm. from the current team, and it's a 3-0, I guess. Yes. There's no 3-0. The Vienna player basically had the ball too open. That's yeah. also another thing. Against a team that's so aggressive and so Fast. so present, um, you cannot carry the ball that open, especially on the surface where you just have you can only pass down, basically, and the current player just took it. But nevertheless, well played here by Vienna. They are still in um, ball possession. We have Lizzy Schwarz here at the basket. She is the captain of the national team. She's really good, very strong, very aggressive in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> and Austria does not have the room to establish their attack pattern to build up pressure on the basket because Akaren players are interfering all around. Yes, and uh, the Akaren players see that as soon as you had one player by herself in the corner, the back pushed out. Yeah. So they drag the Vienna players down immediately. They don't let them breathe. And now we've got the ball back. And Push Akaren out, counter-attack. Yes. And it's so fast how it goes, how Akaren um, works its way through the basket, through the, the pool, and it's already on the basket on the other side. And uh, this is hard for Austria to keep up with the pace and, and go back into defense. And already another goal. Was it a goal? No. No, no, I haven't seen it, sorry. Uh, it looks like a free throw. No. Free throw for Vienna. I want to go tell them to switch the camera to a bit brighter, but I also don't want to stop watching the game. I don't think they're able to. I think the... But at least we don't have the pink... The pink glitch. Pink glitch anymore. Yes, okay, free throw for Akadem now. Was it a free throw? Or just yeah, it was a free throw. Okay. But it was uh, against the current, I guess. No, 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 I think they just recovered the ball. Um, yep. And they're attacking Vienna again. Moving the ball around the basket, coming from the one on the close side, moving on to the open one. And they create really chaos by these fast movements around the basket. So the defense has difficulties to reorientate um, to the one carrying the ball. And then you open up these little spaces you need to score. Yes. And up and down. And it's hard also for the forwards who are defending yeah. to position themselves. They're swimming around all the time. Yeah. Really good uh, attack pattern here by Akaden. Ooh, and now there was no more... But also more a attacker at the basket. Vienna is pushing out. There was a kind of a failed pass. Akaren has the ball, passes it into the close corner. Center back to the close corner. Comes up to the surface a bit. But they have a player who's pretty well placed at the basket on the open side. Blocks it. Blocks the defensive side. We hear Bilim hanging onto the ball. And the ball is again at the bottom. Number nine from Akaren attacking the goalie. Vienna has the ball. And Very well loses done, but it. Uh, immediately intercepted. The basket is oh empty and, and the yes, basket is here. This is what happens when, when you uh, recover the ball into these pressure situations and you try to go forward, lose the ball, and your teammates are already orientating to go forward, and then no one is there like this in the situation. You have an empty basket and it's easy to score. So yeah, and, and the back zero. didn't see that there, wasn't, uh, that there was no goalie, yeah. but there was a very good defense and a long defensive pace. Okay, we have one player from Vienna at the bottom, okay, passing to Denise, but she immediately gets two current players on her. And Akaren attacks again on an empty basket, and that is a goal. Is this a song? On an empty <laughs> basket? <laughs> wow. I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, but th this is... It, the decision for, for uh, um, 
Vienna would be just to bunker in on their um, on their basket, but they want to go forward. They want to counter attack, so they have to open up. And if you have these fast swimmers from the Akaran team, it's it's punished. The thing is, if you bunker down and completely shut your basket down, yeah. um, at some point you can't anymore. You yeah. it's too it's exhausting yeah, to it's just exhausting. defend, 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 sure. defend, defend. It's too exhausting. Okay, their midfield and they were like Lise Schwarz was bringing the ball out, got intercepted by Akalen and was missing some support to manage to bring the ball forward. Okay, I think that's Ul no, someone got the ball <laughs> <laughs> and pushes out. Lise again. Yeah. Hey, these little Passing mistakes cost you. Yeah, well, Jackie well makes solved. it to the front and passes yeah. the ball down. So Austria tries to inch, inch, inch by inch going forward through these forechecking. checking uh, And then look uh, here, the, the player who came for support was behind. behind. Yes. And at the same height. She yeah. should have just gone forward. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now we have one attacker going in by herself against but three people. But the situation for them is so stressful. Even if they are now on the basket, they are on a constant attack. This is no second, no split of a second for them to... to consider the situation and it's hard. Yeah. Yeah, but hard they had like so some phase, like they managed to recover the ball sometimes and push out. Um, but yeah, there need to be there needs to be a, a person every time they recover the ball down and forward to be able to receive the ball. And the problem is when you have defendant for so long First thing you want to do is not push out and sprint. Yes. <laughs> is breathe. Like finally, <laughs> finally <laughs> I have a rest. But no, you don't have a rest. That's when you have to go forward. So you can have maybe some rest by establishing um attacking routine, like some kind of corner, yeah. waiting phase yeah. in the corner. You cannot really do that against a current because if they think that you're if they see that you're selling, they will go for the ball. Yeah. So you have to commit. You have to play committed against them or they they see it and yeah. directly come for you. And, and especially at the moment when you, you got the ball and your teammates think, ah, you got the ball, it's going forward, we change. So you're all alone and this is the moment uh, the, the, pool, the, the basket will be empty. Yeah. Let me try and see if we can adjust the camera a bit. I'll be right back. All right. So we got a little uh, um, support here now. Uh, Lorena just arrived, but she will not be... Uh, she will take her time to, to arrive, but I'm looking forward to do comments with her again. Um, computer here. So, all in all, um, Austria can be... Uh, um, Look at this game and say we, we do our best here. And uh, this is not like uh, they are breaking or they are not able to defend. Akaren is uh, one of the top teams and they are really machine like. And Austria is very good in defending and keeping them as far as they can off. So good job by Austria. And they're a good team, experienced team. But Akaren is uh, on a higher level here. Um, from experience. So comparison is always difficult. In the end, uh, it counts who wins, wins the game. But uh, you can see in the structure of Austria, they are, they know what they're doing. Of course they do. They also have, like, it's not anymore like a new team. Exactly. They have players that have been playing for 10 years. Them. Which, which is great. Like right, over, over 10 years actually. And when I started, we barely had two. We've been playing for that long. Mm. So the teams are going with start and the game has started again. Second half now, and a 4 0 lead for Akaren in blue against Austria in white. Didn't they score last one just before half? No, it didn't. Before the run. Ooh, now we have an account player just under the goalie. That was good. The, the goalie really pushed out and recovered the ball, threw it to the front. That was great. Like she 
just had the ball and threw it to the front down. Then the other player was a bit too slow and going to recover it. But that was better than getting in scrum against Akadem. The defense is there, Goli is there. And again, pressure here on the basket. First attempt didn't succeed in the first wave. And uh, Austria even managed to get hold of the ball above uh, their own basket. And uh, a little bit chaotic now. See a lot of the current players uh, assembling under the basket of Austria. No, the back doesn't let the Norwegian player push up. The Austrians are good at switching goalies and not leaving space in between. Okay, Vienna again pushing out. Making it to the current half. It's a split second. Uh, there is no other player or they don't see each other, so they don't uh, ah, there was some get rid of the ball. There was a referee call. No, no, I don't no. Think so. no, no, no. It was just she was giving up uh, like no other player there. Just an idle face. Didn't know what to do. Oh, they fixed the lightning, the lighting of the camera, by the way. Now we can see what happens. Perfect. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> Thanks to the people in the technical room. Okay, so we have a bit of a struggle, midfield. And Akadem recovers the ball wow, this very, fast, very, yeah, very yes. fast. Th these are the moments when, when they show uh, how fast they can react and switch from, from uh, uh, being attacked into, into uh, uh, offense mode. And swim really fast and score on an empty basket. Yes. That was a 5-0. Seven and a half minutes left here. And another start. So Vienna in ball possession trying to break through into the half. Off a cut in, lost the ball again. And again a fast counter-attack. Four current players already on the bottom. They position themselves, they see the attack is not uh, that far and they go back and offer as a, as a position to be played to. So it's, it's really high on the water rugby we see play by this really experienced team. And another goal coming from several waves into the defense mm. and score from the close side. But this is hard as this is where the forwards need to help the defense because you had here Sophie at the bottom against two current players mm. and it's it's quite hard then to um, manage to keep both of them in yeah, check. Yeah. And especially they, they don't know from where the attack is coming if they switch between ball carriers this fast as Karen does. Mm. And uh, cluster on the, in the middle of the pool Resolved by Akaren. Austria is still wide awake. They, they try to interfere in these fast games, these fast plays. I'm really trying to push out. Ball Nicely recovered done. again by Sabrina. Nice. Very nice. And now they're in the close corner on that current side. Will they manage to get structured enough? And like they need here if they're if they try to establish a routine against the Norwegians, they need to always have at least two people under yeah. and one going up. Like to always be three people underwater. Otherwise, it's just what happened. They yeah. have the forwards of the Norwegians will go for the ball, and will probably get it. But this time the counter attack has been stopped. That's that's a uh, that's very good by the Austrians to to intercept these fast counter attacks to their basket and give them a little bit of time. Yeah, the thing is that the Norwegians don't do any gifts and they don't let the others um, establish a routine, yeah, of like no, a semi-threatening routine yes. in the corner that, that is not happening. You have to be fast yeah. and assertive and yeah. know what you want to do with the ball because they know that before you do. Yeah. And again, we see these uh, relentless attacks in waves on the basket of uh, the Austrian team push and a push and another push another wave going in and uh, Austria is holding up here pretty good in their defense but you see the yeah another goal. Goal. you see the, the, the breaking the these 
the seconds when you, you're just a little bit too slow because you are exhausted, a little bit too uh, no more in the focus channel um, to be to be able to interfere with these fast ball playing uh, current players. Timeout white. So Vienna is taking a breather. How much do we have left on the clock? Like five, five minutes? minutes. About a bit five less minutes, there. I guess. So it's a good time to get, take a timeout. Um, it's one timeout per team per game, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, see, they're just breathing. They're not saying anything. Yes. Just taking the time, breathing. There is not much to say in this situation. They they're, they're playing well. They're yes, playing well. They it's do. just that, again, like um, the male game, uh, the men's game, Molde against um, Vienna. They're playing well. It's just that the others are playing better. Yeah. But it's a very good game on the and it's on a, a high side. level. We we are, we are talking about the Champions Cup because sometimes we get uh, um, uh, comments on our comments here in the live stream. Yeah, but they did a good job. Absolutely, this is high score um, underwater rugby. All these teams um, here playing are very very good teams, but some are uh, above this this very good level. Some are better, yeah. yeah. And Akaren or uh, Colombians like the Orcas or Molde uh, or Malch are above this uh, very good level. Again, uh, Austria in ball possession trying uh, with the start of the, the game uh, trying to get into the half of Akaren stopped, stripped of the ball yes. and again we are at the basket of the Austrians and the Austrian the support was a bit too far. Um, when you play against a team that is so good at reading what you're going to do and that is so fast at reacting, you cannot do a pass, that, like a two meter long pass. You have to yeah. be at the feet. If you're underneath a, a scrum, you have to be at their feet so they can pass underneath. You have to come and grab the ball with your yeah. hands, like help them birth it down <laughs> yeah. towards. Yeah. Um, because it's not possible. Like if you pass, it, there is a high probability they will back get caught. And here we have the current player. She pulled the goalie up and scored down. And uh, the exhaustion now on, on the Austrian side is much higher than on the Akaren side because they, they had to defend all the time and uh, it shows it's just like uh, in, in a matter of uh, 15 minutes um, you, you're losing concentration, you're losing physical strength, you're losing uh, willpower and uh, still pretty good game. They don't give up. Yeah, and the Norwegians are also like, now you could see the player didn't have support in the mm. They're not invincible. They're very good. Very, very, very good. But they also do things sometimes. Like, hmm. <laughs> there should have been another player here. Okay, Vienna def defending. We have like a bit of a scrum just next to the basket, which is a very risky situation and very stressful when you play back or goalie. And one a current player attacking directly the goalie gets pulled up again. And okay, holding on to the basket looks like. Free throw for Vienna. Vienna has gotten quite a fr few free throws for them. So Akaren is falling a bit more. Oh, they passed the ball directly to the player who was in front of a Norwegian. Vienna maintains the possession of the ball. And again, immediately attacked by two Norwegians who recover the ball and pass it to a player who was waiting for it. But the Vienna players are here doing good for checking. Very nicely defended here. This, this attack wave, the, the current player really is under pressure. You just have one minute to go. One minute, and I guess like Vienna has as a goal to not getting wow. scored on again. Okay, the the basket is empty. This is very, very, very risky. Yeah. Okay. That was just like the, 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 uh, they, with a constant pressure on the basket defense, they they create this kind of chaos and and 
um, destroy the structure and then comes a moment like we've seen when the when the basket is empty and the, the ball is in, in a current possession and they just score because they are fast and they control the situation. Yes, and it can also be the fact that when you say I just have 30 seconds left, must not go in and then the goalie like grabbed onto the ball must hold on to it. The thing is, it's not three seconds, it's 30 seconds left. That is a lot of time. Yeah. Ooh, Vienna oh, that was is a nice Denise is attacking the basket and the game is over. Ah. That was that was pretty close. Um, that was 10 seconds too late. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it was at least close to the open side and could have been a chance for uh, Austria to attack closer or to try to score. Mm -hmm. Nice game, very well done. Austria. Um, Spotless performance by Akaren. Yes, and we also have to say that um, I don't know how it is for Akaren. I'm not sure who the players they have here are. But they have some that are quite older players and very experienced national team players um, and world champions and European champions. But um, on the Vienna side, they have players who have been playing for like since summer, mm. playing for four, six months. So for that, for having that many new players, it was a very good game. For some, it's like their second competition. So this is this is really good performance. Um, congratulations, Diana. Congratulations, Akaren, for a very good game yep. and for this victory. So next game coming up uh, is a male team, and uh, it's the Orcas again. Um, and we see again Zurich, so Orcas, Colombia against Zurich from Switzerland. And uh, Switzerland played uh, already uh, today against the Tricot and Berun from the Czech Republic. And it was a 5-0 win for Tricot and Berun. So Zurich uh, probably is exhausted. But uh, as I told Gabriele when he said, oh no, not against the Colombians, I told him, well, it's playing against teams you are not play against every day. And it's something you, you can somehow enjoy, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it. <laughs> At I least from our point of view. <laughs> Definitely. I think Lorena is here and I reckon she would like to comment the men's game. Um, I will go have lunch. Thanks everyone for watching the games and we hope you keep on enjoying the rest. Stay tuned. Today we're playing until uh, 9.30 is the last game and we're pretty much on time so we're not, um, we don't have any delay. Um, yes, and so today, the whole of Saturday until 8 p.m. the last game and we and Sunday all the finals. See so, later. that's called Lorena. Uh, she can also uh, uh, read to the, the Spanish uh, watchers here in the live stream. This is going to be a tough game for Zurich, especially they are only eight players uh, in the water. So uh, even with a full, uh, full team, it would be tough, but not being able to change players uh, that much they have uh, three players on the bench so they are nine sorry they seem to be nine players so they have uh, three players on the bench and six in the water that's tough hey. against the full team of colombians let's see how zurich is uh, dealing with the fast game of the orcas So again, uh, where are you watching from? I guess we have a lot of Colombians now in the live stream. Let me know uh, where are you watching from uh, in Colombia, in Spain. Curious about your uh, the place you are staying and watching. Do you watch alone or in a group? Do you have a, a public viewing with other people? Yeah. Let me know where you are okay so the orcas are ready position series is ready and this is gonna be uh, exciting 
Oh, I, I always watching the stars of the games always give me the chills. I know this moment. And here we go. Colombia in ball possession in the first second. Laverde here on this side. Passing back and forth, orienting. Wow, is this a fast game. Even for me here on the screen, it's almost not possible to follow where the ball right now is. Uh, Suri tries to tackle the Colombian players back and forth. Do they take a breath? I haven't seen this guy coming up uh, any second. Very how fast they turn. And Zurich is keeping up. They uh, try to throw everything they have in the water and try to be in between uh, the basket and the attacks of the Colombians. Hello, Lorena. I'm back. And Hello the score. Everybody. That was the first score of the Colombians. And uh, uh, did you it something have to do four. with you, Lorena? Oh. Here we see the playback uh, of... Uh, you you, you yeah. come into the live stream and Colombia scores. <laughs> which, okay. well, the score <laughs> is, not, is not surprising. But uh, Lorena, good to have you here. Yeah, thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm, I'm happy to have you in the game. Yes. And uh, as you know, we have uh, the Orcas. It's the second game uh, today. They played against... Uh, uh, Firenze Italy. today, mm -hmm. Italy. Uh, today I was following the, the games while I was not here. <laughs> Where have you been? Working, you know, <laughs> at home, <laughs> finishing things. Um, so Zurich is trying, uh, it's also their second game. They tried, uh, they played uh, against Fritton Berun. And uh, Colombia is back in fast counter-attack. It's amazing. It, it looks so effortless how fast they change the side of the pool. And another score because they arrived within seconds on the other side of the defense. We see the replay here was Runes not ready. Three against one, actually, and then oh. they cover the, they stole the basket and no. great pass and just, I mean, it's good that we have this replay because the first time was so quick, so I fast, almost yeah. couldn't see it. Yeah. So Zurich, ball possession, stopped in the middle, snatched the, the Colombian snatched the ball away. Oh, no way. Sorry, that was loud for you, but that was a throw. That, if you see the replay, we have to see that replay. Look at 90. this. He snatched the ball Replayer away, passed it through his terrible. colleague. He goes oh. on a fast forward and throws the ball. That's very impressive. Who? Javier? Yes. What is Javier? You couldn't see. Um, Nicely done. Zurich now tries to go forward, do not the same mistake again, but it's uh, almost impossible for them to keep up any structure against this amazing fast back and forth of the Colombians. They are like a, a ants, like that, just crawling through the water. Ants. Ants, yeah, but like like they are everywhere. It's like like you go like into bees. Like bees. Okay, they are <laughs> like bees. Okay, another attack. And we are already on the basket. And it's, you know, Zurich only plays with nine people, so it's it's really it's going tough to be very hard on them. Yeah, them conditionally to, get this to level. keep up the yeah. speed because when you cannot build up the game and you need to just react to the other team game, that's um, that's very very uh, tiring. But they managed to recover the ball, and now they are on the side of uh, Colombia, Piorcas, passing the ball a little bit. Uh, and I think Colombia is just, you know, taking time and waiting. Now they got the ball back. They're passing. And we have, again, a counter attack with two players. The third player is coming behind. They pass. They do this triangular thing. You have three, always one in another position. And they pass back and forward, up and down, right and left. And it's very, very um, effective. Make you dizzy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're on the, on, the yeah. on the goal, you don't know anymore where the ball is. Yeah. So it's a, this, this back and forth passing between them and they don't seem to take a breath. So they stay down for th two, three contacts with the ball to attack. Yes, yes, they, they can stay there. And another score here with the same technique, back and forth. And uh, at one Blue point, number two. defense is so outplayed. They don't know where the ball is anymore. So it's just like a, a, a second. Do we see this goal again? Look how he threw the ball from the distance. It it's went really against the wall against the goalkeeper behind him, he didn't even realize. Amazing. It's amazing to see also that the um, quality of the game of the Colombians are so... Um, it's like It's like, not that, but like they look, they seem to be all of on the same 
level of yeah. technique, tactics, speed, condition. You know, in a team that's always at this level, all of them are good. But you know, they're you know better ones, ones that are faster than others, and ones that are stronger than others. And with the Colombians, I have the feeling that they have all the qualities. Like yeah. they could be the one player repeated 12 times. That's yeah. the impression he gives. And and another goal. And what uh, Samuel told us, Go all of his player players are able four. to score. So whoever... Um, well, like at this level, uh, yes, exactly. every player in a yes, team but should but be able. But yeah, it's, let's it's, it's like, a, like on a high level, they don't have specialists. That's what we talked yesterday about. They don't have specialists because all their players are able to do every position. Yeah. And yeah. it's, uh, it's amazing, you see it, how effortlessly they yeah. work together. And whoever is a hold of the ball in whatever position he is, he just executes their attacks. So Zurich is under pressure and uh, it's, it's going to be harder and harder. And another counter-attack, look how th they cannot hold on uh, with their defense. And at least they have a, a goalkeeper on the basket. They still have one, but it's the, 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 the pressure they they put on it's them. It's even fast he in a slow scored. motion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, this Number is really impressive. And this would be like a hard game if you would have 12 or 15 yes. players. Yes, so nine. I with four nine players. Is just Total respect to Switzerland here, uh, the Zurich players, um, how they keep up um, and, and try at least to play their game. The, the interceptions, the, the Colombians even, they, they play against each other here almost because they are so fast. Another attack here on the basket from above, well defended by Zurich, and he's caught the ball away from the Colombian players and returns. Look, it's, it's, it's three players against the, the, the one uh, Swiss, and they recover the ball, and they're attacking from above. Okay, that ball didn't go in, the ball passed, and the, the um, Zurich team recovered it for a brief moment there, but lost it. <laughs> their, their ball control of the Colombians is... is uh, faultless, how they 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 really they really throw and, and swim in a in a pattern Go that is like creating a, 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 yes. a, a structure that controls the water. It's it's they play them dizzy and in Zurich with uh, nine players. White timeout. It's almost impossible. Timeout for White. They earn white it. Timeout. They fight hard. It looks like you, you corrected uh, the pink. Uh, yes. That's a good, yeah, I was at home and, and we could see that every now and then it would get pink, so now you could uh, correct that, so it's great. Again, the first day is always um, yeah, a with bit, a um, Yes, uh, like I said in the beginning, we have to adjust everything uh, because we, we build it and the day before, then we, it's a, it's you, a you cold test start. You test it, then it yeah. works, and it then the moment you exactly. start using it, then it fails. So. It's a cold start, and it's, uh, it's typical for the first day in the Champions Cup. So, yes, amazing uh, uh, game play by, by the Colombians here, and respect to the Swiss team who have uh, a really tough job with nine people in the water against these... Uh, fast swimming pattern weaving Colombians in the water so here we go Switzerland come on oh that was another pass that it, it, this is something you you cannot do against Colombia but you have to because there's they are everywhere so again another counter-attack going in fast first wave didn't succeed well done by the goalkeeper second wave from the open side didn't succeed well done by the same goalkeeper Wow, amazing from... Uh and this attack that we continue to see, uh, well, the, the Colombian called the Envion, which is this attack from the bottom, is one of the subjects we, we learn about like in 2019 when and they uh, came yeah, to the Champions Let's see the Cup. replay, yeah, for a second. And you can see here on the right, because it's, well, no, it's on the other side. Um, so they, they, they analyze, they study this attack from the bottom, uh, biomechanically with a program yeah. and develop the, the very specific technique how you use the vectors of, of uh, pushing the What's goalkeeper, the what the best position underneath the goalie and, and how and it has been really a remarkable job for them and we see that they use that a lot and I'm wondering if they're going to use the peinada well which we'll is this we'll attack they, they didn't from have the to get yeah. here again fast counter break three Colombians one goalkeeper in Zurich the defense is lagging behind, but 
It's just so chaotic. How do you go now? Wow, look how these passes on the back, behind, forward. There's always a player waiting there. It's like they, they, they smell it in the water where the next player is. It's just blind passing back and forth around the Zurich basket, but well defended here and in this first attack from the goalkeeper against three attackers. You see that the same attack again. Yes. It was position, it was, and they practiced that. They get like about 50 centimeters away from the goalie. They wait for the pass, and then they uh, start with the stroke, uh, and seconds then left put of the, game. the ball next to the corner uh, between oh, the angle of the, the of the goal and the, um, the wall. The head goal also there, and then they push with the ball on the floor and with the shoulders up. I mean, pay attention and, and see if uh, I would advise any yes. player to start practicing because it's very effective, it's very good. Um, and again, uh, all the details, uh, we have learned them and uh, we can share the them. Yes, we, I, yeah. Okay, call from the referee and uh, the first half is over. And uh, I think it's uh, barely needed by Zurich to recover. And the Colombians look pretty relaxed, which is not surprising here, because they totally control the game. Zurich, come on. Take a deep breath. We see again uh, this attack, one of these attacks. And it's the, the, the way they move the ball between them and the positioning around the basket is really you see? amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You, so that every step in these attacks is not like there is no coincidence. It's not random. It's no. not random at all. They have repeated in practices um, just to exhaustion, I would say, to sift until it becomes almost a reflex. Um, so here we have again look we have they were about to start uh, a counter attack and this all wow god i mean and they practice all of that even those free throw that you see they also now i'm a little bit confused yeah, that's a replay? replay that's okay. a replay that's that's <laughs> the past we had, we I had thought we were in the half you are already sorry. confused you just started i know i just started that's that's, that's <laughs> bad news <laughs> so sorry i still haven't got enough coffee today um so yes, for those who just uh, uh, started with this game, or probably saw the, the other uh, game against the, uh, the Colombians, please tell us where are you watching from. Yeah, share with us city, in the chat. We are city, uh, your nationality. Uh, if you're watching it alone or uh, together with our people, put questions in the commentary. We'd like to have conversations with you. It's always good to see feedback. And. Uh, Wow, it's Lorena. It's uh, I told it already a lot in the commentary or in the in the comments, but it's so exciting to be back here in the Champions it Cup. It is. It and is it's like too long uh, ago, and it was like yesterday. Yeah, exactly, exactly, really. And I have to apologize because I think I'm a little bit off. <laughs> uh, it has been. I mean, it, it seems like not a long time. So I'm like, yeah, starting to get the rhythm of the Champions Cup, the games, the people. But it's so nice to be able to see everybody. Already yesterday, when we have the talk with uh, Samuel for the academy, and, and now all the teams here, everyone is so excited. Everyone is so happy. And yeah, I just. It's Hello. <laughs> Yes, we're back here in our seats. And I just uh, told, uh, um, well, not just, not just, but uh, how we started here doing the comments, um, I think it's now five years ago, probably, five I or six years. I don't remember. And when we, when we did the first comments all by ourselves for the whole time, I just said we have to talk all the time. <laughs> and that was uh, really an experience. Okay, since then we did the comments together. And uh, yes. We, we train for this, do they? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, we do. Okay, back in the game. Colombia against Zurich, change of the sides. Orca is in blue with a 9-0 lead against uh, Zurich from Switzerland. So Switzerland, take all their air that is left in your lungs and stay down and try to fend off these relentless attacks from the Colombians. Colombians, Orca is in ball possession and slowly building up their speed and it's 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 amazing do you see goal. that one how fast they they can start from from eight. zero position from no movement into this forward attacks like sharks it's like, it's like boom and they're going 
Yeah, there's a question here. Eh, hola, Susana. Hola. Eh, hello, everybody that is there. Um, who is the team that could be uh, opponent uh, to Orcas in this tournament? Well, there's several. I mean, we have Malsch, which is the German camp champion. We have Molde, which is the Norwegian champion. Uh, and still, you know, we haven't seen the, the, the team since over two years. So we don't know what happened at the time. Yes. I know that we, a lot of us couldn't train for a while. But also, I'm, for what I was watching this morning, I mean, also the U.S. team was uh, a surprise. So, you know, um, we have to uh, wait and see, you know, what uh, what team can be if, uh, can cope with this uh, very fast game, very changing game, and... Um, and you, you really can, uh, like my team, uh, I see them uh, on the WhatsApp group right now watching this game, and uh, you can really learn from these these movements and teamwork we see from the Orcas here. And they really move like Orcas here in, in, in this this teamwork back and forth. And it's you, you don't know where they will play, even from our perspective. And bam, the, the goal is there because the, the goalkeeper lost track of the ball and didn't know and from where the attack is coming. I mean, very small, they force very small openings just to put the ball there. Really, um, the the only thing is it's always so crowded with people that's uh, difficult to see yeah. but um but the, the 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 swiss team is doing a very good effort because i mean we see always defending and then eventually the, the the goal happens but they are there they are present and again as you said there's nine people i would dare to say that um Maybe there are three, three, and three. I don't know how, but you know, three per position. So still. And another fast attack on the Swiss basket didn't succeed on the first round, but a second round on the close side was. Uh, and then it's it's so difficult when they attack, and you think he, the one attacking, carrying the ball, is the one trying to score, and he passes on and uh, scores. But ah, didn't count free throw. Ah, tough playing, rough playing. So probably this one didn't count. And it's a free throw against Colombia. Uh, there are a few questions here on the chat. Um, so we'd like to address them both, do you think? <laughs> First do of it, all, do it fast, so I'm back not in the game. going to attend the World Cup in Montreal, sadly. I, I, uh, it would, won't be possible. Then, um, uh, regarding, uh, it's possible to tell Bine that uh, they no, can scroll back? Not no, not until the live stream is on. We cannot uh, replay. So okay. another goal. Um, of the Colombians, and it's it's a repeating pattern, and uh, the, the, the defense zero. by Zurich is breaking a little bit more and more because yeah of the exhaustion. It's simple question of uh, concentration and exhaustion um, to withstand, and the Colombians don't look tired. Look, there is a um, there's a question also by Billy that says, do you think that we will see more European teams adopting the Colombian playstyle? They will try. Well, the thing is, um, I guess that this is. Uh, the year where the, the other teams will see if their, their tactics and technique have been using in the past is still effective against Colombia or how much they have improved in their in their game and if that don't work then they will have to adjust and we have a very nice talk yesterday in the academy one hour uh, where he shares the new uh, training uh, um, tactic or uh, uh, procedure that he's using so uh, if you haven't been able to watch it watch it because I think it's going to revolutionize the, the game. And um, we are here at the basket of the Swiss team. And again, we keep seeing that, you know, the Colombia is, OK, I didn't even see the goal, you see? Well, it's it's a sometimes it's just pixel a little bit complicated. Now we see the replay. They were holding on. And I think the, the, the pass Colombians. Look the bottom of the defender. Sorry, Bob. Yeah, sorry. Continue. The, okay. the, the defenders, the Colombians are not putting that much pressure anymore there. They're just waiting, playing back and forth. They don't go in with everything. They just wait. And it's uh, difficult for Switzerland to keep up, even with this, with this a little bit less paced game of the Colombians in front of their basket. Now Switzerland is going into the Colombian basket, close to it. The ball was stripped out of the arms of the Swiss player. And we have again this fast counter-attack. The switch between defense and attack is, is amazing. Now uh, 
Colombian player lost the ball, which fell directly in the hand of the next player who scored. Goal, blue there. player number 99. All right. Um. So we, we still have, have uh, a little less than four minutes left. Yeah. We have a little have bit of spam here. Yeah, I, I blocked the them already. But, um, um, we have now, we're in the middle. Switzerland is trying to go past, but it's like a wall. And Colombia just recovered the ball in the middle. It's in a counter-attack with three players. On and they're, they're just passed to the side, pass back in the middle, pass back to the other side. Um, it's like jug Joker? How do you say that? Uh, uh, Go! Uh, juggling. You, juggling you player number 11. It's really impressive. And the defender didn't have a chance. And of course, the goalkeeper, you know, and I'm a goalie. And then you can turn around and try to um, see where the ball is going to come. But at that speed, you are reacting to the first movement. And it's already the third, and the ball is inside before you can, you know, realize where it was. So it's yes, really. The, they are the, the Colombians are faster and uh, the, the numbers in the water which is no surprise here are higher so we uh, are immediately oh that was a nice one by the Zurich defender by the goalkeeper he saw the pass on the uh, the close side and uh, the Colombian was a little bit uh, insecure where the ball is and uh, the Swiss player snatched it away nicely done but back again on the Swiss basket and Switzerland is in defense. Colombian player taking it slow from the close side. And they, the, the Colombians can play the ball from every position. So they, even if they turn around like they do here in front of the basket, oh, there was, a, there was no Colombian player. So the magic just broke here in the moment. Um, call from the referee. That was a strange Hard sign game. he made. Yes. Yeah, some rough play. I'm Quite trying to throw. see if the Swiss team is trying to do like a pattern of tactic of everything, but it's just they're just reacting to the to at the game. At of this of point, of I guess Orca you're game. not they're able to to do it other way. Oh, this is a nice pattern. I don't know. Yeah, no, we back. Uh, we saw very. <laughs> no, but uh, I think what we see here is not what they see on the stream. Because sometimes they're not that. Oh no, it's a pixel. Sometimes when it's the pixel, I'm tr having trouble to recognize the position. Okay, Switzerland trying play. here to push forward. Uh, the Swiss player was pushed out of the uh, playing area, and it's a free throw against Switzerland. Let's see. Oh, Look, nicely well, that intercepted. That was a good catch yeah, by the captain of the Swiss team. But still, is he alone against three? Uh, of the one minute, yeah, yeah, so one like minute. Zurich is fighting like the devil here. It's it's amazing where they get the energy from. Yes, I'm very surprised because they're still, you know, keeping up and they're doing the best they can. Uh, you don't see them that they have, been, you know, broken in the spirit. Where you see that the team just completely give up and then no, they're no, not. No, 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 they're not really at all. doing the best they can with the situation. But still, oh, the that pass that's, was that's one of the things of the Colombian. The Colombian don't, don't, don't play much with, with strength and we keep uh, they keep the ball very, very soft in, in the hands. So that's one of the things that maybe you could see that the, the teams that from Europe that are more playing on, on strength could try to use the, the, the fact that they don't, they don't um, secure the ball so much and they try to move it more. But rather than that, and that I wouldn't even see it say that it's a disadvantage, it's just a different type of game. If you're fast enough, you can play like exactly, this. You have to exactly. be fast enough. So seven seconds left, six sevens left, and another score, and uh, that's it. Time is over. And it was a 15 0 goal blue player for and then the Orcas against Zurich. So Lorena, uh, it's good yeah. to have you back uh, and you uh, started with a really uh, exciting game uh, which was not like uh, the same level of the teams but to see the Colombians play is always exciting and uh, congratulations to Switzerland again. Um, amazing uh, performance with nine people 
against yes. the world champion yeah. and the ruling Champions Cup champion. Yeah, exactly. So, next game coming up. We have Triton Baroon from the Czech Republic against Firenze. Both teams the played already. I just heard they had quite a journey here. I don't know if you heard that the, the plane to come here was delayed. So they had to, to, to fly somewhere in Poland, then to have a bus. So they were no all night travel. Yes, yes, yes. I was just talking to Valentina, the captain or trainer of the female Italian team. Poor guy. So, yeah. And they had early this morning already against the, the Orca, the first game. So let's see now. Uh, Triton Barun, the, um, the, the level of, of the teams. The guys who uh, provided me here with this uh, beautiful cold beverage, I have Are to drink. Are they brought to beer again? Yes. I love it. Um, they uh, are, like I already said it in uh, many comments, they are uh, experienced players, physical playing, uh, experienced players, and uh, it will be a tough game for Firenze, but Firenze knows how to play physically. So this is going to be an exciting game. I think advantage is here again on the Triton Baroon side, but let's see what we have in the water then. Um, thank you very much uh, Triton Baroon for the qualifying. I think we don't uh, have problems here for you here. In this, uh, well, we were private. Uh, uh, it's a private tournament, so I think we're able to call it. Uh, Ingo, no, I don't know about the, the streaming, they're working and see if uh, they can be improved. Um, I don't know why they're not. So the question is, Ingo, what is bad? Uh, can you tell us, um, is it the... the I, I think it's that it's fixed though, but yeah, let us know how do you see where you are exactly. All right, referee's getting ready. This is uh, game number 14 here on the first day of the Champions Cup 2022 in Berlin. You see the stuff here on the referee table, okay. watching the game uh, okay. with Teams uh, get ready. smartphone. It's already the 14th game. Yes. Okay, yes, uh, the picture in the water is pixelized. I think uh, we have a little problem with the software. Blue team ready. Uh, we will check it uh, White team ready. as good as we can. I think our technical guys are on it, but it's always like this. Okay, we start the game. Here, uh, Triton Baroon in blue against uh, Firenze in white. Triton Baroon already in ball possession, going for the Italian basket coming from the open side. Firenze now recover the ball on the Tri surface. Triton Baroon also played earlier today yes. against. Um, uh, yeah, Zurich. Zurich okay. Yeah, 15 0 against Zurich. They won. Yes. And Firenze lost against Orcas. Uh, so let's see. I mean, uh, we have now. They're playing on the surface, fighting. I don't There's know how cluster. long. The, yeah, the, the, the uh, referee is going to allow that or just, you know, try to. Just so that the, the, the game flows a little bit more. Ball fell down in the hands of an Italian player going fast forward to the basket. Lost the ball. We didn't see the Czech player coming who is going very fast onto the goalkeeper on the basket. I think that's a score. Yeah, yep. that's a goal. He scored uh, it with his, uh, the goal mass and the, t the speed he brought 13. into this attack. We see this counter attack here again in the replay. He's very well positioned with no defender and he has time to lift the goalkeeper up and score. Yeah, the goalkeeper just, you know, died very uh, late in time, so he couldn't really get a, a When you have a one to one like this, it's better just to try to sit in front of the of the goalie and keep the opponent with your feet. Um, otherwise, yeah, it's just more complicated to hold it. But anyway, we're in the middle now of the field. And Triton Berum has the ball and is already going towards the Italian uh, goalie. They are in the corner and they're passing. I mean, we have one Czech player on this side as well. And 
something happened, apparently pushing without ball. So now there's a free throw for Firenze. Free throw, White, holding. And um, they are in the middle, trying against, to get ready. Ah, no, it's, it's hard, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yes, and, okay, oh, that ball ah, went to the hand. That's it's a pity because in this situation, try to, you know, to advance more uh, in towards the attack and just to losing in the, the free advantage. throw. Yes, yes, to use the ball. So Triton Barun is on the corner on the uh, side of the Italian basket and building up their attacks. From there, players positioned, uh, Barun player is positioned behind the basket. But the defense of Italy, as far as we can see on the close side, is up for it. And they're keeping at least uh, the Triton Barun players away from their own basket. And the next wave comes in from uh, the Czech players another wave and all from the close side we don't see it properly here in detail call from the referee and it's a free throw against Piton Barun white free throw uh, it looks like they're pushing a lot under the, the the goalkeeper without the ball that's why they're you know I understand when you trying to, to position yourself. But when you are in such a good position to attack, you need to be careful not to commit a fall because otherwise, if, if you lose the, 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 the possibility because um, you have a free throw against you by pushing too much without the ball, then that breaks also, even though they recover the ball pretty much, but you cannot build up those waves. So it has to be, you know, um, a little bit more maybe ah, Nicely careful. played here yeah, around very good. the defense. And another score. That was Blue that was textbook like uh, number attack. Ten. going in as three. We see here the replay coming from the close side, playing to the middle, to the open side. No defender there, and uh, the attacker pushed the goalie off the basket and scored. Again in the middle of the pool, uh, we have a cluster. Italy tries to break free and win this uh, close quarter fight. But ball is recovered by Triton Baroon. And we are again in the corner of the Italians. The camera is getting darker again. Triton Baroon definitely is controlling this game uh, here in this first five minutes. Um, another, another score. score. They New goal, uh, number 15. The, 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 the speed and the area, and don't give Italy uh, the, the Italian Time player out much room white. to build up any kind of uh, structure in their own in their own game. So, like you always say, Lorena, Italy is only reacting to this uh, game of Trivium Baroon. Time out from uh, Italy. They uh, need a second to recover. And the Trishan Baroon player we see here are also um, talking about the game, but they have a solid 3 0 lead here in this first half of Champions Cup 2021, game number 14. Um, I was checking the team list for the teams to, to, to see how many players does um, Italy. Triton Berum has 15 players. And uh, that, you know, all to come. Time to out, set over. To a tournament like the Champions Cup, uh, you know, you need to have 15 players because it's three days of, of playing. Uh, it's very even if it's uh, two times ten minutes. The level uh, is so high that it's really uh, going really a lot into to your condition. So if you come with less than that, it's already a big big disadvantage. Um, let me see. Firenze also seems to be with 15 players. Yeah. Yeah, they both have uh, uh, full teams. So Triton uh, now is fighting in the middle of the pool, recover the ball, and we see the same structure. They're going in here, one, two players. That was a good building, pass from one side pressure. to the other, yeah. 
Another I mean, wave coming in. And now they're attacking from the open side, and I think when Blue they goal come, they number up. nine. That went really fast, and they uh, immediately uh, took out the ball again. Yeah. But that was uh, another like these textbook attack. They go really like go in with two first wave, second wave, and build up pressure. And we can see the difference uh, of the tactics if we compare with the game we just saw from uh, Orgas from Colombia. I mean, these two teams play much more on the same technique and tactic and speed. Um, and yeah, I mean, the, the Orga tactic nowadays is really now a Italy, lot uh, different to what we know, what we are uh, used to see in, in Europe. Italy is trying to build up kind of an attack on the Atrician Beirut basket, but uh, didn't succeed. And we have a really fast counterattack that is goes effortlessly through the whole pool till they reach the defense of the basket. And then there is Havoc here on the Italian basket. And put in wave after wave. Nicely played. Back and forth on both sides of the basket until they have the, the break the need. Oh, that ball was behind his back. He played it too easy, this Czech player on the open side, and the Italian player uh, stole the ball away from him. It's not that easy to, uh, to take against the Italian team. They have a lot of experience, and if they have a chance like this to steal away the ball, they do. Pass to the goalkeeper who tries to break free. Loses the ball against the uh, Fritton Perun player on the middle of the pool. And now Firenze tries to break through with one player, but he's all alone against uh, yeah, what a, a wall of uh, Czech players. And because of that, lost the ball. We are now in the Italian basket. They are in the close corner, went up a little bit with the ball. And the Italians just recover it, but they cannot go out. And the, the Czech player just took the ball out of the hands of the Italian player. Now they're attacking again from about and from the side, and the ball is inside. New um, goal, number 13. It's now, it should be like 5-0. Yeah, 5-0 for Triton Maroon. Uh, it's 1 minute and 15 seconds to go from the first half, right? <laughs> yes. No, uh, it's the second half. It's the second half already. Yes. Really? It should be the second no, half. No, no, we no. had a break. No, but we had a timeout. Ah, I yes, think. sorry. God. Well, you really, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, really lose, uh, <laughs> you, you lose the oversight. I'm sorry about that. So they're fighting in the middle. Like two against two players. Now it's three from Firenze. In this kind of situation, it's always better just to leave the, the fighting to one player of your team and then position the, the others around and below uh, because the ball has to fail but that's what you hope for otherwise you have two three players it's printing nothing i mean you can push also another tactic is while one of the players is, is fighting you can push that amount of people away towards the other goalie like the czech players are doing it and now we have the ball fail there was no Italian at the bottom, and it was one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper that um, could hold it. Nevertheless, it's quite healthy, and they're on the close side that we can't really see, and it's another goal. Blue so goal there's a lot of tactics that you can use um, when you have Half certain time. situations that it could help, you know, like like the, the check D that they were fighting two against two, and they start moving the ball with the person toward the... The, the the goalie of the of the Italian team and then eventually the the, the ball fell there was the Czech uh, player there and he could uh, s start the score it was the first wave of the, in the second wave we had the score already so um, I know that for a lot of players this is obviously but we have a lot of maybe family members people that don't understand the game and they're describing and trying to understand that sometimes th something as simple as that but it can have such a big impact and no there's sometimes um, this situation is not considered in some game for, for some teams right the more you can bring the ball towards the opposite side regardless if with people around it or or, or with the ball itself is always uh, better 
So we are in the break, uh, first half break of this uh, game. Czech Republic, Friton Baroon against uh, Firenze from Italy. And it's a tough game for Italy um, against a very solid uh, playing uh, Triton Baru team who knows what they're doing and go in with a lot of strength and, and speed too. They they play textbook, so uh, there's no surprise in their gaming style. What do you mean they play textbook? Well, it's like they, they arrange around uh, the basket. It's it's like a really, it's really straightforward uh, underwater rugby from the textbook, the way we know it in the... Uh, it, it's not like uh, the Colombian style that is more fluent, but Triton plays solid textbook. Positioning around the basket, pushing in, yeah. changing side, 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 uh, looking for an uh, yeah. opening. One of the things that I, I was One not being able to see in the game is like um, when they attack and they come, they are almost above the maybe two meters away and then they go and, and position and go up straight up instead of going up diagonal just to being able, you know, away from the goal when they go up. So, but nevertheless, this is a textbook. I mean, they are just very much on top and very much straight up and down. Um, it's always best to just when you dive up a little bit away from the goalie that you're attacking because then you have a better view and you can, you know, position yourself better. But nevertheless, they're still winning. So it was working for them. And they're controlling the game pretty much. We can see now the, the team players of each uh, team. Blue Triton Berum, white Firenze from Italy. We have now one more second half -time until over. Teams get the ready. half time is over and now they're going to start any minute now. And here we go. We have Triton Berum. Got In to the ball position. first. And uh, Italians now try to stop them before they reach uh, the Italian basket. They are in ball possession, but tackled by Trishan Baroon players. Stopped uh, on the surface. Cluster there, ball is free. Again, Trishan Baroon player tries to break into the half of the Italians on a heavy attack. Forechecking is pretty good now by the Italians. Um, they don't give them the, the chance to get any closer. That was a goal. That, oh, was, that a, was a yeah. That was a mistake by the goalies. Blue I mean, goal, when you have the ball six. so close by, as um, as much as you can, it's much better if the goalie that is going to replace the one that is in position comes from above. Get the shoulders, make sure, and and change. And the goalie that was in position just left. It's you have to do a roll. There's several ty type of techniques to make a, a rolling with the goalies. But it has to be shoulder and shoulder and to be very sure that you don't have a uh, space and they they left the space so the ball went in between the changing um so it's a seven uh, zero lead for triton baroon and we see the same situation when triton baroon is in uh, ball possession like they are right now they break through to the basket of the italians and start raising pressure on the defense with a good ball control that is uh, not undisturbed but uh, well ah, and just to contradict what i'm saying <laughs> the italians uh, <laughs> stole away the ball from Triton baroon and go for the uh, counter attack by themselves so don't listen to me uh, <laughs> what i'm saying was not true so in this case the italians are in the corner but they don't have i mean they 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 don't have a flow in terms of having people in position and keep the ball uh, moving and building up uh, a, uh, the weight. They are just trying to, to keep the ball, but they cannot really create any kind of pressure against the uh, the, the basket of, of the Um I, I think probably they have newer players. Um, some some uh, some are, some, are experience. Newer, some experience you can see that you know the in that matter uh, Triton Berum plays a little bit more together as a team they're more on the water they're in position and with Italy it's not been that that successful and another goal um, 
Blue so goal, repeats itself number five. Over and over. Um, Trijon goes in, puts pressure, really solid ball control. Um, no hassle there, it's just like a matter of fact playing uh, rugby, what I always say about uh, tech players, it's really straightforward uh, underwater rugby. And Italy is uh, struggling with this, with the push they get. It's not that fast the game of uh, the Czech, but it's really consistent in their push forward until they succeed. We're on the surface in the middle of the pool. Ball is dropping down, recovered by a Triton player, and now really fast. Again, contradiction to what I said, really fast going forward through the uh, basket, attacking from above. Really nice defending here from Italy. Ball is on the open side, um, defended again by the defender under the basket. And uh, the Triton Peru player is going up to the surface. Now the goalie was all alone, and there was a score. Um, the the blue goal number 11 the change of the the goalies but one Trishan Barun player was going up to the surface the other one was going down there was no defender no there was uh, a, there was it again was a, a mistake change. in yeah. the goalies yeah it was into the, the exchange and he didn't see the attacker coming no 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 they I mean and they, they left again a gap when they changed so uh, yeah maybe it's one of the the things that we can tell Firenze to to see how they can better do the change uh, of the goalies when they have uh, attackers close by. Um, so, yeah, Ingo, we know we have the uh, bot and we keep uh, blocking it, but it keeps showing up. So, yeah, we'll work on that. Um, uh, back in the game, bots don't bother us. <laughs> Five minutes left from the second half. And it's 9 0 for the Czech team. It's more of a strength uh, game than what we saw before uh, between uh, Portas and, and Switzerland. We have again uh, the Czechs attacking. Let's see if Italy this time can recover. And yeah, great. I mean, they're now trying to. But this, uh, pl the player, that's also very important. The moment uh, you recover the ball, it's very, very important. Normally one of the attackers does it, so the, the defender or the goalie needs to move to receive that pass and, and bring the ball away. If that doesn't happen, then you are like just going up and down in your own defensive uh, tactic. Goal, number four. And that's so, so strenuous. And eventually it can create uh, a mistake and, and goals happen. So. I mean, Italy has been able to recover some of the ball, but what they are not able to is to have this, this continuity on the players being in position on time to bring the ball away. Oh, yeah, uh, there was a uh, um, holding the head. So it's a free throw against uh, Trichon Barun. But probably that would have been a, a free throw advantage white uh, for the Italians holding. in this case. But if you manage to execute a free throw, you can use it as an advantage. Let's see how should it should be an advantage. Doing. That's the idea. Be, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, they made they made it close to the uh, Baroon basket, but they uh, lost the ball right in front of it. They have a very fast counter attack one on one. And now the Italian defense is there. So the Baroon player didn't succeed in scoring. Penalty. No. Yes, penalty. Penalty. Penalty, it looked like when, when I saw when the, when the goalie landed, it looked like the shoulder was a Holding bit lower, I have to admit. Penalty but then there was all these players, as I couldn't see, let's see if we can see the replay. Penalty against Firenze. Um, and, and this is also because it was two or three players from Triton Berum. Teams, and the, please the goalie was all, well leave the playing area. There was Thank two you. other white players helping. But white goalie, please. The, the, the he arrived like late, and that's the problem. When you as a goalie yeah. arrive late and you cannot position, it, it, it can happen that you ready? get with your shoulder because white. of the whole is trying to defend. Let's see. And penalty. The Baroon player is playing with Nayade. Uh, pins. Oh, that was close. Oh, he tried to, to drop the ball behind the head of the Italian player didn't manage, recovered it because the Italian player didn't see it, okay. but now managed from the close side. And 
And the uh, blue goal number referees two. Referees are going to see only if the uh, goalie is, is it's, okay. Uh, all right. Well fought. Yes, uh, especially after the first attack uh, didn't go in. The, the, the goalkeeper was lying on the basket, pretty safe on the basket. So well done and well attacked by the Triton Room player. Remember, you have all the schedules in the official website of the Champions Cup. Let me see. I'm going to look for the uh, link. I'm going to post it here in the, in the um, comments. Chat. In the chat, thank you. You're always welcome, Donella. It's a pleasure to work with you. Thank you. Okay. Italy is in the corner of the Czech Republic, trying to build up. Well, wow, there's a huge cluster there in the middle. Tristan Perun, player comes out really fast. Okay, they are fast, going for the basket of the Italian. Second player coming afterwards, going the second wave and pushes the the ball. Even though he had it in Blue his hands, goal the ball there, number ten. had the ball in his hands. He pushed the ball through the hands of the goalkeeper into the basket. Very nicely done. So it's a 12-0. One minute and 10 seconds left here in the second half of game number 14, Champions Cup 2022 in Berlin. Again, ball falls down. Uh, the attack of uh, Italy into the hands of a uh, Czech Republic player. Nicely defended, intercepted by the defense here of Italy, but tackled immediately by Trudin Brown player. Italy free, play goes forward, stopped by two four checking players in the middle of the pool. And Czech Republic in ball possession. So 35 seconds to go, 12-0 for the Czech team. They are in the next attack. Let's see if they can manage to score before uh, the end of the second half. Italy trying to defend. Um, the ball just fell in the middle. And uh, there's one uh, Czech player trying to get closer. The goal is alone. They pass it with no defender on the other side. But uh, Italy just managed to almost recover the ball. And the next player of the Czech Republic is on top of the goalie of Firenze. But it's the game end of over. the game. game so over. it's safe for well Italy 12-0. I put already the link for the schedule. So, and we have this. And we have uh, the bot back in the. Yeah, I just block it. It's okay. Um, we re block, report, report it, but still. So. Um, you can take a look to the schedule there in the link that I just posted. Remember, time is uh, Central European time. Berlin time, so if you are somewhere else, just go to go to Google, to San Google, <laughs> look for the time converter, and then you can see the, the difference in time. So, Lorena, what is your impression? You saw some games here in this Champions Cup. Uh, do, you, do you think um, the two years pandemic um, changed the way, or, you know, the, the overall impression other teams less um, Prepare, tra prepared, prepared, trained. To the was there a price they paid? I don't see it. Uh, it, it the speed no. of the teams and everything. I'm surprised because I also thought that maybe that would have changed maybe uh, some dynamics because uh, for what I've heard, a lot of teams lost a lot of players during the pandemic. Uh, it has been a, um, a hard... Um, a uh, hard time for uh, not, not just for, for us as, as people but also for the uh, rugby community because um, yeah we also lost some players I mean we have less people coming to the trainings and this we can see overall throughout the, the world and, and more when you have uh, the top teams to see how they could continue training and how even though now we have been playing for at least one one and a half years back huh? i mean when we start playing the end of the 2021 uh middle already during the pandemic i don't know how one how, how was in the rest of the world but i i i don't see 
in this matter, I don't see any impact of the pandemic thinking that the level of rugby went down or that we have only all. teams within people or so. No, I'm, I don't see that. I actually the opposite. I see most of the teams are complete with the 15 players. Um, I'm really surprised that 25 teams managed to come. Just a few cancellations, I think. We have uh, from Turkey, Turkey yeah. and from, yeah. I think it's probably the only oh. cancellation. The UK is well, not here, and France is not here. But they, did they sign up at the beginning? Did they want to come? No, 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 no. But, I mean, because the last champion cup was, was 27 or 2019. In the 2019, yeah, there was two or three more teams. Ah, only. yeah, yeah, with So it's, it's, yeah, quite yes, a, yes. it's quite a big uh, champions cup. And so I'm, I'm really very, very positive, surprised that so many teams could come, that, that they continue training, that they keep up the level and they are just ready to continue. So it's really, I'm happy to see that. I wasn't sure what to expect. Yes, to me honest. too. Um, this, uh, um, I'm really happy to, to see these teams um, up and running like uh, nothing happened. So next uh, game coming up is um, again UC Langen from Germany against uh, the Hammerheads, the female uh, Hammerhead team. This is going to be interesting. Um, we have seen the Hammerheads against uh, Italy with a 5-0 for the Hammerheads. So let's see how they uh, and, uh, can hold up against... Uh, Langen play against Sweden and 1-2-0 before. I was watching the game. Yes. Uh, ah, no, not, yeah, exactly. With each good amount. Okay, we have to start with the challenge of Scandinavian and Finnish. So, um, yeah, 2-0 against Sweden. So let's see how um, how it's going to be. Billy, where are you? That you've had new players after the pandemic. That's great to hear. Um, yeah, trying going back to the commands. Uh, Yes, hopefully, Billy, we are thinking about the same. Uh, we had the chance. Oh, we are already in the game. Sorry, I was looking at the comments. So uh, we are in the game Langen in blue against uh, the uh, New Jersey Hammerheads in white. And Langen is uh, on the attack on the US basket. A little bit dark there. Really good defending. And first score. That was fast. A little bit surprised. I thought uh, US would hold on uh, better. So let's see the scene again. A little bit chaotic. No defense, no goalkeeper. Ball comes from the close side into the open basket. Okay, they lost their defense structure under the very fast attack of the Langen players. So we have uh, one and a half minutes, all not almost not one and a half minutes in uh, the first half. And Langen is leading with 1-0 score against the Hammerhead. In the middle of the pool, the US team didn't succeed to start and enter the German side. Germany is fighting really decisive here, going forward, and uh, is not that much disturbed by the attacks of the Hammerhead. Tackle situation going up on the surface. Now, uh, US team intercepted uh, that ball and they are going forward into the German field. They try at least to, but a stop by the lung and foot checking. And fast counter attack from Langen to uh, conquer the ball in the middle of the pool. Defense of the Hammerheads are getting more organized now. And we're on the open side. Langen player tries to find his uh, colleagues to open up the pressure. 
Really good defending here. And yes, very nicely done by the Hammerheads. Going forward, going on with speed. Three players going to the Langen basket, but stopped. I missed the one goal. Yes, it was uh, in the first uh, minute, one and a half minutes in the first. Yeah, uh, this is one of the tactics of. of uh, uh, Hammerhead still in ball attack, possession yep. in front of the German basket. And uh, the Langen players really try to strip this player off the ball. When they go up to the surface, they don't succeed that easy. Langen in the ball possession. One player against two in the middle of the pool, so one German player against two S players. And uh, another German player takes over the ball, goes for the basket, or gets hold of the goalkeeper. But there is a really tight cluster now around uh, the basket. And uh, we have two players in a tackle situation up to the surface. German player gets the ball out of it. Passing on and another attack on the US basket. Already players in position. Oh, that's a good work from the defender uh, of the Hammerheads that recovered that ball, that pass that the Langen uh, player missed. So, um, the, drill, the ball just fell. Okay. Hammerheads are still in possession of the ball, but they cannot, I mean, pass the middle uh, the German team has been doing a good for checking but now they're they're already on the half uh, <laughs> of Langen let's see I mean we see that the uh, the German team is doing a, a very good um, uh, got, uh, work job uh, by, by in every uh, inch of the, of the of the pool just to stop the attack but uh, the white team is still in possession and they're trying to get closer, but it's not really uh, a big danger for for the German team. Now they are a lot on the surface. Let's see uh, which team can recover the ball and see. Well, okay, the Germans recover and they're trying to start a counter attack. And uh, it's two against two passing. And uh, the hammer has recovered the ball, and now they go a lot to the surface, right? Before they continue fighting uh, or co continue the the, the the attack. And now we're back and forward a little bit. Now the Germans recover, and they're trying to get closer to the goal, but. The, the Hammerheads also do a, a good job just blocking that attack so that they cannot come with the speed and momentum and tempo, but they have to build it up from the corner, like they're trying to do now, but they're fighting. Now we have one of the German teams attacking from above with the goalie. The ball is there right underneath the goalie. And uh, the US team just recover the ball, is trying to get it away. But uh, the German girls are really fighting in every uh, every little uh, <laughs> uh, meter in the in the uh, in the pool. Nevertheless, they attack. Okay, better here. Lorena <laughs> has Pardon. to put the microphone closer to her mouth, to her beautiful okay. mouth. Okay, concentrate on the game. I try to. Um. I lost track what I was saying. So I, I go for it. Um, okay, we have a uh, back and forth here and uh, now Good in the middle down. of the pool. Langen has the ball, ball the control the on the surface. The oh, uh, end of the first Holding. half, sorry. Yeah, three minutes now in between. The break. And, um, so the, the, the no. surprise? Hmm? No, no, still uh, that's it playing, the free throw for the Hammerhead. Ah, there was not a sign of the referee. Huh, doesn't look like. Yeah. Ah no, he's only holding his hands. I'm sorry. And I saw the three minutes. <laughs> it was just Yeah, it was perfect. the timing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now the Hammerheads are trying to get under the basket of Langen and establish uh, their attack. And it's pretty good there. Langen is tackling away the player from the Hammerheads. Stripper of the ball. Langen in ball possession. And already a fast break out of this close fight situation in front of the basket 
that's stopped in the middle by the four checking. Hammerheads are now in ball possession. Very good play here. The Hammerheads are really getting into the game now after this surprise attack in the beginning and this first score. They are now uh, putting a little bit pressure here in the direction of Langen. And again, Langen um, stripped the ball out of the arm of a uh, Hammerhead player. And uh, we're back again on the, the basket of uh, Langen. So uh, this is a change here in the overall game that uh, the Hammerheads are now um, in a good ball possessioning time and uh, the lead of 1-0 is not that solid for Langen to be comfortable in this situation with uh, these fast attacks of the Hammerheads. So I haven't seen yet uh, one of these... Uh, dangerous attacks on the basket, but if you keep up the pressure long enough, it could be possible. But Langen is in ball possession in the middle of the pool, working its way into the half of the Hammerhead. And the Hammerhead defense, uh, the four checking defense is pretty good. You know, yep. you really see they're concentrated and they uh, want to go here. And they want to learn from the, from the beginning surprise mistakes against Langen. Langen just recovered the ball is three meters away from the goalie but uh, cannot really advance closer now now we have two blue players trying to get closer passing the um, US team is in position is 27 seconds let's see if they can hold it and um, keep the score the way it is because Langen is attacking over the close side but uh, Hammerhead is the Defending quite good, and the German team cannot build up the uh, the, the strength and the weight that that would be maybe um, necessary to, to force a mistake into the defense of yeah. the Hammerhead. It says three, two, one, zero, and now it's the three minutes of half time, and it's one zero. And well played by Langen. Um, no surprise here, but also very well played by the Hammerheads after the first uh, surprise. They caught the goal um, into the, in the first uh, one and a half minutes. And then really they switched uh, uh, a switch and uh, really going now into more offense, control the ball better and keep it um, in the half of Langen. I'm impressed by the game of uh, the Hammerheads here. Because normally if you catch a goal right in the first minute, you're a little bit shocked and, and you try to defend more. But the contrary happened here with the Hammerheads. They switched into defense, into offense mode. And, uh, well, attack is the best defense. So they kept the ball in the part of the Langen team. Nicely done. And I'm really curious uh, to see the second half now <laughs> with the both teams discussing what happened in the first half and how they will react and adapt to deal with the situation, both Langen and, and the Hammerhead. By, by one zero and by the game we just saw, anything is possible, actually. Um, because even though I would say that Langen uh, had a little bit of more control over the game, but uh, they were not completely dominant on it. So no, no. They had more attacks into the their basket of the Hammerhead, but uh, the Hammerheads have been de uh, defending uh, very good, so you uh, know, uh, everything this is possible. This for me, this game right now is open. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the dominant team is Langen, yes. But uh, I saw a change in the second half uh, in, the, in the overall <laughs> gameplay of the Hammerhead. In the second half? Uh, in the, in the the yeah, in, in the, the second half, half of the first half. <laughs> yes, exactly. So in the, in the, in the after they caught the goal and they had to recover from that. And um, this is, this is going to be an interesting uh, second half here. Um, game number 15, Champions Cup 2022 in Berlin. So, 40 seconds left. left in the break. Both teams will be recovering. So for those who don't know what we've just seen here, uh, people taping their uh, feet, sometimes if you have the fins on, they uh, rub against uh, the skin, and if the skin is just too soft, uh, soft from the water, you get uh, 
rashes or you, you just blisters blisters and, and then uh, that's painful yeah and you have uh, to play three days with blisters in yes, your feet that's yes that's painful. something you don't want to do <laughs> so nine seconds super curious about the second half now this is going to be a tough game we because have 239 Langen people watching okay. the game hello Get everybody ready. nice to have you on board blue team ready white team ready all right. Ten seconds. So it is four, qu almost quarter past four here in Berlin, Germany. As you can see through the windows, already getting dark. Already. Here we go. Game starts. Hammerheads in ball possession. Lang in the ball possession. Fast change and call from the referee. Free throw for right, the Hammerheads. So right, I couldn't ball. see what happened there. Holding a, a hand, uh, touching uh, the head. The head hand on the head. Or, or in the. No, equipment in the head, the head? Okay. Yeah. okay. Sign us for the head. Okay, so free throw, hammerhead, try to break free. No, intercepted by Langen. Langen comes in with force on the basket of the hammerheads. Now pushing hard, very well defended. Oh, great recover from the ball, uh, and she's trying to keep the the ball open to play, Nicely and the played. next pass, very nice play. You see a flare of Colombian. Tactic in this uh, Colombia yeah. style in the Hammerheads because um, there's a lot of Colombian living in the US that start these teams. So um, it's always interesting to see um, the roots. <laughs> well uh, played and well defended here mm -hmm. by the uh, Hammerheads in front of their basket. Uh, they lost the ball again in the half, and Langen is coming back on the, on the basket of the Hammerheads, coming from uh, the bottom. Trying to push in, stopped by the defense Loop and tackled ball. up to Loop the surface. Ball. ball is falling down, call from the referee. And it's a free throw against yeah. the ball. Yeah, three meters. Choking. Three meters, I mean, yeah, three meters away from the goalie. One, I mean, the, the captain, uh, Steffi, is trying to steal the basket. Uh, she needs to be very careful there because if it's too much pushing without the ball, then it's going to be a fall. But um, we see that they're fighting uh, to recover the ball. I can't see because of all the bubbles. They're on the it's the clusters in the on the surface, two meters away from the goalie. And let's see, the ball was passed back to one of the German players, and that the goalie was too late. There's one German player in the basket, the uh, basket. Was very very close that could have been the second score for germany but uh, great recovering from the uh, girl from the u.s and now they're trying to bring the ball farther away uh, that okay good pass almost was almost lost and they're fighting against in the middle this the ball is going back and forward now we have the white team the u.s trying to approach but She's alone and she's trying now to keep the ball in the game. Nicely done. Yeah, nicely done. We have one attacker on the German goalie, but uh, the defenders uh, intercept that. So we're still about one and a half meters away from the German goalie and there's, you know, back and forth between the white and the blue team, recovering and losing the ball. Uh, let's see. and. What's happening? This was Free a really, th th this was really like an attack we need to see from the Hammerheads if they want to equalize uh, the score. Um, and they have to go in with uh, more numbers to be able to overcome the defense here. But this was the right way. So Langen is uh, really has to look out to hold this 1-0. Uh, on the call from the referee. Um, apparently um, pushing without also holding without ball. So free throw again, three meters away from the Langana uh, basket. You need to be very careful because a small little mistake and the US could score. Um, so Langen recovering the ball and trying to just get away from the uh, half. And, oh, that was a very good recovery from one of the U.S. players. And now they're trying to start a counter-attack. They're stopped in the middle. And uh, again, uh, one of the U.S. players trying. 
But, you know, with every little advance, it has been always like a wall of German players trying to stop, and the same on the opposite. So they're really being very, very effective in intercepting the counterattacks. And so just making it difficult for every team to advance. But now we are again in the half of the German uh, team, and uh, the U.S. is trying to get control and hold of the ball. They lost it again. They're three meters away. The German girls are trying to get farther away from their goalie, but uh, the U.S. team is not making it that easy. They are, they are this still fighting about three meters away from the German uh, half. And now they are in counterattack, three against three, so anything's possible. Good position of the goalie, good position of the defender. They can't see the ball. It's on the close side. Uh, Let's see. Okay, now we have no goalie. That was a little bit dangerous, but uh, the defender was fighting for the ball and I think almost recovered it. Now uh, the US is trying a counter-attack uh, and it's arriving almost alone. One Whoa. on one, gone the, the goalie. Was a goal? A goal! Goal for the Hammerhead! Wow, great! That, that was an amazing one-on-one -on -one situation for one player. The ball in defending. Yeah. I don't know if wow. she was an attacker that was helping the defender or Impressive. defender, but she just, you know, did a counter-attack, was and almost uh, well, held. White she continued and then did a one-on-one -on -one against the, the goalie and White. make the score. I mean, Come really, really good White. job. Impressive. I mean, impressive. Uh, very, uh, very good. Gameplay here. Yeah. And uh, surprising because I wouldn't have thought that one player White. can push through the defense of Langen and even score there. I thought she will go through, wait for her teammates, but she went for it. Maybe that was the, the moment of surprise for the Langen defense too. They didn't uh, Because there was no defender there. It. She yeah. was one on one and, and she, she could have a good grab of the goalie and push it. So time out, yeah, four. Uh, I think the, the score is not right. It's, it's uh, one yeah, one, yeah. exactly, one Here one. Go. <laughs> and uh, it's time out for the white yeah, team, okay. Congratulations, that was uh, impressive and a surprise moment for Langen, I guess. This is, yeah, um, this uh, means that yeah, they have now two... Um, Four minutes left, so still everything is open, yeah. but the team scoring now will win this game, I'm pretty sure. Do you think? Yes, that's my theory. The team that scores normally they win the win. <laughs> but if the other team scores too, you have uh, equalized again. Four minutes, four minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, remember that's that we don't stop the time. If uh, the time goes through well, normally so in a normal um, okay. rugby game, you have two times of 15 minutes, and every time a fall or a score or something happens in the game, the time stop. But now here in the Champions Cup, we have two times 10 minutes. Uh, and the time continues running. So it's not a lot of time, actually. So, so here comes Langen. Now there, you can see uh, they want to know what's happening here, and they want to score. But the Hammerheads, too, they uh, yeah, know what is happening. So both teams will put on everything they have in the last three minutes. So if you have a full team, each player will now about two minutes in the sleeping time. So everyone will give all there is left and put in the water. And Langen is now uh, still in ball possession, but heavily defended uh, and kept a distance from the hammerhead basket. Langen tries to be into the defense from the close side, not possible, coming from the open side from above. They're trying to disorient the, the defense, but until now, hammerheads did a pretty good job to keep them away. Yeah, but it's been dangerous because yep. they are very much on top of the goalie. The goalies are changing good. Look, they they wait for the time, the roll, but now, oh, what happened there? I mean, the, the basket is empty. The basket is empty, where's the ball? And the, the, it's a, very, a lot of chaos. And I think it was a goal. It was a goal, yes, uh, for Germany. Um, Germany is very dangerous because uh, these kind of situations happen. I mean, I, I've seen happening also uh, in, in other teams that the moment they get a score then something fires them up and then they because you, we could see that the Germans were much much more aggressive than just one minute before yep. when they got yep. the score again so uh, 
Yeah. So two minutes left, uh, still enough time. Langen scored here and now Hammerheads are going and they know they have to. They're really putting strength now into it. Okay, and uh, uh, we had a little uh, boom here in the hall. Don't know what happened. Just got a shock, sorry. Okay, and so yeah, we have now uh, Apparently, the T is free throw for Langen. I know oh they're fighting in the middle. Huh. Sorry, if they're in the it, it always looks as the the, yeah. the the referees are holding their hands together yeah, yeah, like I this. Know, I know. It always looks like a sign that they're just no. uh, uh, meditating. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> uh, Langen is just holding on to the ball. Um, they're on the surface, and the Hammerheads desperately try to rip the ball out of the hands. Here, Langen is down on the water again. Time is working for Langen now. Yeah, it's one minute one left, minute. and uh, they minute. are, they will, I mean, Germany won't take any risks right now. They are going to just play the ball, hold the ball. I mean, if the Moesa don't go, they're trying to really be aggressive in the port, taking to recover the ball, Germany is not going to risk it. So they're going to pass the ball around and see if they can have an opening, but they are not going to just go with everything and then maybe lose the ball and have a counter-attack. So now the, 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 the way of playing would be like just be clever, get the, the ball, try to still maybe to attack, but not create any risk situation. And now the ball was lost, but recover again, but Langen. The USA needs to be much more aggressive in recovering the ball because otherwise, Mm, yeah, I mean, now it's 15, 13 seconds. Uh, it's very difficult for them to, you know, get the ball and, and the score back. So it's about holding and just uh, hoping that they don't get a, a sec another goal. Anyway, so it's 2-0 for Langen. Uh, I guess the German team got a little bit of a uh, uh, scare there with the 1-1 one -one and they could recover. We congratulate both teams. Great game. Really um, um, an excellent uh, match. I mean, we both teams were uh, at the same level, and it was a, a great goal by the uh, US team that really recovered the ball in the defending area. And then, oh, what's happened there <laughs> with the uh, streaming? And uh, then make a counter attack and then score against the goal. So it was really, really. Nice to see. And coming up, uh, Miles against Kudeba. Let me write down the score. So we are now in the waiting time. Switching to the next game. Remember, you can see all the schedule in the Champions Cup competition time. I put the link in the comments. Budevala from Sweden against uh, the German champion uh, Malsch. He's trying to see. We already had Budevala. And Marsh also played already yes. today. Right? Uh, match against uh, the Sea Lions, the US team, uh, they did win 1 0. And Udivala against uh, uh, Aqua Quick. And uh, Aqua Quick, I think, won. Uh, one, uh, uh, Aqua Quick 2 0. Okay. So, interesting um, game coming up. Germany against. Uh, it's a really great game from uh, the U.S. Hammerheads. Um, they did really a good job uh, yeah, holding really. uh, uh, Langen uh, uh, in bay and, and from part to part controlling the game and switching the game into their advantage. So it was a close call. Um, but you could see after the 1-1, Langen really decided now we have to 
um, put something in the water and uh, take out uh, the energy packages and uh, they scored and uh, the Hammerheads couldn't turn around uh, in the last two minutes the game in their favor but very well done very well played and I guess we will see a lot more from the Hammerheads in the future okay teams are ready all right Blue ready Quite ready. Malch Udevala. Teams are ready. And here we go. Game starts. Malch in blue, Udevala in white. And we're in the middle of the pool fighting there. You can see ah, Udevala in ball possession. Stopped by Malch in the middle. It's almost the ball didn't move back and forth. Udevala in ball possession again for checking, tackled by Malch player. And again, uh, Udevala tries to break into. So Malch always stops uh, these forward attacks from uh, uh, Udevala, but uh, Udevala cannot really move forward. They're stopped immediately. Uh, but also, Malch doesn't succeed in uh, getting the ball. So now we are in the Malch half. In the corner, in the first attack on the German basket. And uh, the Udivala player is really nesting in here <laughs> in uh, next to the goalkeeper. Malch in ball possession. They recover the ball right out of the attack. And they go forward to attack themselves. But are stopped by Udivala player here. I don't see the ball right now. I think no. the other players don't see it too. Yep. Ah, here, Are here in the, on, the, on the wall side, on the close side. Much player was waiting there for his colleagues to turn up. And uh, Malch is taking their time. There's player waiting in the defense. Dropped the ball right on the player on the bottom, on the open side. And he's turning around and around, passing back and forth. And they're testing now. It really looks they are looking. What are we facing here? And they take their time to organize and go into the offense mode and break the defense of the Swedish players. But uh, no success here yet. Oh, this ball dropped down right in the middle of the hand on the open side of the March player, but immediately there was a Swedish player tackling this player again and uh, stopped it and tackled it up to the surface. So well defended by uh, Sweden here. Yeah, it, it's like the, the game is not as speedy as some other games, right? A little bit like slower somehow. What do you think? Well, yes, it, it's like it, it looks to me like a little bit of probing, like testing um, what do we have here like uh, well let's take a bite and ch chew it a little bit then we know what <laughs> what's going on there who's chewing now <laughs> <laughs> i think Malch is chewing here um but uh Udevala is, is really good in keeping the way here we come oh. from the open side that's that's that a was score. A fantastic yeah. score you could see that was yeah. like a canyon that, yeah. that 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 arm came with the ball and was like oh, you knew it was going to be that, yeah. that was like Number i said there look, look again they yeah. were testing, testing, and here's yeah. the open space, and he goes in yeah. like... Uh, that was, again, a mistake, like, um, yeah. uh, in, the, in the changing of the goalie. Uh, that's, I mean, this is su nice such a, such an art to really change in a way that is very... Uh, eng? How do you say eng? In uh, narrow. Narrow, like yes. Like, yeah, so not to leave a gap really for our ball yeah. when the ball is right there. Uh, anyway, we're in the middle of the, of the pool. Um, Udevala just got the ball back. They're trying to swim. It's 1-0 against them right now, so they need to start. Uh, nicely intercepted here by Malch. Mm. Malch recovered the ball, but it's not been able to leave their uh, area. And they just are yeah, advancing a little bit, you know, um, Slower, they can have to go from one side to side and advance a little bit to the front. They can go through, and now they recover the ball. And it's a counter attack. One match player arrives under the goalie of Udebala, but uh, he's been held by their teammates. That's also a good tactic. 
everyone else was a little bit late but we're right there and we have one match player over the goalie trying to score but um, the ball went up with the players um, and uh, we have three white players from Sweden stopping the one uh, Malsh player now we have two against two and now they are in the surface right above the goalie let's see who is the one recovering the ball and if Malsh can continue uh, creating some tension uh, there well, they're still in the surface, and like, we can't see where the ball is. And uh, it seems okay. Um, the Malish player recovered the ball, tried to attack, was being stopped by one of the Swedish players, and now then surface and passing down. Okay, two players of uh, Malish they got a little bit confused with the referee and almost made a pass uh, to the referee. And I'm surprised that. They, I mean, they go with the ball quite up before they pass it, the match player. I would expect them to pass it much more under water. I have the feeling they bring the ball uh, up uh, when they shoot, and you know what I mean? Um, they're in the, in the corner, and uh, let's see if it's almost half of the team of Sweden and the German team there now the next player from us attacking from above trying to pull up the goalie didn't success sorry amazing defense here from the Swedish team um, to keep this uh, these attacks from much and here yep, uh, score another score but it, it took them quite a while but Luki. nevertheless, I think the, the playing style. Let's let's re let's review this. Let's go again. Oh, that was a nice pass. Yes, he went into the defense, upwards, and pushed down uh, the ball to his waiting teammate. But I think Malch uh, deals much easier with the gameplay of Udivala than they did with the Sea Lions with the US Sea Lions. Well, the Sea Lions again. Call from the referee. Yeah. Hey, tough, hey rough playing and free throw against March. Um, yeah, the Sea Lions also had a little bit of a flair from free Colombian one. game. I, I was yeah. watching the game. Yes. And this is uh, Sweden and German and Germany have uh, very similar S tactics. Uh, so that's, yeah. You know more how to react because you know more, more what to expect from the Colombians. Even though you've seen them play, they have been playing against Colombia in Champions Cup or even in the, in the World Cup. Still, it's so much different that you see it once a year. So every time is kind of new. Number yeah. Another call Number from the referee. He went to the surface. Two minutes forty seconds. I'm warning you. The ball is in the bottom. What happened? Free throw blue. Let's see. Uh, free throw, and it seems to be free, free throw, throw against blues. Udevala. Yeah, uh, we couldn't see what happened. Okay, March is coming in from the close side. And again, th th the defense of Udevala is really massive. So you see these, these clusters building up of defenders and attackers. And it's uh, it's really like hard bodily work to to drill through these defense walls of Uriwala and uh, Malch really has to work here. Okay, can you hear us now again? I mean, because I think Wolf had forgotten to put up the the microphone or his microphone, but let us know um, if you can here as well. Another attack yeah. from uh, above, tackled away by Udevala. 2-0 lead for Malch and one and a half minutes left in this first half. Free throw Free again. Free throw, blue. And uh, uh, the Malch player stole the defense position around the basket of uh, <laughs> Udevala. He's yes, wrapped he's around, around, right around, like to do like... Uh, uh, there's a lot of chaos created now through for this uh, moment. Exchanging, Udeval does a good job, still proper exchange of the, the goalkeepers. And it's hard work. You can see it's hard work. It's not effortlessly uh, how Malch is, is getting its goals. And um, 
I can imagine if Udavala has a chance to break out of these uh, attacking patterns of Mulch, they could be dangerous on the Mulch um, basket too. Very nice. Again, the same situation as before. Player goes up above the uh, goalkeeper and pushes the ball down to his teammates waiting down there. Mm, fast playing of Mulch into the arms. A good uh, job from Sweden. Yeah. I mean, they're defending really well. It's 15 seconds left. It's 2 0 still for Mars. Mars is dominating the game, even though at the beginning was a little bit like slower in a way, but now uh, they have to speed up. <laughs> um. Yeah, Mars is definitely in control of this game, but nevertheless, Udevala does Paul a good Stein. job and it do not make it easy. So it's break in the first half. And. Uh, 2 see relief from Malch. This is difficult, uh, as we've seen in the first half for Udevala from Sweden to turn this game around because uh, Malch is very good in defending their goal, yeah, even if Udevala, Udevala would decide to throw everything forward. Okay, we have a warm-up session here. <laughs> Dancing is, is the that? best, uh, best uh, warm-up session you can have. <laughs> and having fun, too. Which team is that? <laughs> Not sure. Australia, I see. Like. Yeah, like. um. So, like I said, uh, Mulch uh, is a really good defending team, and even if Uruguay now decides to throw everything in the water <laughs> and uh, decide. We don't have to uh, uh, lose, we, we will not lose anything because we are already two goals behind. We can throw everything and risk catching another goal. Even then it will be difficult for... Yeah, at this level, at 2-0, yes. it's, it's, I mean, one team is still, yeah. even in your head, you know. Um, when you have 2-0, I think it's... Uh, yeah, and it's, let, we're talking about Malch being even in the best perspective from uh, uh, Udevala. Malch being in defense under attack by Udevala, it's Malch in defense, so it's not that easy to break up their uh, defense. So, yes, Udevala has to go forward, has to turn the, the game around, but it will be very difficult for them. So it will be interesting. Oh, yep. interesting, yeah, what Billy, Billy is yes, like yes, yes, yes. Uh, this is something we see in the Champions Cup too. We have the national um, masters. They're the best team of their nation. And uh, they face another team that uh, they are just, uh, well, it's not easy for March. They are not, uh, Uri is not described by March in this game. But uh, March is controlling. Yep. Yes. So looking forward for the second half and uh, see what uh, tactics Sweden will get in the water. You think to change things around to see if they can I be a little more in control of the ball? Like I said, uh, they, they have nothing to lose. They, if they just, if they play the second half as they did the first, they lost because they will be in defense all the time. Probably not to score again. So they, if they try to go forward, probably they catch another goal, but they get a chance to score themselves, so it's uh Blue ready. Yes, and also 2-0 against Malch. White That's ready. a great score, actually. Malch yeah, is for the first one of the yeah, yeah. top teams top here. Top teams not in Germany and then um, also... So, back in the game. And uh, let's see what the teams decided or changed in their tactics. Malch now in possession. See you tomorrow, Billy. Thank <laughs> you for watching us. And now they're in the middle trying to attack, but taking their time. Okay, waiting that the rest of the team is approaching. Now they're in the close corner. The time is ticking for, uh, that is working for Malch, so they don't have to prove yeah. anything no, here. No, no, they no. have other they're games in this championship. They're going to do like yeah. what Germans do best in this situation. They're going to control the ball. And wait. They are going, exactly. <laughs> they're going to, if it's a good situation, they might attack, but they won't do any risk and any... So unless yes, yes. Udevala, it's the same like we saw with uh, with the U.S. and Germany before with the girls. When you have in this situation, you have a, 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 a team like 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 the Germans, and you need to start being more more aggressive to bring them out of there. Because uh, if they're in ball control, and yeah. you don't really attack and put all of your all your players in in forward checking, 
Yeah, that's that's what I said. Nothing's going to change. So now we have um, fighting on the ball on still on the Malch side, but you know, no no risk at all. No no nothing with uh, happened there in the middle lot. Malch is still controlling with more, always at least getting to the corner. Now it's coming, trying to attack, but again being very very secure with the ball the open and side. Not, yeah and trying to pass to the other side there was another player and one of the uh, Swedish players really fighting for the ball did a good <laughs> job but lost it and the ball I think is out of the play area should be right because right there is the limit so let's see that it means like a free throw against the uh, yeah, because the ball ah, went yeah, uh, the ball went out of the of the I mean the, the blue players threw holding the ball. without ball but that was an uh, interesting situation how uh, the ball was just like uh, like slippery th th these th sometimes the balls um, develop uh, a certain kind of uh, instant slippery surface and you cannot hold it anymore and, and all the players just uh, fail holding it it's really funny okay um, Udevala is now trying to get into the half of uh, Malch and this one Udevala player is holding on with his life to the ball being ripped <laughs> apart <laughs> by, <laughs> <he's alive. laughs> ripped apart by <laughs> these two Malch players. I don't see where the ball is now. It's on the surface. If it's still the same with the other player. The player has it it's still. The white player wow. from Sweden has it. And uh, the problem when you have something like this, it's also these clusters play for Malch. Because then yeah. you are there on the surface, the ball is out of the game, nothing's going to happen. So in this situation, if I would be Sweden, Probably Without just ball. let it go. Right twice that the ball is in the flow. White team. And then free throw. Otherwise, you're fighting there and. Call from the referee above. It's a free throw against. Marsh. Marsh again. And we couldn't see why. So and Udevala is coming in. Once against five or four. And we have one wrap around. They want to do the Marla. If his guy, the number eight, gets the ball. The Swedish yeah, are like great. They created that <laughs> attack. We had a lot of, of talking about that uh, technique the last Champions Cup, um, where they wrap around and then they push up the goalie with the knee and the arm. So it's very, very dangerous. The Colombians also have uh, practiced that attack very much, uh, but normally you see it a lot more from, from Sweden, I believe, like Nor Norway sometimes. But great defense. Uh, by Malch, and you can see that they are really holding the Udevala players away, and it's not really a, a big risk for them. So now Malch is in possession, and they are trying to come towards the half of Sweden. There's now three blue players from Germany arriving, and we have the Udevala players really fighting hard to create some. Uh, chaos so that the Germans lose the ball and they can recover it. Um, they're on the close side, so it's a little bit blocked uh, the side by the goalie. We can see now they're in the surface plane. And there we have now one of the uh, Malsh players trying to attack, but it was tackled away by one of the Swedish players. They went up again and they are just uh, on top of the of the goalie, the goalie just recovered the ball, and now we have three players from uh, Sweden trying to recover in the corner. Uh, this is a little bit tricky because that means the goalie is there in the surface, and um, if there's something going on now, you see Malch uh, blocked the basket, stole the basket, so the Swedish team needs to recover the ball, otherwise. It's very dangerous. And it's it's like we said, um, Udevala does its best to to break up the 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 defense and go into the game of uh, into the game area of March. But uh, it's it's so difficult against an experienced team like March, who are really playing the game of defense and keeping it up. More in front of you. Sorry, we are just here uh, with the microphone. I think everybody can hear me. I think. Yeah, better. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, a tough, a tough game, uh, and uh, much has nothing to do than uh, keeping control of the ball 
and these clusters we see right now on the surface are working in favor of March to finish this game in the next four minutes. Number 18, two minutes. Uh, with a win of 2-0, they don't have to exhaust themselves. Um, they can uh, check out the possibility of scoring, but they don't have to go in as hard as Ude Valaya yeah. to play through. So, March and Buffer Session on the surface, coming down. Player on the open side. Ball is on the open side on the players. And he tries to fend off the defense, passes into the open uh, area in front of the basket. And another attack. It's just a uh, ruse, and uh, the real attack comes from the open side under the basket. Same system here, open side, player is uh, getting over the head of the goalkeeper. And there is always a match player waiting on, on one side or the other, oh and the score again. Oh, yeah. okay. That was a good attack. Uh, Goal, blue team. And it's, it, it's, it's really like they are uh, building pressure, pressure, but not with speed, but with presence. Yes, and then yes, they, they it's push like a predator. Right? Yeah, yeah, right, but it's in the how do you, you call it when you when you pull like something this. together and it's getting tighter Don't and tighter, like and they just pressurize it, pressurize it until it poops up, and they are just like bursting the defense. It's, yeah. it's impressive 13, yeah. how they are waiting just there uh, until they they get this spot to punch in the ball. So 3-0 for Malz, two minutes to go, but a great game by uh, Ude Bala. Um, they really... Uh oh, we have a penalty for Udala. Sorry, we didn't see that. There's a penalty uh, counting okay. down. Okay, yeah, so we sometimes the sign of the of the referees are not that clear, I have to say. I mean, I can tell in which direction the free throw goes, but nothing else. Again, a cluster uh, on the surface in the middle of the pool. Because Malch holds on to the ball and Udivala is desperately trying to rip the ball out of Blue the hands of the March players. Call from the referee, free throw against Udivala. One and a half minutes left in the second half. And uh, not uh, hoping for a miracle here, but uh, Udivala would need one if they Come on, would be able to turn around. Miracle. Exactly. Oh. Yeah, well, well Three goals magic. within a minute. Oh. That free throw White against Malch. White team, free throw. White team, free throw. Well, Magic can do a lot of things, but I think even Magic would not be able to turn this game around uh, in favor of Udivala in the last 50 seconds. So remember, you have the schedule in the website of the Champions Cup, the last 40 seconds, and coming up is Aqua Creek against the Sea Lions. Um, flying po pockets. Denmark. We Denmark. sadly we uh, don't hear the referee. You do, but we don't. Um, uh, we have to change that uh, at least uh, tomorrow. But right now we have no connection to the referee table, and we don't hear them. You do, so uh, you know more than we do. <laughs> All right, 17, 15 seconds. This game is over. Udivala. Nope. That almost looked like a last attack stopped by March. Yes. Uh, well done by Udivala. And uh, proper played by Malch. And game, game is, over. is over. And then coming up. Aqua Quick from Denmark against the uh, Sea Lions from the US. This is going to be interesting. You think? Yes, this Why? is going to be interesting. Tell me your thoughts. Well, Aqua Quick uh, played um, against Urevala, and uh, I think it was a 2-0. They lost. They won. They won. Okay. Aqua Quick uh, won. And <laughs> it will be interesting to see the, the different styles of these team uh, clashing together in the water because the, the Sea Lions played this very uh, fast, aggressive game 
They played against March earlier today, right? And they lost 1-0. Yes. I'm looking for that. That was yes, exactly. That was really... That was an impressive game uh, um, from the Sea Lions. Yeah. And so I'm curious how they, how Aqua Greek uh, is going to deal with these um, really yeah, fast-moving... Um, I say aggressive, and I mean it again in a good way. Aggressive play style of the Sea Lions and how Aqua Greek uh, will deal with it. So it's really funny to be here in the Champions Cup Hall because when the, when the teams come in, we have the not the next game, but the game after that. And uh, there's uh, for seconds, within seconds, the whole entrance area is like a beehive. And it's super loud. And uh, when everybody is in, in the changing cabins, it's like BAM! And it's quiet again. And it's the uh, same uh, on, the, on the way back. What are you talking about? So when people come in here in the entrance area, it's yeah. super loud suddenly, and, and then they leave again in the changing area, and it's quite again. Yeah. So it's, it's uh, yeah. Okay, here we see the lineup of uh, Denmark, Aqua Quick, and uh, New York Sea Lions, um, the players. So both teams have a full team. And, ah, I couldn't, I, I couldn't uh, say which team has the, the the advantage here. Yeah, me neither. I mean I just seen the, the Sea Lions once I got quick I, I couldn't see the game before so But interesting. They are two different games. They yeah, are more like uh, more Colombian style against more Scandinavian style. Nordic style, Nordic yes. Style, yeah. yes. So it's interesting already it's, it's nice to see that the Champions Cup have grown so much. I mean twenty years ago it was mostly European team, yes. so we were playing all pretty much the same technique and tactic. Um, and now that we have all these nations coming up, and we have a lot of Colombian that immigrates, it's very funny yes. because a, a German went to Colombia like 30 years ago and brought the sport, and the sport really flourished there. And a lot of uh, Colombians that went all across the world to Spain, imagine back to, to <laughs> Europe, to the US, to Australia, to Canada, they all started running um, teams because yes. they couldn't live without the sport. And so we have all these new nations with more the Colombian style and the older ones, the European ones, with more the, the, the Nordic, uh, German, and, and how we saw the, style. the, the styles evolving yeah, through the speed, you know, the, the, the equipment, the fins, um, the, the, the whole setup. Um, we, the, if you would uh, watch uh, Champions Cup 10 years ago, it would be a totally different get kind it, of get speed. It, and and speed. Yes, get yes. It, get it. And the, the way you play, the way you attack, the new techniques coming up, um, especially in an area like uh, Molde, who developed the sport uh, for a long time, and now from Colombians who set the pace in the, what, what is uh, uh, a way to play, a new way to play, and to present it here in the Champions Cup. It's amazing to see how the sport still has this potential to develop and, and, and change. And they had to develop a different game because they are physically uh, different from, from yeah. the Nordic and the German. Yes. So they cannot go with the strength and the size, even though they put up a lot of weight in muscles the last years. But they had to develop a different uh, kind of game. But, but the interesting thing that uh, uh, Samuel, the head coach of the Colombians, uh, found out in one of the, or told us in the Underwater Academy, um, uh, he was telling the weight is also a very decisive factor. So we have to put yep. more weight in the water because if a molly goes in the water, they have... Uh, 500 kilos. 500 and kilos. And 300 uh, kilos of the Colombians. Yeah, so they have less, half a team. Yeah. less <laughs> weight to put into the attacks. And this makes a, a difference if you are attacking a goalkeeper <laughs> and you weight uh, 200 kilos or if you weight... Uh, uh, 200 yeah. kilos. Yeah. yeah, but <laughs> let's, let's just say a big Bigger difference. It, it, makes a big, it makes a big difference. <laughs> Yeah. And this is uh, interesting, these factors, you don't have to, you have to put weight on to really play in the high league. Uh, might it be muscles or might it be a, a, a mix of muscle and, and just body fat. Um, none of these Colombian players is uh, not <laughs> able to be fast and, and strong, but uh, they are not, not all of them are this lean that they have been. In the no, last no, no. years, they like they Samuel, of, uh, yeah, uh, weight training. Samuel training. has been uh, not looking like me, not thin like me, but he has not been this this bulk of a, of a man, and now he's really like a 
grow. It's really, like we Chan would say, a <laughs> fuck. Okay, I, I don't know so how to translate it into English. All Danish people and US people prepare to see, to uh, cheer for your teams. Share with us, tell us our, your thoughts, questions, um, constructive critique. We are open for that too, but do it in a loving, caring way. Hey, Lucas, you wrote a uh, welcome to the uh, live stream and the comments, and you wrote, mmm. <laughs> so either that means you are eating something really nice and you're enjoying the moment like chocolate, and it's like, mmm. Or you're uh, saying, I don't think so. So please share your thoughts uh, in the comments. We would like to uh, uh, answer with them. Yeah, that's. I mean, we when we, ne we need to, to kill the time, so we need to talk about our thoughts. And our no thought problem. is just well, an opinion. No problem. Right? It's just an opinion that is not uh, right or wrong there. Yes, and we had a, a quick uh, uh, underwater rugby academy talk with uh, Samuel Gaviria, the head coach of the uh, Colombians of the Orcas. Uh, yesterday, you can still watch it on the I'm Underwater sorry, Rugby Academy Facebook side. Uh, it's still there. Um, it was about critical uh, problem solving and thinking in underwater rugby. So how you okay. make your decisions and how come how you come to building the the tools to create the best way to solve a problem for yourself and, and for within the team. The team. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, here we start the game. Sea Lions in uh, white against Aqua Quick uh, from Denmark in blue and uh, Sea Lions in US. Very curious. Uh, sea Lions are. Huh? We don't see where the ball is. Sea Lions are in defense Why position. White free throw. It's on the other half and the free throw. throw for the Sea Lions in white, um, the US team, and in blue, the Danish team, Aqua Quick. So here, free throw, and here we go. Um, let's see. Aqua Quick in defense, and uh, we see one seal line trying to steal the basket away from uh, the goalie. Oh, so a little bit pushing a wolf here altogether. Holding. And I think I the I referee no, I saw blue it. Blue yeah, I haven't seen the ball holding. yet in this game. Blue free <laughs> uh, really, from my perspective, our perspective, I haven't seen what is what is going on. Really, I just saw them uh, a little bit pushing for the for the goal space, but and now we so don't. So free see throw them. because it was. I think that's for why you mentioned. I mean, there was too much pushing without the ball to to steal the uh, the basket, and so yeah, uh, that was a penalty in terms of uh, fault and down. Uh, it's a, a free throw and still in the middle of the pool they moving on to the u.s basket here we go okay first contact from aqua of aqua quick on the u.s basket from the close side uh, the players getting in position on the open side and the chaotic situation on the close side with the four defenders going in and it's there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one tackling style Grappling for the ball. Aqua Quick players in position. And we, we don't see what happened. The ball is on the surface. The referees are watching closely. Interesting uh, to see this uh, kind of static game uh, here in the beginning. Aqua Quick is blocked out by the sea lions. Uh, now Aqua Quick is trying to get in to the basket area. It's getting uh, more excited here. But immediately the sea lions are blocking the attacks. And we have another cluster drifting up to the surface right above the sea lion basket. Ball is free. Uh, around to the open side of the basket. In front of it, Aqua Quick is uh, attacking. Trying to push into the defense. And, uh, the US player tried to recover here the ball on the, on the surface, but immediately blocked by another Aquavit player. It's, it's a really close, like I said, grappling style. Uh, okay, rough head. playing and free throw against Aquavit. Okay, okay, wait. 
interesting game so far, really. Separate the teams. Um, separate. I need a referee. Because you, you haven't seen a lot separate, of uh, swim, free swimming, but it was, was really close, really like one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one fights. Let me see if break. Did you stop the game? Both referees are called. Probably you hear more if you can give us an update. I think I stopped um, the game, but I'm not sure. The referees are talking. Uh, uh, blue free throw. Both referees are now on the uh, talking to I the referees on the surface. Thank you. Decision taken. We have a blue free throw for attacking the head. Blue free throw. You're welcome in again. Ball is back in the game. Uh, free throw for Aqua Quick. Still in the middle of a pool, Please another call from the referee. The of and it's the referee out. on the surface now. And you behave as well. This is a really staccato game. It, it uh, has a wide uh, time. Oh, thank you. Attacking for the hack. Uh, for the head. Out. Time out. So really, the the, the 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 whole game hasn't found its flow yet, and uh, timeout for White. Interesting. Uh, a little bit irritating this game so far it's because nothing really moved. It was like, uh, and I, uh, even from my yeah, perspective, the, the camera perspective is always the easier perspective to to see the ball. But even from our perspective, I. I didn't have an overview what's really going on here. What do you mean? Sorry, I was well, away for a minute. It was a stop and go game with a lot of close tackling fights and you didn't see much movement. It was really like a, it was a, a move with the ball from a half a meter and stopped again and, and again a, a plus the tackle. It you know, yeah. it, 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 it I understand. Like there are some games that look like yeah. you have like like uh, the hand dremsing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's hand dremsing. But it didn't. What is hand dremsing in English? Uh, hand break. Okay. You know, in the we car. We have a blue free throw. Anyway, like like a uh, stop and go. Okay, aqua quick and another free throw. Which is pretty close. I think they have to go a little bit farther away from the US basket. Hmm. There we go. Free throw. And uh, US players try to interfere. At least they managed to push Aquaric players a little bit farther back from their half uh, into the middle. And now the ball carrier Aquaric player is uh, breaking free, going forward. And tries to attack from the corner, now from the middle of the pool into this uh, melee <laughs> of uh, attack, pushing Holding without ball and another the free throw. And a wide free throw. Really strange game. Holding for the, the sea lion. Well, it's more strength than, than swimming, and we haven't seen a lot of swimming and moving, moving of the ball. So, yeah. Let's see. Okay. We have a warning then they start the free throw going to the back and then uh, in the surface and then uh, for the uh, the forward. And then they are building up in the corner, the sea lions. And then one is waiting. That's fascinating because we see we it's fascinating because we saw the sea lions before and it, they totally play different, but you always can only play the game if the other team lets you play the game mm. they, they they like we like not if Lisa they let you if you successfully no, manage to put your your, your if you can't play your game but, but look at this again it's again uh, a cluster on the circle it's a really it's like all the time has been like this yes 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 Strangle, well let's see if the if the referees can, because the, the referees try to stop that kind of game of cluster and just, you know, all the time, blocking all the time. But it hasn't been necessary in the game so far because it didn't happen that often and for yeah. that long. But this game, if it's different, maybe they would have to start interrupting uh, the game so that it flows better. Really strange. 
It's an almost, uh, um, we have seven minutes, we have three minutes to go, almost seven minutes over. And not much happens, in my experience. It's a tough game, absolutely. But there is no, almost looks static. Well, not static, but, no, uh, but, but, but they're blocking, because they're blocking themselves um, somehow successfully, you know. Uh, the U.S. has Look, the ball. They, they, yeah. they cannot break free. They're yes, stopped yes, yes. immediately. And we well, but because uh, Denmark is, is really yeah, yeah, defending absolutely. like a wall. But the same uh, uh, accounts for... Uh, yeah, for uh, the other for way, the way around. Yeah, yeah they're know. blocking yeah. each so other in a, in a way that doesn't allow... Look, here again, we're in the middle of the pool. And it's <laughs> it they, no, none of them allows the other team to move forward. It's, it's really... Yeah, but also... Here we go. That's, that's the first. Uh, that's a good attack now. What? Because also maybe the players, uh, we see a few times, I mean, the player had the ball, it was an open ball, and he needed just uh, another partner to, to pass it, and that the, 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 the player was missing to continue the, the game. So let's see, that was risky. For a moment there, the basket was, uh, okay, what happened? Card game. And Ruffing free throw right against free Denmark. Three meters away from the basket. Let's see if Denmark can stop because now the, the Zealand is going to come with everything they have. Nevertheless, you have all the blue team of Denmark there defending. So we have a question, Blocking. quick question. Yes. Bimse 666 uh, asks if you can show it the first or second half. You see it in A or B, so it's game 17A, so it's the first half. With the second half, it will be 70B. Back in the game. Um, it's a little bit more movement, a little bit more flow in the game now. And uh, the Sea Lions can build up a little more of their attack style and fast playing in front of the enemy basket. And they can hold on to the ball. So they, their sequences now are longer attacking. But Denmark is defending very well. Yes, I mean, it's really blocking every yes. player with the ball, and they almost cannot really arrive to the goalie. They're coming again from the close side. And it's interesting because the game I saw earlier with Mars from the Sea Lions was really different. Yes. Um, probably because Mars also, well, not probably, it's just because Mars reacted differently to their tactic. It's just the way it is. Um, anyway, I thought it was going to be a, li a lot more speed and swimming. But uh, right now, who is dominating? No one. It's like no. um, it's, it's a before we were more on the yeah. Sea Lion side, now we are more on the Danish side. And we have a player grabbing the goalie and having another player of uh, Denmark trying to stop him. Now they're on the surface above the goalie. It's 23 seconds left from the first half. And it's free throw for... Look down. quick. Blue Apparently, blue the ball was outside the out play of area. Out out of the water. Water. Yes. Yes. Standing on the edge. So time is up. Blue yeah. Blue Three more seconds to go. Half time. Half time. Yeah, the Colombians okay. leaving. They are being part of the Sea Lions. Um, Soren is Nielsen is asking. Yes, I mean you will see. Um, I mean, in, in general, uh, in Colombians that uh, are part of teams in Canada, in the US, in Spain, in Australia, and they are all living there. And they are expats that started teams there. So they are not bought players from Colombia. They are living in those countries. So, and that we were talking about that earlier today, that uh, the Colombians that uh, emigrate to the countries when they found out that there was no uh, rugby um, they created teams and they spread rugby in, in those countries so i'm i'm like i'm really curious about this second half i couldn't judge or predict what will happen in the second half because I, I think both teams will not be happy with what happened in the first I don't know I mean look if you I mean um, they are both 0-0 so of 
of course you want to score, but normally as a team you are happy you didn't get any score against you that first. And the next thing is see if they can adjust the tactic so that they can move from this uh, situation that we are seeing where no one can really progress on the tactics because the other team hijack the, the attacks, right? Yeah. Um, so I don't know if you know they can be spontaneous and see something is going on with my so my, my prediction would be both teams uh, uh, would try to step up with their game and, and break these these locks they are getting into with the other ones. So difficult to say how that would be possible. Well, I mean, I, I can say for the Hammerheads, it's not the game they wanted to play. I guess after what I've seen them playing against um, March. March. Well, for me, it's like those these tops as we saw is because they were, from my perspective and my experience, they were not really opening the game, and the, the, the next player was not in position. You need to be much faster in passing the ball so that you don't get to those clusters. Uh, so normally you have one player, the next one with the ball, and probably they, they need to pass the ball faster and swim without the ball than swimming with the ball. And they were not doing that. Hmm. And they were Jeez. always being blocked uh, by the other team. So oh, that was <laughs> a, f a false start. Or was he just testing? I that don't was really think. interesting. One, uh, one player from the sea lines was just uh, uh, like he started the game, but he was Jeez, all alone. He was very fast. Okay, here we go. Now it's a real start. Well, Aqua Quick. Uh, not sure who got the ball. Yeah, Aqua Quick. Well, uh, this is more. Uh, yeah, this is more physical, more aggressive. And again, a lock on the surface. You see, both teams want to break uh, uh, with fast playing. But here we go again. We are on the surface, locked up. Let's see. Attack head. What the referees are saying. Uh, uh, we have an attack on the head, throw. and attack then heads. there's a free throw for the Sea Lions, and they do it backwards. I mean, they start facing their field. Um, so now we have uh, the Sea Lions attacking. Uh, the Danish basket, uh, I can't see what the, the ball is like a bob and in the middle they're trying to pass it right and left. Um, still three meters away from the um, Danish basket and trying to swim around, trying to see how to get uh, the wave to build up. And um, and the close side, we have some of the um, attacker from Denmark just trying to block the one that is in position of the ball. The ball just fell close to the referee. And I mean, if they come like one against three blue players oh and trying to behind the... Oh, that was... was really that That was very close. Was I mean, it, it looks... It was already it was, I mean, it will look like... Well, he passed the ball by Why the back home? and... From this perspective, it looked like it could have been going, but it did not. Strat it passed off. around, I think. That was Strat interesting. That was Strat really Strat close. That was really close. And I was almost criticizing, saying, okay, one yes. attacking against three is like a little bit risky. Uh, it's better to, to wait for some teammates to be around to. But I couldn't see what was happening to the ball. Interesting. All right. Uh, it looks like the sea lines are stepping up the pace. That was pretty close and they're uh, oh they're really in masses around the, the basket now but it took too long for the ball to get to them and so they get uh, another attack and sea lines and dominating a little bit more the now, yes huh? they, they are, are more in position they are more pushing through with the technique the saying tactics. this we see aqua quick uh, breaking free but uh, relentlessly stopped by the sea lions. That was holding without ball. Yes. Holding without play. ball, rough. Holding yeah. White free and throw. it's a free throw for holding the sea lions because it was almost throw. a counter attack. And the player was still not in possession of the ball. The ball had been passed, and the Danish uh, player stopped him before the player could get contact with the ball. So that's holding without ball. And 
Uh, let's see if the Sea Lions can. Oh, that was. Okay, three against three is very crowded. That's what I mean. They need to open up the space yes. somehow. Yeah, but they have to go in to, to score. And um, both teams are really. Yeah, yeah it's, it's getting more physical, it's getting more aggressive. And uh, a little bit like frustration you see building up in uh, at least here in the sea lines they because they cannot break open enough space now this will be a chance for the one coming from in the front but he's tackled away immediately yeah i mean the denmark is doing a very good job can you hear me the microphone is yes i hear you okay um but right now, the Sea Lions are the middle. We have been here in this basket for a few minutes now, three, four minutes at least. Now they're in the, in the, on the surface. Mm. The Danish uh, player is in possession, but it's been taken away by the US player. Now the, be the ball fell, it's recovered by uh, Denmark, trying, but the, the US players don't allow the, the player to, to counterattack. There is still fighting in the middle. They went up on the surface. Something happened. Rough, rough game. As a free rainbow. throw against Denmark Light again. Rainbow. I think right now Denmark is quite frustrated <laughs> because they cannot really um, Both teams do are their game. Um, yep. And the Sea Lions are more in control. Um, so now two from the Sea Lions coming from the close side. Um, trying to attack, we have Denmark defending hard, tackling the players again, but the next player with the ball is coming onto the goalie of Denmark. It's all on the close side, so it's difficult to see, um, but the I ball is somewhere there on the other side. This is a re I think it's really a strange game, isn't it? So not well, no, uh, not well before. Right now, no. I mean, yeah, right it's now, it's, uh, the, the, the Sea Lions yeah, are pushing through their game. Yeah. They could find a way to to Attack hijack the, 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 no, 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 the, the, the game of the Danish team that was blocking them because yeah. before they yeah. couldn't and, and they could start breaking free and, and, yeah. and coming closer to the Danish basket. I guess and I'm surprised. I, I'm pr I'm, I, I, my prediction would be now we go into a 0-0 zero zero because this, this, they, the, I don't know, it's four minutes, cannot, it's four minutes and they're pressing, yes, they're yes, pressing, that's yeah, next coming. It's not that much pressure mm. on the basket. Uh, no, I'm not, Look, but it's yeah, always a breaking I know. free. It's always a, 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 a chance. But it's for more than the mark. first half. Yes, it's more than the first half. Yeah. So Akarik is trying now to punch their way um, to the US basket, but it's really difficult for them. Lost the ball uh, before oh they yeah. could go into the danger oh zone. Yeah, but that that's was dangerous, dangerous right now because not control the ball both sides. And, and the goal is not really good into position for the Sea Lions. And this this, this could be a situation uh, that that uh, ends in a, a goal. Not but anymore. But anyway, I, I think yeah, oh that yes. was a goal. Wow. That was a goal. Yeah, good prediction. Wow. Because the goalie was uh, uh, was not me. being. They couldn't really yeah. get because no it, uh, the the Danish player stole the basket and the no the, uh, the goalie could not. Uh, I was looking. Be behind the the ball um, to see because I saw that it was chaos there. Who I would I would really have bet uh, uh, put my my bet on uh, on a zero zero, and uh, after this long pressure time, they the Akron Greek had to withstand on their on their basket going into the offense and scoring was uh, was surprisingly well done here by Akron yeah. Greek. Yeah, yeah, I think they surprised the Sea Lions because again they created a bit of chaos there in the in the basket. That was a mistake from the Sea Lions um, because the um, the Danish player could stall the basket and create a lot of. But uh, th there's two minutes left, so it's this game is not over, and um, the the Hammerheads, um, uh, Sea Lions, sorry, <laughs> Sea Lions. I'm in the U.S. by the wrong team. Blue free throw, no um, I think the Sea Lions will step up their game now and go even with more pressure into the defense. Because same same situation as we discussed a lot before. When you are um, lacking behind one goal and you have two minutes left, you throw everything into the game and try to, to score. But Akrovic is there in the game too. 
And they are now in control of the ball and we are at the US basket. It's interesting really to see how after five, six minutes of the Sea Lions attacking Aqua Quick, how in a counter attack create a little bit of um, chaos a score and now uh, Denmark is in control of the game. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, at this level things can change. Was surprising uh, a moment, I have to admit. Not that I uh, didn't think they couldn't score. And uh, Aqua Quick is still here pushing on the US baskets. And we have kind of these cluster situations again where the ball is locked. Call from White the referee. White free throw, holding. White free throw, holding. And it looks like a free throw. So almost 5.30 in Germany. 44 seconds. So now, Sea Lions, you, you have to uh, burn the water now. Burn the water. Burn the water. Absolutely everything can burn. Yes. Like my heart is burning for you, Lorena. People don't <laughs> care about <laughs> us. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, 35 seconds, um, and it's still this, this not moving game again, and the sea lions will be very frustrated here. Yeah, because they were really in Blue control and they were doing very out. great attacks, and then that, you know, counterattack, very good done by yeah. the Danish team, right? Time out that yeah, that's, that's clever of uh, uh, Blue. So, that's this. This this breaks the, the game flow even more, so uh, we have 35 it's seconds. pretty impossible now for New York to change this. Yeah, I mean that's uh, I mean there's 30 minutes. seconds left. I mean, two minutes for yeah. interfering in the free and it's a clever move from. Uh, uh, and it's a free quick. throw for Aqua Quick. Actually, they have that yeah, yeah, on the wall. So you take you take speed if there would be if there would be a free throw for for uh, the Sea Lions and they just ask for a timeout for the last 30 seconds, okay, yeah, that could, yeah. you know, that could but, happen. But like this, they, they, they actually uh, annihilated the initiative uh, from, from Sea Lions and took out the speed and everything, so they don't have to risk anything anymore. No. Oh, we have uh, yes, no one, two throw. minutes kind of penalty for interference with the, with the free throw. We have a white Thank rainbow. you for the information. Yes, I hope that tomorrow we can hear the referees yes, because I otherwise hope we are in the blind. Okay, so um, last 30 seconds, free throw for Aqua Quick. And um, the Sea Lions are trying to fight fiercely to recover that ball and see if they can do something, but the time is really running away. 15 seconds left, and Aqua Quick is going to hold to that ball with their life and the last breath and everything. Yeah. I would do that. I would do like a, you know, cocoon. <laughs> yeah, just wrap, uh, around, wrap the yourself around. Yeah. Uh, and the game. Wrap around yourself and uh, the, the ball. So, it's a 1-0 win for Aqua Quick. And... Um, Great match. Also very surprising because it, it looked like it uh, could have been the other way around. Yes. I think it uh, will be frustrating um, uh, end of a game for uh, for the Sea Lions. Would be for me. Huh? I, I still cannot wrap around uh, my head uh, around the first half of this game, <coughs> which was no flow at all. But Coming but, uh, up, Akaren against Victoria Sea Dragon. Interesting. Yeah. Norway. That's Australia. Um, the Sea Dragons, you, did you play um, here in, in Berlin, did you play against the Sea Dragons or uh, against no. uh, the, uh, uh, we play the, against orcas. the Orcas? Okay, yeah, Sea Dragons uh, trained tra with us on Tuesday, I guess. So, it's the first time for the Sea Dragons in the Champions Cup, I guess, as far as I remember. I uh, um, think they've been here before. All right. 
I will uh, change and uh, leave you in the good hands of Lisa and what's the name of Jared. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are going to change. See you later. So you don't get bored. <laughs> We are back. We're back. <laughs> so switch of commentators for the next two games so that Wolf and Lorena can have a break. I think Wolf has done almost all the games, except for the ones that we did together. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of talking. So we have Akaden from Norway against the Victoria Sea Dragons from Australia. Both teams have already had one game today. Um, yeah, right? Yep. So it's a group um, with Akaren and uh, Vienna. They played against each other before. In the morning, we had the Victoria Sea, Dragon sea Dragons against Helvetia from Switzerland. So now that's the first time the teams have their second game. And uh, the Sea Dragons beat Helvetia 2-0 this morning and Akaren won against um, Vienna, what was it? 11-0. You're wearing the wrong shirt. I know. Do you need a Melbourne no, it's shirt? It's Fat Shirt Friday. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm the Shout out to the Singapore team. Yeah, yeah. and to the, to the and to lady here. Yes. If you say fat, it's also oily. I'm all oily because I just went to the <laughs> awesome <laughs> massage if you're at the pool. You can go get a massage. Mm. So we've got a few people saying hello in the chat. We've got Bobby and uh, Andre, Ida going to for both teams. Okay, mm -hmm. so Akaren won against Vienna 6 0. It was a very good game. Um, I'm interested to see how this turns out because it's two teams that can be quite fast because the sea dragons no, have I quite a lot of swimmers and they're used to doing a lot of swimming and playing big pools yeah let's see he started Akaren was very fast at the ball very fast Oh, my stream is yellow. Because we're immediately on the Aussie basket. Recovery by the back. I have a bit, bit of fighting for the ball in midfield. And Akaren recovers. Very strong pass. Moving the, ba the ball up and around the basket. I guess Akaren has the ball on the closed referee. corner mm -hmm. of the Australian basket. And they're moving, they have quite 
the far the passes are quite far. Yeah, the big passes. Yeah, and very precise. Oh, this one got kicked away. The Sea Dragons managed to get it off them. Right across the pool now. Okay, support is here. Recover the ball and okay. Support. as they move to the surface and looks like the ball fell and got recovered by Akade. But still they're not really passing those trainers in the midfield. Yeah, some good ball checking from Australia. Mm -hmm. Managed to get to, uh, to Victoria's goal again. Oh, but now you just have a goalie who's not goalie completely covering the basket. Akron setting up nicely around the basket. Right. Okay, call from Rafi. Ooh, that's a penalty for pushing. Free throw, white oh no, free throw. Holding. Yeah. Free throw for the Sea Dragons for pushing at the basket. Ooh. Ooh, that's too bad. <laughs> so the pass I think was aimed at someone who was not there and now we have a bit of a scrum going a bit to the surface again but this time the trainers have someone underneath because the, their first game in the morning they yeah. sometimes were missing a player under the scrums free throw white team ball it out of bounds there are some cryptic messages in the in the chat. I think uh, Bobby or someone, or Jared, needs to explain what the typical Australian shoey is. Because <laughs> I have no shoey idea. Shoey is uh, sculling a drink out of someone's shoe. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I'm not sure that will happen, Bobby. I'm sorry. Free throw, white team. Uh, Maybe if you were here. Holding. Free happen. throw for the Dragonettes uh, for holding without the ball. It's a good game so far. Um, with the yeah, a lot of, ga of play in the in the midfield. Yep. Good pressure from both teams. Good forward checking. Ooh. Good uh, from the back and goalie. On time back at the basket. And Akara doesn't really have a chance. Yeah, Sea Dragons are doing well to set up. Again, yeah. Goalie and goalie and back. And the forwards are doing a good job for checking. And Defending yeah. and keeping the ball from reaching the, the goal. Another scrum just above the basket. It's like Jazz number 25. And the Sea Dragons are going, doing a good job at defending and not leaving the the basket empty and always having some in there. Okay, Akaren comes. Oh, they tried to pass oh. over the basket, but the goalie got goalie it and now it pushed away. And now they've stolen the basket. Ooh. Okay, the goalie is back. Good recovery from Sea Dragons. Akaren has the ball, but the player is by herself. Pass it into the close corner. And the Sea Dragons recover it. I like this game. This is good. That's a good game. Okay, Akan attacking again. Over the Victorian basket. Oh, empty. Ooh, very nice. Oh. Oh, the basket yeah. is empty. Okay. And that's the goal for Akaren, but um, good goal no. and good game till now. Yeah. Goal number Pretty good. I think the goalie might have swum out a bit early, but that's all right. Probably. Yeah, but the, they, they reached yeah. the ball and they kind of stopped. The second goalie could have been there yeah. a bit earlier. But no, it's good sustained pressure from Akaren. Mm -hmm. No, very good. Very good game from both teams so far. Okay, 
Ecke. Yeah, Akari is good at moving the ball around the basket with big passes. Yeah. And like the start down like in the oh. close corner and move it up in the center and back down again on the other side. For a defense is quite tiring. Okay. Good, good recovery there. The Australians, the Australians. Yeah. Australians got the ball. They have people down at different heights. Okay, the scrum moving forward. Mm. Akari recovers the ball. Oh, and see again, they move the ball like they come yeah. from one side, then they go up and pass to the center. Yeah. And the goal, I think it came from the close side, right? Yeah, close side. Go. It's a Very bit hard fast to see. Then. Blue number six. White team, timeout. It's a good game, and I, I feel like um, Akadem is not struggling, but has to do more work than they did against Vienna. Uh, so is it the first game of the day you notice the difference in level more? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, so the Sea Dragons took a timeout. I guess for a breather. Don't know if the coach is telling them something. Oh, they're playing well. they're playing well. Yeah, I think going in there were Obviously, Akaran's quite a strong team. Um, so, you know, it was going to be a test for the Sea Dragons. Um, but I think they're doing, you know, what they wanted to do and they're playing really well so far. So, we'll see how they go. Mm. Like, I kind of know what they do. They're one of the best teams, like the yeah. top three. And um, they're precise, they're very good at seeing what's going to happen. They're very good at reading the games, they're very experienced players, top level in the world. And um, you cannot do mistakes in front of them. And I think that what the Sea Dragons are doing is like they're doing their best and not let themselves be panicked. Yeah. The worst you can do in a game like that, where you know that the other team is way stronger than you, is panic and be like, oh no, I'm going to mm. lose the ball and do a pass into nothing. Like yeah. Try something. You try. It cannot be worse than maybe losing against the team that anyway is better than you. Yeah, exactly. So let's use the opportunity to learn. And I think that also makes the game fun for the Norwegians. And I like that there is a lot happening in the midfield. Because a lot of the games today so far have been a lot a one, one half and then a bit on the other and back mm. to one half. And this is a lot in the midfield. This Ooh, we have got the sea dragons so at the at the basket. basket. And again. Let's see if they can keep building up waves of attack. Okay, this player mm. is missing support here. So we get close side now. Uh, back to the corner. I found forwards. Mm. Yeah. Uh -huh. And they pick the ball. Counter attack from the surface. They have a player down. Yes, they passed down to her. And back to the Australian good basket. Passes. Very good passes. The goalie got the good ball. Good recovery from Emma. Well, we just got the ball again, and I guess the pass goes down. Both teams look, it seems like both teams want to keep the game really underwater. You don't have many scrums. Yeah. Ooh, the goalie's gone. But Akaren is doing a very good job, but systematically diving down and they always have two, three people around the basket or in front and making like this kind of um, like high feeling. Oh. It's half time. Half time. Wow, that went fast. <laughs> that was very fast. There should have been an attack on the head from the current goalie. Towards the end, yeah, it looked a bit aggressive. 
I think the referee called advantage. Yeah, I'm not sure. I can say that one, unfortunately. Sure. Yeah, good first half from both teams. Mm -hmm. No, the, if the Australians keep it up like that, uh, they can be very proud of themselves. And um, I think that the Norwegians have to really, like, if they want to make to score a big difference, they have yep. to amp it up a bit. I mean, now it's 2 0. They're ahead. I guess they would like to have a bigger difference. Yeah. But but I think, yeah, I think the. I think the Sea Dragons have been putting up a good, good defense. So, mm -hmm. and uh, but Akaran have found those those gaps, those little mistakes. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is um, that the Sea Dragons are like, not just defending; they're yeah. like going for yeah, the ball. Like, going okay, as well. if if you just defend against a team like that, yeah, you exhaust yourself. Yeah, and now what the Sea Dragons have managed to do is bring the ball out sometimes. To their goal as well. It sounds yeah. counterintuitive, but um, you get more rest and it's more relaxing for you when if you, you try control and the game. <laughs> go, uh, control the game. Yeah. If you always have to defend, 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 you just do the elevator up and down yeah. and it's exhausting. Not doing very well. And Akaren is doing a beautiful game. Like those mm. long passes, yeah, like two meter <laughs> passes, it's really impressive. It's super precise. And just around it's the basket stronger. as well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, let's see if we do like some of those very fast counter attacks or actions mm. like we did in the previous game. I see that Amanda is analyzing the game from the hotel. Amanda, if you want to write some things in the chat about the Akadem team, or just tell us <laughs> if we're. Uh, saying things that completely that are completely wrong or missing some actions completely, you're welcome to do so. This game's exciting. I like this game. All right, second half. Six players ready. Bit faster with the ball. Who's number 42? That's Romy. She's fast. She's very fast. Yeah. Because yeah. the first in the first half, the dra the Sea Dragons were way back. Mm. Yeah. yeah Akaran is Akaran are fast. Mm. We have a call from the referee. Okay. Free throw. Free throw, white team attacking the head. So free throw for the Australian team. Okay, a current recovery ball. Yeah, good swing out from the back there. This one through. And coming in from the closed side, opening the ball a bit. The ball around. Passing to the player who was lying around the basket. Can you pull out a bit? Another two coming in. Ooh. Okay, so then the region had a um, cool oh. opportunity. Oh, no, Three pushing. 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 White team. Holding. Holding. Holding for a current, so free throw for the Sea Dragons. So Amanda from Norway says that Akaren um, have been training together weekly since the summer for the Champions Cup and um, it's a very important competition for them. Of course, I mean, they won it last time. <laughs> yeah. So I reckon it's important for them. But, ooh, now a nice counter attack very fast from Akaren. Sea Dragons managed to cover their passes off. Yeah, and they managed to block it yeah. every time with the basket. Yeah. <laughs> nice one. 
I think that the Sea Dragons have also been training very intensively for the Champions Cup because, well, if you're going to fly overseas yeah. to the other side of the world for a weekend, you better make it count, I reckon. Yeah, and they've been smashing our guys' team at, at our training, so... <laughs> Yeah, it's good. You see that there's two teams that where the players know each other well. And that they've been working together. Ooh, this is... Oh. This was almost a goal. But the Australians are fighting very, very hard. So, yeah, Mac is doing a counter-attack. Yeah, and she needs another player to be there to yeah. assist her at the basket or just behind to pull out a bit. Otherwise, I will recover the ball. Still some good pressure. And the goal. Mm -hmm. And the forwards. Just crumb above the basket. I kind of got the ball. Got the ball. Yeah, I see they were way deeper and we could swim attack. through un uninterrupted uh -huh. this uh -huh. this is a goal yes. yeah, very, nice. very nice both teams very very Gold nice blue. number six I'm Lisa, by the way, not not Lorena. <laughs> Lorena is taking a break. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the Vienna players are, are very good as well, very strong, physically strong, a bit more like the Swiss. Um, but we learned in Austria that we need to play a bit less conservative compared to the Swiss. And uh, this is this is a good okay. group. This is a a good group with some games that are quite even even if the teams are of very different levels you see them put up a good fight. Okay number seven keeping the ball behind her back. She passed it into the close corner and then you have another player in the open one. With three sea dragons. Good work from the boys <laughs> to recover there. See if we can get it across the other side. Yeah. That's all right. Still got full defense. And you notice, compared to the first half, that Akaidan has way more um, oh. opportunities, so to say. Okay, now they stole the basket. And got recovered by wow, the Sea Dragons. Very, very close there, but good strong work from the forward from above, and mm. goalies getting in place again. Yeah, compared to the first half time, the Sea Dragons are recovering the ball less. Like, they have less opportunities to go out. I don't know if it's because they're a bit more tired or playing more conservative or Akaren just cranked it up and is way more assertive and doesn't give them any chance. Yeah. Or a bit of both. <laughs> Got a comment in the chat. Bobby's asking who the, who the Dragons goalie who made the last solo counterattack. Th that was Sarah, uh, that I think. Yeah, that was a back, uh, one of our the Victorian backs, um, Sarah McCarthy. Also one of the faster players on the Victoria Sea Dragons team. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting how Kaidan always has a player on each side and one on the top. So they do this triangle of passing. Yeah. Ooh, very nice yeah. footwork by the back. The ball seems to be up. So it's scrum above the goal. Looks like there still is a scrum. Yeah. <laughs> the player at the surface was just like <laughs> passing the ball between her hands and waiting for something to happen. Someone to decide to do something. Um, it can be very frustrating when you're lying down and you see someone doing that at the surface, but yeah. you don't dare to go out because the other players are not coming down yeah. to sub. To help you sub. Mm. 
for these sea dragons and pushing out. You have a bit of a scrum. Yeah, that's where you notice that they're tired because you have more scrums. Ooh, the back. Good recovery. Pushed out. Now uh, she should swim a bit more to the front. Oh. Okay, the ball fell next to the basket. And now Very good. that comes in a bit late. Recovers the ball. And fights for it. Yeah, Sea Dragons are managing to hold them off pretty well. It's a lot of, you know, close calls, but they're still recovering. Yeah, just two minutes left. Yes, you have a good communication, how that the players manage to the, the good at taking other positions, especially the defensive, defensive duo, like yeah. they will see where there is a gap and assume that position. What was it? Something cool, cool from, the the from above. Two minutes per the ball, two minutes players in the water. So assuming that this gets to be a free throw, the Akalan players, that is a free throw for Akalan, and they just didn't waste to you know what it is, they just went down. And, and just Holding wait there, the because that, that means basket. that they're always yep. dragging at least one or two players from the Sea Dragons down. Oh. The goalie managed to cover the basket. Before try, could try and score. Another referee call. Another referee call. We just have 45 seconds. Oh, the Sea Dragons are playing with five players. Right. This is second half. Yeah, it's almost done. Blue number nine. Number nine, two minutes. Rock it. Rock it. Okay, free throw for the Sea Dragons. Just 20 seconds so left. I don't know if they're stalling. I don't know. Two players, two minutes out. Okay, I kind of lost the I could be what the people are commenting in the, in the goal that they pushed the goalkeeper without the ball. And I reckon now at the at the free throw, maybe they were taking a bit of time. Mm. That's it's not much time left. <laughs> very, very good game. Congratulations to Akai for winning and congratulations to the Sea Dragons. Uh, congratulations to the Sea Dragons for a very, very good game. That was impressive. And everyone in the chat is very impressed as well. Um, yes, Amanda is saying it's a big difference compared to the World Championships in Graz. I think that um, we're in for a big surprise, um, which is not a surprise, but the teams who underestimate Australia because they're newer yeah. to the scene, so to say will um, suffer from it, I think, because in Australia you train in big pools, mm. do a lot of conditioning, you use yep. to the five meters depth. Yeah, a lot. Long pools. The, what the Canadian pools yeah, are. It's not some in Europe it's not, not as frequent that we have those big pools for training. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's going to be interesting next year. Yeah. It's going to be very intense for championships. Looking forward to it. That was a great game. Coming up, Hemelin and Sukeltayat from Finland against Barcelona from Spain. Uh, we will mute the mics for a minute and we'll be back before the next game starts. So höre ich dich nicht jetzt hier. Ah. 
two, two. One, one. So now we can hear the referees a bit better in the stream, or at least we can hear the referees um, in the cabin. Yeah. This will also be an interesting game because the previous game... Oh, how did this one end? 3-0, right? Yep. 3-0. Both teams, we have a bit of a technical problem with the ropes. We have to fix that first before we start. So I don't know if you heard the referee, but um, there is a bit of a technical problem. <laughs> I don't know if they will Not start this. with just uh, one referee in the water or if they wait a bit longer. I reckon they wait a bit longer. No, but that was a very good performance before by, by the Australians. And I'm very excited for Worlds because I don't think we'll have games with that big differences or not as many yeah nice tight matches yeah like i said earlier this morning that we've got a lot of national team players on the victoria sea dragons team no. so mm -hmm. they have been yeah training a lot for that as well so probably why the conditions higher is at the yeah. moment I reckon that uh, quite a few of the nas of the Norwegian national team players play for Akaden. So that's yeah, so good I think it was a bit of a preview. Yeah, great preview. Worlds. But in a pool that is completely different to what we will have at Worlds, because at Worlds here is three meter, three and a half meters deep, twelve and a five, and a half long, and eight wide. While at Worlds it will be twenty meters long and five deep. So. This is, is a completely different game. Yeah. Very, very different game. Okay, Hemelinan Sukeltayat from Finland. Um, against Barcelona and this kickoff. The Finns are directly at the ball. So this is and another match for the Group A males which also has the UNSW. And uh, here the fence has started by swimming with the ball at the surface and attacked the basket directly from above. Okay, we have a call from the referee, free throw for Barcelona. Okay, so now have Barcelona was... Um, in the half of the Finnish team, and we had a referee call. Not sure what happened. Is it ref oh, ball? wait, we have, we can hear the refs. Oh, okay, referee ball, sorry. It's a referee ball. Look at that. It's incredible, we can hear what's, <laughs> we can know what happened. like the Finnish team have recovered the ball from the ref ball. And swimming very fast to Barcelona basket, but dropped the ball and kind of struggled to recover it properly. We have a Finnish player positioned around the basket. Still no. some good passing around. And now attacking from the close side. It's quite a physical game. Yeah, 
that we saw earlier with um, the UNSW Wales and the Barcelona team. Quite a physical game as well. So yes, quite a physical group. Who else is in this group? And the just the three. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, Barcelona is attacking, but they don't. Moving the ball around like nicely. All the way to the basket with the ball, and now it got recovered by one of the Finnish players. Ball went to the surface. I think it just got dropped. That looked a bit like punching. Actually, Barcelona are moving the ball <laughs> a bit backwards. Going back underwater after a bit of time on the surface. Still managing to keep the ball, but They're not making much ground. They're lacking support. Yeah, they lacking the support, support is backwards or way too far out. Mm. Then it's too risky when they have a Finnish player just on them and one a meter away. I have one player by himself. Passing down. Yes, he had three players on the water, and then one went up, then passed to the second, and the second passed to the third one, and mm. went up. And you didn't have new players <laughs> coming in yeah. for them. Um, free throw. Attacking the neck. Attacking the neck. Free throw. Free. So free throw for Barcelona for attacking the neck by Medina Sokoltejat. <laughs> Sorry for the whistle. <laughs> the joys of having the ref again. Okay, here have one Barcelona player struggling to keep the ball. I was scrum on the water. Barcelona keeps the ball. There's not enough players there. Holding. Blue free throw. So we have a call, for a free throw for the fence for holding without the ball. It's a good game so far. It's um Yeah, a lot of mid court mm -hmm. play. At some points it feels a bit hectic at some time. Yeah. Some points like both teams it seem like they're dropping the ball and juggling it around because it cannot grab onto it really well. Yeah, and a lot of, a feels lot of a scrums. Bit feels a bit less controlled. It looks like the referees are calling a free throw on the water. Okay, Barcelona is attacking the basket, but the ball just <laughs> plopped out <laughs> of the attackers. <laughs> And we have a scrum above the basket. Some good defense from the Finnish team there. Keeping their goalie and back in position. And a fast counter attack to the Barcelona basket. Okay, the Finns are moving the ball around the basket. Are they ref call? Ref call. Holding. Free throw for Barcelona. So three minutes to go in this half time and it's still 0 0. And Barcelona played already, but the Finns are fresh. 
This is her first game. This is her first game. There's just yeah. three. And there's group. Barcelona at the basket. Yeah. They have a player pretty well positioned. Oh, ref call punching. Falling. Oh, attacking equipment. Not too bad. <laughs> it looked like it could have been a goal for Barcelona with a bit more work. Yeah. If it, if it hadn't gotten interrupted. And Haas, who is again at the Barcelona basket, moving the ball, but Barcelona is doing a, doing a good for checking. Yeah, good work um, attacking mm -hmm. from the forwards and the backs as well. Ooh, and here we have one Finnish player lifting up the goalie and going into a surface from above the basket directly. Some, yeah, lots of pressure from the Finnish team at the moment at yeah, the basket. And they like lift up the goalie, but they don't secure the ball fast enough to oh. score immediately. But now that was that was the goal that came from underneath the basket. So number twelve from the blue team. Okay, maybe if we go to the team list, we can read the name of the players in the court. So number 12 is Janne Salonen, scored the goal. Okay, Barcelona is again working the finish basket. I like the surface scrum in the corner, or mid-height <laughs> scrum. Another ref call. Okay, so the Finnish team is doing a lot of holding actually. It's like the fourth. Yeah. Free I think throw? both both teams are doing a bit, but Yeah, but Barcelona has gotten more free throws mm. in their advantage than um Hamelina did. So fifteen seconds left. We'll see if the Barcelona team does something. Finish off strong. Ooh, Barcelona gets the ball, passing. There Good is pass down. there was no one, <laughs> no back in front of the basket, and yeah, it is half time. Half time. Half time. <coughs> yeah, good first half. But very physical and very physical. Yeah. It, looks, it looks exhausting. And you can sort of tell from the amount of um, referee calls how physical the game is. Yes. They have to sort of pull it up quite often. Yeah, the goal that we saw from Finland was just after relentless attack, I guess, and they found the gap. Yeah, they moved yeah. Them with the body twice. Yep. And then they passed it down, and like the body who came again got pushed up. Yeah. Because the thing there was no back. No back. The back was yeah. pulled up with the rest of the. So just one on one at the yeah. end there. Mm. I've been in my mask like this player, like half half. Sorry? That player number nine is playing to their mask and half like half his white. Ah, yes. Yeah, it's good to see all the different kit people have and yeah. customizations. That's great now that people are playing a lot with jerseys and that you have a lot of brands, of swimmer brands that make personalized designs mm. because you have very funky designs and creative different things.
So second half. About to start. Okay, th now it was more even. The timing, they were almost at the t same time at the basket. At the ball. At the ball. Yep. Thank you, Jared. <laughs> okay, we're already in the Spanish half of the field. We feel an Got three Finnish players. Barcelona recovers the ball and counter attack. Okay, he has supports. Yeah. And passes to the front. Second pass. Kind of second, second pass to the other player. Ooh. That was a bit of a wonky pass. Okay, number seven. I think that's Alejo going to the close corner. 69 tried to cross over the basket. Got and collected got by a Ford, by the looks of it. Mm -hmm. A bit of scrum above the finished basket. Appears as though Barcelona still have the ball, but in a scrum still. The game is more even than I thought it would be. Mm. He's got a ref call here. Holding. Wide free throw. Wide free throw holding. Holding. We've got two Barcelona players setting up on the basket. At the free throw. One's gone out, but. Okay, Barcelona's attacking the basketball. We have a player a bit alone. <laughs> Who made the goal for Finland? That was number 12. Who do we say? Janne. Janne, Janne something. Janne Salonen. Salonen? I'm not sure. I reckon the tonic accent is at the beginning. Okay. Back at attacking the Barcelona basket. Finisher moving the ball around quite a lot. Another good disruption from a Barcelona forward. Pushing the Finnish team out a bit. But Finland still have the ball. Okay, one Finnish player attacking by himself. Ooh, the basket was empty for a bit. Well. Oh, the player lost the ball. <laughs> they didn't know where it was. It's always fun when that happens. Was it number nine, 79? The Finnish have a long, th very long diving times. I don't know if you've noticed, but they have some players that stay pretty long on the yeah. water and fight and move around. They're a bit calmer when they're mm. moving the ball around the basket. They're calmer than Barcelona when they do that. Yeah, they're sort of taking control of the game at the moment, mm -hmm. trying to slow it down a bit. But Barcelona is good at for checking. Yeah. Like they don't. The forwards are pretty hungry, I think. Yeah, they don't give them a lot of openings. Yeah, Barcelona is doing a good job at keeping that, keeping their goalie in back, in position. Mm. Even when you've got the. Finnish players coming in disrupting them. It looks like the Finnish have, they always have enough support there, or mm. even when they don't have 
someone like they're good enough at uh, controlling the ball that they don't get it taken immediately from yeah. them or and they can read the Spanish very well so they know okay they're gonna attack us and no two pull out We've now we had someone go in against two, two. disrupting so and passed it down to the player on the close side coming down a bit passing out swimming back in working on the goalie The ball is at the surface again. Barcelona recovers and counterattacks. Pass to the bottom. Barcelona moving the ball and it gets recovered by the fence. Who missed it? <laughs> okay. Good strong defense from the Finnish team. A bit less than four minutes to go. Ref call here. Time out for the white team. Time out for the Time white out team. for the white team. Actually, it's called pronounced Barcelona with one R, <laughs> and not Barcelona. Where's that in the? Hmm? The name of. Barcelona, if you say it in English, or Barcelona in Spanish. But I think if you say it in Catalan, it's not, it's just Barcelona. We have podcast voices. Great. <laughs> After having a bedtime story voice, Jared, <laughs> now we have podcast Bobby, voices. Bobby, stop. stop trying to make me make a podcast, okay? okay so Barcelona took a Timeout again. Isn't it one timeout per game per team? Because they also took a timeout in the first half time. Uh, maybe yeah. maybe they're not uh, at the table or. Yeah, it's definitely one per team yeah. per game. But maybe it was the Finnish team that took mm. a timeout in the first half time? I'm not sure. All right, Finland's starting with the ball. some pressure from the Barcelona team. I reckon that um, Hamelin and Sukaltayat will want to score another goal. Yeah. Just to... Or just keep it at the Barcelona basket as well. Yeah, but they're still like going in there. They play pretty offensive mm. and open. Like Before, they were the ball was in their half, but you still just only had one person at the basket. Like They didn't have a goalie and a back defending. They just want yeah. one person and the second one would come down if needed and it was not needed for quite some time. This looks like a mess. Um. Yeah, yeah, some good, some scrumming above the Barcelona basket. Barcelona does not want to let them through. No. They're doing a good job of holding them off. A Finnish player waiting at the basket. The number 13 is very big. Okay, counter-attack. Barcelona. Um, Doesn't quite have some support. Oh, here we go. That was a pretty fast That's swim. a good pass. I don't think they're they will manage to score. But they're there, very disciplined, always moving the ball. And really trying yeah, to go doing for a it. Good job of moving it around. Oh, a pass to the defender. And then, yeah, the back came out and took it for Finland. Now it looks like a bit of more of a scrum. A referee call. Out of bounds. White free throw. White free throw. I reckon it was out of bounds. Yeah. 
So one one minute left. Mm. Now we're on on the finish goal with quite a bit of scrumming, but yeah. they get the ball back. It's number ten, Jim Holbach. No, that me Rikonen. Yeah, the Barcelona team's definitely pushing for this last minute. Got nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. Going at it, it just got way more aggressive in yep. <laughs> last minute or two and counterattacked by the Finns. Managed to Ooh, and yeah, will this be a goal? Close. Ooh. And a lot of their players forward. And, and that goalie did a good job of, of sa a Very good save. That. Good save. And now they will not leave that player and get the ball out and the game is full time. over very good game by Barcelona <coughs> and by uh, Hatsu from yeah great defense Finland. from both teams it was 2-0 no 1-0 1-0 yeah zero. very good very good I'm excited to see how uh, Finland and Australia is tomorrow yep. later today oh, today later yeah today. Yeah, it should be a good match. Mm -hmm. I'll be there. I'll be there so too. I think <laughs> we'll transfer. We'll give back the mic to Lorena. I don't know if Wolf is coming back, but uh, we're off for now. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Hello everybody, back again here, Lorena and Wolf. Yep. Are you ready, Lorena? No, she's not. Mm. Lorena, are you ready? Oh, I'm always ready. Uh, I'm like a Girl Scout. Are you? Mm. Have you been to the Girl Scout? Yes. <laughs> I was dangerous for them. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> so everybody shares now at the moment. When I was very young. Okay, yeah. back to underwater rugby. We'll talk about that later. Yep. Um, I heard we have now the sound of uh, the hall. Here it is, but it's not properly working. Okay, interesting. We'll try that. So we have Sweden against Italy, um, a female team. The female teams. Playing here um, game number 20 here on the Champions Cup 2022 in Berlin. So next uh, game, what's coming up? Isbjörnarna. Isbjörnarna against Fiersalis, Italy against uh, Sweden. I already saw Isbjörnarna. Um, Sweden. Sweden, yeah. Um, they played... Oh, I really needed my classes. It was pretty early... <laughs> Yeah. Hold on, let me see. Uh, against Langen. And ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. Yes, they did a very good 2-0 uh, against uh, Langen. So, hmm, going to be interesting. 
and uh, if they they did this well against Langen, it would be a difficult uh, game for um, the Italian team. So yeah, we um, since we, we had our break, I uh, was just walking a little bit through the hall and uh, did a live video on the Champions Cup Facebook site. And the atmosphere always in the Champions Cup is amazing. It's just like this this special mix out of concentration, out of uh, uh, sportsmanship, and people just loving talking to each other, seeing each other, and spending time together. All right. Teams are getting ready, and uh, on the side, foot on the wall, ready to start like a rocket. We have 12 girls for Italy, and we have 14 girls for Here we go, Switch game win. started. And already we have an uh, uh, Italian player wrapped around to the ball in the middle of the pool. She ripped them free, and that was a nice move. Pushed it to her uh, goal mate, but, uh, uh, game mate, but didn't work out. And Sweden is in ball possession and attacking, already attacking the Italian basket from the close side. And now from the open side, pushing in. Oh. Was that, that was pushing with yes, uh, I mean holding without ball. So now um, there's a free throw for the Italian team. They're getting ready there. And let's see. They also start looking to the back. And okay, all that ball. Well, drop the, the ball. The ball That's control is not uh, that good because, it, especially in the free throw, you have to be very precise mm. to use the momentum and to be fast. A call from the referee. Ball out of the surface. Blue free throw. Blue free throw. We now have the sound here from the referees, which makes it easier for us to understand what's happening. So free throw for Espiranan. Espiranana. I, w I will not. Yes, I, would I think I will not manage to to speak that right. We can have the S Swedish fans let, uh, letting us know the pronunciation. I, they already did. They tried to teach me okay. in the first game. Yes. Attack uh, on the Italian basket. Ball is free. Recovered by a Swedish player. Going back around the basket to the close side, trying to opening up a little bit of space while uh, the teammates are <coughs> posi positioning themselves around the basket. Uh, we have another player here with a taped arm. Um, could be a shoulder. Th this is really amazing. Never thought about it. I would stop oh, playing. <coughs> There's one player. She has her uh, arm. I think it's the same. Uh, yes, yes, that's why I saw her. And really amazing uh, uh, sportsmanship for her to play. Her heart pressure on the basket of the and Italians and goal. the first goal for the Swedish team it was a question of time uh, with the, with goal this pressure team number nine. holding on on the Italian defense before they would score teams get ready number nine a score and the number nine is let me use the we see the replay here yeah and there was a uh, the the the, the kind of cluster you have on top of a Levina um, Johansson on top of the basket which makes it for the goalkeeper difficult to get the overview and if you have to exchange there is this big yeah. gap um, nice goal so now um, let's see uh, the ball's in the middle the Italian girls are trying to bring it towards the Swedish side um, and let's see if they can get a little bit of momentum there because um yeah the in the position um is not i mean they're still like slow in in building up now we have sweden already back and Ooh. that was a score it was a counter attack with two blue ones and it was one against one and yeah Go blue team number two that was a nice counter attack from the middle of the of the pool and um these are the situations that you didn't I mean, 
when it's one on one, every player needs to be have the the, um, the skills to score against a, a goal keeper because sometimes you know the situations don't repeat themselves, so you need to just you know use the, the opportunity. Nina Bergeren scored here. Okay, back in the game. Ball is uh, falling down, uh, recovered by uh, Italia. Italy has uh, is in ball possession. They are trying to start from uh, the corner next to the Swedish basket and trying to push into the defense. But first they have to establish their, uh, their dominance in this corner. And uh, they have to control the ball, and yes. they haven't been really able to um, to really be in possession of the ball in a way that they're controlling it. It's more they don't lose it, but they're not really um, building up a way or, or a strategy. Um, yeah. They're just holding without holding. ball. Blue free throw, holding. Okay, free throw for uh, Isbjörn Narna. Um, holding. With our ball, and okay, how we um, we have three blue players coming toward the corners, and the Italians trying to stop. They're be I mean, they're just behind the the basket, and we see oh a cluster again. And massive pushing here from the number. What is number eleven? She was uh, really pushing into the goalkeeper without the ball. Yes, and. Is it a only a free throw? Okay. Well, yeah. that was that was tough. I think it was number Five eleven, not sure. Blue team number eleven, yes. two minutes. Yes, yes, uh, would would have done the same decision uh, because she was not only positioning herself next to the goalkeeper Five of the Italians, but uh, she really pushed into into her number eleven that um, oh we don't have her on our plan. <laughs> So yeah, sometimes the, the players change and then they don't actualize, so, yep. Okay, um, Italy has an advantage, one player more in the water. Let's uh. see if they can really use this advantage, now they just f uh, lost the ball. Remember that it's two minutes penalty unless they get a score, and then if they get a score, then the player can return to the water. But um, Sweden, with five people, is still attacking uh, on the Italian side. I'm surprised that the goalie has, um, you know, normally just a black part uh, that you can be seen in the... And the another score. Another score. <coughs> normally, um, you need to have all of the parts of you use uh, Goal, on the color, not to eight. confuse. And uh, she has a lot of, of dark showing up as well. Anyway... Um, we have uh, Sweden with ready. five uh, players having one less, still scoring, still 42 uh, seconds to go for the penalty, two and a half minutes from the time. Um, and um, Italy, you know, sh it, it if they can't take advantage of the situation with five players, then it's going to... It doesn't Let's look like they can change. No, it I know. doesn't look like they can put the the effort in the water in the structure to use the advantage of having one more player. Um, it is really difficult to switch in this this attack mode. And Italy is is doing its best here to fend off, and you see their their uh, uh, the points where they really struggle in the defense. Ball falls down, recovered from. Uh, Italian player, she tries to break free, tries to find her teammates. They need to bring the, the game a little bit deeper. Well, right now the, the, the ball fell, but otherwise they are like one meter above the surface of the water, one and a half meters, and they need to, the players are from there to up, and they mm -hmm. need to be there from there down um, if they want to, oh, another goal. I know, they, I think they have new players also in Italy yes, in general. The situation with the score. pandemic wasn't easy, Goal, and so they're having new eight. team, no new team members. Um, so the goalie is doing, you know, trying to stop, but actually it looks like their their other um, partner blocked her because she was uh, defending. I don't know if it was the defender that was trying to go on top of the of the goalie. Um, 
But that was yeah, uh, a mistake. Both both play. Oh, 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 oh. okay, almost. that was. Was a throw. She tried to throw as <laughs> as uh, the Colombians did uh, in the game yeah, before. Yeah, but, but uh, this she was could risky. have, you yeah. know, she could have waited a little bit longer, and that's probably she's a little bit. Uh, Italian uh, goalkeeper was surprised too. Almost a score. So another attack from above. Uh, the Italians really have problems here keeping their goal uh, defended. Uh, that was a nice move from the Italian goalkeeper, but she was out of air and had to go up and the ball was dropping down. Another and goal for another goal. is pure Narna. Goal blue team number three. Number three. Who is number three? We don't have a number three. <laughs> we have an old list, it looks like. Yeah. Difficult game for Italy. Um, Three minutes to go from the first half. Five zero for Sweden. And half time break. Okay, good. They just uh, finished the first half. Um, Sweden is back with six players. So, Lorena, from your experience, um, mm -hmm. in this situation, what should Italy do now? What, as a coach, what would you tell them? Uh huh. So, like, uh, we, we see uh, their coach now talking to them. What would you say? Come on here, I would just have to speak. <laughs> no, I can't hear. Um, well, uh, I would, I mean, they need to um, bring the, the, the game deeper bit, uh, to the bottom of the pool, and they need to be a little bit closer together and they need to be on the water a little before what they are right now uh, because right now it's one they, can, they, they get the ball and they are too much when you are I mean, from the top to top then you are uh, 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 pray for um, to I mean to, to be uh, in a, a, a good, what's it called uh, when uh, everyone the hold, the in, a hold, uh, yeah, in, a in a cluster thank you um, if you are in the ball run, you have to move. You need to move with the ball and without the ball. And since the Swedish team is very good at uh, ball checking, then it's very important that the other players are positioned close enough so that you can move the ball faster in the bottom of the pool so you can surpass and uh, advance, right? But right now, it just takes too long for them to be in position, to be deep. And so they are left alone with the ball, and then they get in this fight. And then Yes, and, uh, but it's also to, to uh, execute what you just said uh, would be um, the thing for you them to do. You need the skill, the air, and the training as a team to execute what you just said, and that's that's uh, yep, that's difficult. If if you have a new team, if you have new players, if you have and unexperienced players, and if they players. are a little bit um, mm. anxious, nervous, we were discussing this all this subject with Samuel Gaviria in the um, academy. If you didn't, uh, you can go there to the Facebook site and you can see we, we were talking for an hour about the new tactics he's introducing. Um, think, I mean, just con taking into consideration for the tactical and technical training, the critical thinking upon decision making as a team um, and how to bring the team together like uh, as a part of fish if you want right yes a swarm um, swarm behavior so all right back in the game mm -hmm. we are almost ready and here we go uh, second half and we have a solid lead from uh, Espirinana um, against Firsalis uh, so Sweden uh, against Italy they're in the middle, fighting for the ball. Okay, this... Italy lost uh, the possession of the ball, and Sweden is in a counter-attack, and where is the goalie? Why are there two oh. girls, with the two defenders, and the goalie? Mm. For instance, in this case, if you have two defenders, then one needs to go and, and cover, Stop. because if the goalie, yep. for whatever reason, that's the, 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 the thinking, right? Um, when you train the defender, it's, it's good that every every player knows a little bit every position because if they have to just cover and cling the mistake of one of the teams has to be possible. Anyway, we are here on the side of um, 
Italy. Italy, and there's attacking. We can't really see a lot, but it's a lot of just c clustering. I mean, um, Italy has always played in this way that they, they go a lot around the ball and then block um, the, the flow of the ball. Yes. But this is your last resolution. If you if you want to stop uh, the others from getting access to the ball, you wrap around the ball, but you stop White actually the game. <laughs> the game. White free throw. So free throw for uh, uh Italy. Italy. Let's see the execution now of the free throw because it's it's really important. Here you have one player. There are not enough players down. Th that's that's uh, not that's enough. What that's what I mean. Yeah. She was. She's one and a half meters. She's in the middle. Yeah. I mean, I understand that she's there because she needs to be close to the person that is executing the free throw. But the next one is to be down yes. and a bit in front. And Otherwise, the she's the alone. And the then the movement has already been um, forward to the uh, the to the other uh, goal and to the other basket. So um, if you if you have a free throw on your side and you're stuck in your own half, you have to have this momentum to go forward. Okay, Sweden now in ball possession. And also you have to have Ford the movement in with the, the ball the pool. And, and without the ball. That's that's the next thing. If you get the ball, you cannot, you shouldn't be st I mean, quiet with the ball. Um, the moment you have it, you need to just go deep and, and move. Um, Defense is from position and Sweden is uh, attacking. Ball is like uh, dropping to the open side. Player recovered it here, the Swedish player trying to push it in the hands of her teammate, but there was an Italian in between, and uh, the Italian player is now wrapped around the ball and up to the surface. Um, they are fighting on top of the goalie of the Italian team. And now it seems like Italy is recovering the ball they because they're moving really away. Free, still in the, in the on the surface. But here we go. This this could be a chance for the Italians. Oh yep, yeah, right from above. A little bit from the timing uh, behind the two defenders, the goalkeeper and the, the defender. But this was a nice move. Second attack, but all alone. The player is all alone down and still alone. They has to go up to the surface. It didn't work out, but these are nice uh, two pressure attacks on the Swedish basket. Wide free throw. Free throw for Italy, three meters away from uh, the Swedish uh, goalie. Referee in Time the surface. Timeout, blue Time out. team. Timeout, okay. blue team. Well, that's clever. I would have done the same. Now Sweden is, you know, they have a, a free throw three meters away. And even though they are dominating the game, uh, they are winning 5-0. Uh, Italy has recovered a little bit. I, and, and um, you know, oh, we have, she's playing with the, the number five is, is injured. It's playing like that. You don't listen to me, don't you? No, no, I listened to you, but I didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she t t the, her hand is taped. Into her shirt. But she injured now today in the game? I she don't know, like it was in the first game like this. Okay, we have to find out this. Okay, time out, 22 seconds. Really second. difficult to play like this because you really restrict your movement patterns. Yeah, well, but if you have an injury in your shoulder, shoulder or so. Anyway, mm, I was not aware that it was a uh, possibility to, to play like this, that they would allow you to play like yeah, this. Yeah, I was thinking the same. Didn't know that's possible. White free throw, choking. Okay, white free throw for choking. Two meter, Not blue choking. team, two meter. Choking. <laughs> Four, this is the referee now is too loud. Um, let's see if Italy can achieve uh, an attack from this free throw when we're still fighting and they lost the ball. And now it's a counter attack for uh, Sweden. We have the defender in position from Italy, the goalie in position. And now um, Italy is trying to recover the ball, fighting in the corner. We have the Swedish girls underneath uh, the goalie. However, um, the number 10, I think that's Valentina, is holding on to uh, the ball and just recovered and passed it. But it was a very, th th the number two Weak was too pass. far away. Yeah. She was too far away. That's the next thing, you know, to be closer. Um, 
normally the one that doesn't have the ball needs to swim a little bit more toward the one that has the ball that's being held because then sometimes he can't do much and in this case Sweden is fast and Sweden can go in between players so they need to play closer when I mean closer it's one arm uh, away from each other because they don't have such a good ball control that would be my suggestion at least uh, my humble suggestion um, so Italy just recover the the ball and is trying to go uh, farther towards uh, the Swedish uh, half. We are in the second half of the um, second half time, <laughs> and it's five zero. But you know, Italy recovered quite well. But look, look, I mean, they haven't scored any any goals Sweden since a while now. Yep. Um, but maybe you you never know. I. I Probably they they took out a little bit of speed of their play because Sweden, you mean? Yes, mm. because they they have a five uh, yeah, zero lead and they don't have to exhaust themselves. No, yeah, I understand, but normally with this different uh, between technique and tactic, um, oh another score. I mean, there was one of the Swedish um, players fighting from the bottom, and I can tell that the goalies are quite inexperienced. The Italian ones, yeah. Mm, yeah. Yes. And so. Um, she she did a, a good job from the back to really push her up and even uh, the, the Italian goalie was being held by, uh, by another player but uh, to put her down but it was not possible so um, now it's 6-0 for Sweden goal and what I was saying before 20. is that uh, goal blue team because Italy is technical and tactically um, a, a little bit um, more in in ex in experience, let's say that Sweden. Not all of them. Um, no, not all of. Some I understand, of the Italian but players no, no, are very experienced. I understand, yeah. but yes. then y as you a whole, as a whole, even if you're a great player, you need your team, so you can do as much uh, on your Absolutely. own. Absolutely. So what I mean is, um, because you were saying that Sweden maybe is holding, yeah, uh, maybe a little bit, but they don't need to hold a lot because they are look look the way they swing look sure, the way they sure, move sure. around if they have a chance it, it, yes. it's but they don't they put they don't in need this to extra this extra they need to, to no, win they, course, they already yeah. won the you game you need to manage how you you go around with your with your energy with yeah, your exactly. body with everything it's three days of championship this is just the first free day throw so against italy blue free throw blue free throw um i couldn't see what happened neither did i because I was listen away. listening to your explanation. <laughs> <laughs> Three meters away, and Sweden is trying to come on the close side. Italy is in position, um, trying to keep some of the, uh, the Swedish teams away. The defender just gain uh, the ball, pass it to the next player, and that's what I mean. You don't go with the ball up. If you go up, you're going to be held hostage <laughs> yeah so you or you lose the ball down. like that like this you, you situation oh that was yeah. really fast yeah and that's that's what i mean and because if it, you see if the italians if if they are uh, out of air they go to the surface take a breath and they are not that fast to go back again if the counter attack is already in poor possession mm. and oh, like like we see here six. that was just too fast then mm. for the defenders to uh, be in position to defend um, their their basket. Okay, one and a half minutes left here in this uh, second half. And uh, seven zero for Sweden. Uh, Italy will be happy when this game is over. Well, I mean, they they recover. I mean, they got much m many more uh, goals in the f in the the first half. Uh, so they, they they really found themselves a little bit more under water. That's true, and it's always uh, a learning uh, learning uh, experience to play against another team that uh, shows you new ways how to deal with situations. I think every player uh, inexperienced or not grows um, from playing against a good team. And uh, Esperiana is uh, definitely a good team. Why do you say Esperiana? I mean, I pronounce it the way I read it. It's, it's, it's not good. It's the o with, the, with the two dozen is like U. Uh, like it's Bjornana. It's Bjornana. They were trying to teach me here, but I don't know the way they're writing. Yeah, Bobby, they're Bobby teach, teach me earlier. I forgot everything. Ice. Okay. Sweden, let's call it Sweden, ice is, yeah. is uh, back at the Italian basket. Last 10 seconds ticking down. 
Italy in defense, they're fending off, and another goal, wow. Yeah, that was a goal, and end of the game. Yep, all right, 7-0, no, 8-0 for Sweden. Huh. 8-0. Eight, eight, Lorena, what do you Seven. think we had, um, um, you know, in the old Champions Cup, sometimes the, the, the more experienced older teams are saying, why do we have play against unexperienced teams uh, we get nothing out of it and I my my argumentation is always the unexperienced teams are really learning from these um, encounters yep. with an experienced team and even if you say okay if, uh, let's say Firenze played against uh, uh, Colombia uh, nevertheless you, you see things you learn things you you adapt and it's I always prefer um, to, to have an open field where everybody plays against everyone, but it's not shared. Uh, this thought is not shared um, with every, uh, no, every I team. I agree. We still we're still a young sport, and we still have quite a bridge, quite a gap between the top uh, teams and the and the ones that are m uh, more inexperienced. So it's it's I think it's a responsibility for all of us to help each other and. Yeah, in, in the Champions Cup, every, every team that uh, is more inexperienced always says how much learning and how much they they go out of, of playing against teams that are maybe stronger, maybe, you know, have 10, 12, uh, 15 goals, but still they are all happy. And, and we have to build up the, um, the community and, and the sport together. So, yeah, for me, it's, I mean, it's, it's okay until we don't, you know, have more people playing a ball that we can have you know, uh, a bit more, um, how you say, harmony or equality in the in the in the yeah. game. We, the, we do. The we in that's in the, the only players. way you can build up. Otherwise, if you divide, how are gonna you know they improve? Gonna learn, yeah. And uh, for the for the less experienced players here in the Italian the team, that this will be a, a, a game they can take. This out is your something out of it. We yeah, yeah, sure, it. absolutely. <laughs> and they will they will feel beaten uh, here, and, and it's not a nice feeling. But uh, um, but nevertheless, I think you can learn uh, take something out of it. <laughs> referees, a view to the referees. It's Big thanks, up. by the way, uh, to the referees. Um, I, uh, sometimes you play saying, well, the referees are doing nothing, they're just uh, staying what? in the water, what enjoying. Do you well, sometimes Who players are just players, players. But uh, I'm a referee myself, and it's really exhausting to be uh, in water uh, this many times as they yeah, are here in the Champions Cup. Keeping your attention, also yes. if you get told. Yes, and yes, also yes, yes. So, uh, big thanks and respect to the team of the referees of the Champions Cup 2000. So, what game's coming up? We have. Vienna 2000, 2000, against <laughs> Luxembourg. Okay. So the male team of Vienna against the male team of Luxembourg. That's interesting combination. It would be interesting exactly because I would, yeah, could be quite a bit like how in here? Coming? How in here? No. Like uh, you think they are not that maybe I Vienna is a bit more experienced. Yeah. Vienna Luxembourg. will dominate this uh, you think? game. Yes, uh, that my my guess would be Vienna will uh, take the control of the game. Um, it's not like Luxembourg has no not a chance to score, but I think um, control of this upcoming mm -hmm. game will be in the hands of the Austrian players. That's my guess, and it's a uh, uh, nobody uh, uh, has to. Agree me. with you? Listen uh, to nobody you? has to agree with me. Well, nobody ever does. But um, um, I, I would say, yeah. Do we have uh, uh, Austrian and Luxembourgian? Vienna played. Uh, I saw Watching? the game. Vienna played before against here against Molde, and uh, they did quite well. Six zero. What did see? Yeah. And what about uh, uh, Luxembourg played uh, first game of the day against uh, Molde 2 with a 12-0. Okay. So we have uh, both teams playing against the same opponent, and uh, well, Vienna did better. 
which doesn't say anything. It's 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 another combination. Twenty first game of the day. We started early this morning. Not early for you, my love. Nine, of course. I started early at home. I had to <laughs> work, and then I came. I was listening to the transmission. You was listening to me, really. Anyway, uh, we have uh, Vian in uh, Vienna in blue, Luxembourg in white, <laughs> and uh, players waiting. I was just talking to uh, uh, Tosin Lücke from uh, the Vienna team and they are all a little bit uh, ill, a little bit like a, a cold or oh, some okay. recovering from a cold. So they are not in the real, um, the real best shape. So what's, what's your guess, Lorena? My guess. Yes. Do you have a guess? Guess what? No, I'm not going to say. <laughs> this is the way when I have guests, then people are angry. Against yeah, that's me. true. That's so true. I don't we always <laughs> get bad comments. Um, <laughs> that we are preferring teams, and it's just um, you know we you you have the, the the experience of past Champions Cups, and so you and have we start an the idea game. who can be uh, stronger than the other. But it's not that we prefer you know one above the other. Luxembourg uh, anyway, reach the ball uh, uh, first, and they are already moving into the basket area of uh, Vienna. Yeah. Vienna recover the ball, but it's all uh, immediately tackled and uh, called from the referee. Let's for listen holding in. holding white free ball. Free okay. ball against uh, uh, Vienna. All right, maybe. I think, I mean, only for I the statistic, if we look at the statistics, I mean, Vienna, it's, if we compare to the results, what they play against Molde, um, Vienna, can be the stronger, but that's you know yes, that doesn't say anything. That doesn't say anything. So yeah. let's see. So uh, Vienna uh, was in ball possession. Ball was dropping down, and uh, Luxembourg recovered it. Attacked the Luxembourg players. Attacked by several um, Austrian players. We're now at the close side, almost in the corner, but uh, Luxembourg still in ball possession, working its way to the Austrian basket. Passing back and forth, nice ball playing here from uh, Luxembourg around uh, the Austrian basket, but uh, intercepted by Austria. And now Austria <laughs> is uh, working its way through the field. Heavy forechecking uh, from, from uh, Luxembourg. Colombians are like arriving. And, and first goal here for Vienna. Let's see okay. the replay. We were a little bit distracted by a uh, Colombian team moving Blue in. Goal 21. Okay, the 21 is the... Do we have the right list? Um. Gregor... I cannot... Dersch. Gregor Dersch scored here. So it's a 1-0 for Vienna. Luxembourg back in ball possession, trying to work... Uh, back their way and get closer to the Vienna basket. But uh, the forechecking was strong. Now they have a better chance. Less uh, Austrian players stopping them. And we are in the corner next to the Austrian basket. The, the, the forechecking of the Austrian players is heavy, but not that controlled. The Luxembourg team always manages to get the ball back or uh, hold the ball to continue trying mm, to build yeah, pressure but actually on the basket. I mean, I think I maybe mean, Vienna is keeping uh, the Luxembourg team just away, right? It's not being really True. difficult for the goalies and the de defenders. Um, and so maybe just waiting for the the, the, the moment to, to steal the ball, but, uh, but they are not. Uh, you have always in this position. You have always the goalkeeper and the defender pinned. Yeah, to but the when basket. you don't have anyone attacking you, True. it's not. Uh, it's not. Um, True. It's not it's an not effort. It's not exhausting. It's yeah. not exhausting, actually. Yeah. So, but I'm wondering why do they do this? Okay, they are ones here. I understand, but better to, to recover the ball and just get away, right? Because uh, still, you have the whole game in front of you. Um, so Luxembourg is in the corner. But there are not enough players here now. They have a chance. 
pass was uh, involuntarily intercepted by an Austrian player with his uh, uh, with his foot. And Vienna tries to break through, but the player Great was alone. From yeah, uh, the uh, Luxembourg player the stole the ball out of the arms of the Austrian player. And we're moving back. We're in the middle of the of the pool. And we're moving back in the corner. And from the corner, ah, and Vienna lost recovered the ball, the ball again. Ball. Back and forth here. Austrian ball possession. Now they are still in the middle, but they're coming through with a counter-attack with two players coming over the close side, trying to attack from above, trying to put the ball, but yeah, no. Oh, it looked like it was a goal for a moment there. But um, the ball was tackled away by one of the uh, Luxembourg players. So Luxembourg is in position of the ball, but um, it's not being able to play the ball. So they're on, on top of the goalie. And uh, let's see if th they're moving like on a block in a cluster toward the middle. And I can't see where the ball is. as a seal with the one white pl uh, player from uh, Luxembourg. But uh, Vienna just recovered and tried to start a counter-attack. They're playing again too much in the middle and to the surface. And as we all know, Sander with the rug, so best is always to bring the, the play as deep as possible. Now we have the Luxembourg team in position of the ball with the close side on the uh, Vienna side. And let's see if they can build up a little bit of um, uh, a wave to, 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 to force a mistake. But they lost the ball. Better say uh, Vienna recover it. And they're in the middle trying now a counter-attack two against one goalie that's been pushed from the top uh, just to stop the the attack of, of uh, Vienna but wasn't successful. This is a goal. Blue goal number seven. Number seven. Who is number, number seven? seven. Um, from Vienna. So 2 0 for Vienna. Um, the number two is Peter. No. Hmm. I don't get the numbers here. Yeah, the numbers are strange. We don't have a number two in the list. I don't know why we have. Uh, so I'm sorry. I mean, we have the list of the players, but uh, some numbers are just uh, wrong, so we don't know them. Three and a half minutes left in this uh, first half. Luxembourg in ball possession. Moving forward, passing backward, and back in the corner. Um, but they have to leave the corner to try to put pressure on the Austrian basket. But there are not enough players here for a power play into the danger area of the Austrian. Here's one uh, player from Luxembourg positioning himself and the other one is coming over the uh, open side but lost the ball to the goalkeeper who just uh, was like I yeah, stretching out his arm in the free throw Holding against free throw. So there's a question Luxembourg. here from Kenny that's asking me how do we translate for checking in Spanish. I have no idea because my problem is I learn everything related to, to rugby in, in German and actually when I had to translate part of it in Spanish and I don't it was a while ago I don't remember it would be, you help me, it would be when um, the players are in the field and they're trying to recover the ball. So checking the players and trying to go in between the pass. How would you call that in Spanish? I have no idea, sadly. Very well done by Luxembourg, at least to get the ball away from their own goal area. And we're in the middle of the pool, although it was a lot of tackling, clustering involved, pushing forward. But uh, slowly we're moving back again into the area of uh, Vienna. Nice positioning here. If you could hold on the ball on the open side, the player from Luxembourg, but didn't. The ball was intercepted. And again, we have a cluster on the surface. Ball is dropping down. Both Luxembourg and Vienna tries to recover it. Luxembourg is in ball possession. Cannot really control the ball out of the arms of the Austrian players. And Austria ball possession and three Austrian players going forward to the... 2-0. I thought the Vienna did like three goals. It's two Luxembourg zero. basket. Yeah. So we have here... Um, 
Luxembourg trying to defend and trying to get the ball. Um, still one minute, a little bit over uh, one minute left from the first half and the ball just fell and uh, was taken by one of the Luxembourg players that is trying now to, but he's missing, you know, uh, another player that uh, could help him. But that's the next thing, you know, you're already in possession of the ball, you have been fighting for a while, so then you, s you do a mistake um, and then they're missing, they're all above, they're all diving at the back, I mean, and now it's the one player with the ball alone having to go in the circuit where they have all the blue players. So all the small little thing is that really uh, contribute that Luxembourg cannot uh, build up uh, a wave and, and a flow in their game so they can go, you know, and, and yeah. try to do some pressure on the on the Vienna but side. But the, the, the reason, I guess, is uh, they are uh, um, exhausted and they don't have the, the capacity to to go down as fast as a team and we are already back at the luxembourgian uh, basket and vienna is pushing hard in but this time the vienna player dropped the ball to his uh, teammate on the open side but he didn't see it and the ball was recovered by luxembourg they were going forward end of the first half well okay a little bit Choose like you. i i predicted I'd say. Yeah, but look, I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm surprised in, in a good way because we saw at the beginning of the game that the statistics were that Luxembourg had lost 12-0 against Molde and Vienna 6-0. So, um, actually, I mean, 2-0 for the one, the first 10 minutes, uh, it's a good, um, yes. it's a good uh, result. Let's see if now, maybe in these three minutes, the, the Luxembourg, they have some experienced players. So they can kind of regroup and try to, I don't know, find themselves a little bit and do those actions that I meant more to be one second earlier down and not two seconds later and being toward more to the front and being in the back and going from the middle to the bottom and not to the up. But, but, but would you say what is missing in Luxembourg is um, the, the team play or is it based on the fact they are lacking the, the physical um, uh, capabilities because you know, if you don't if you don't have the capabilities you cannot I know I think it's it probably a mixture of both I would like to know I mean I think Luxembourg does not have a league I think they play in the three nations league or they play um, and so um, and also if you look already the way they are playing tells you a little bit the condition if you are normally from the middle up the condition normally it's not the greatest. Otherwise, you would be from the middle down. Yes. That's normally my reading of the situation. And I, I invite the, uh, the audience. We have 180 people watching. And so it's a picture of that. And a picture of maybe not having the experience of playing together for, because they don't have a league like other countries do have. So again, it's the underwater time, how much, how many possibilities do you have to play together as a team against other teams. And that together with the physical condition and everything sums up because if, pro, if you don't have the, the, the physical condition plus you don't know really the timings of the game um, of your, of your uh, meet uh, and the, 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 the rest of the team that creates a little bit of anxiety nervousness and then you start reacting 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 instead of deciding what you want to do in the game yes i i totally agree but it's it's really? a it's and a i have that design yeah no but it's a it's a kind of chain reaction and, and you start from the moment you are overrun and you're um, you're not having the, the physical capability to stay calm, and then it's just a uh, self-running system. Back again in the game, second half here. Um, team from Austria, Vienna against uh, Luxembourg. Can we please, yeah, back uh, in the water. Joe, Thank Joe you. is telling us that Luxembourg plays in the Hessen League, but the Hessen League then in which one? The Lanz League? I mean, like the third league, the second league? Luxembourg in ball possession trying to break into the half of uh, Vienna, but the forward checking by Vienna is uh, quite solid and they stole the ball, ripped the ball out of the hands of the... Oh, this is a 
difficult situation now with the attack of Jena on the basket. Good, very well result here from Luxembourg by tackling away the ball to the surface. Let's see if they can defend a little bit more and disrupt the because the, the Vienna team you can tell they play more together. You, you know you can read from how they swim, where they swim. They know the timing from the from their own players more than the, the Luxembourg. The Luxembourgs are a little bit like always looking where are and the, the Viennas play oh, a little bit more blind. Uh, still off the basket, but he's holding himself to the basket yeah, with the arm uh, kind yeah. of. It's difficult to see because it looks like it's parallel, but then you're holding it in hand somehow. Anyway, um, but, uh, great recovering from Luxembourg. Yeah, result for uh, Luxembourg, but uh, again, the situation, players all alone, and it takes too long for them to go forward and to, to create space for them and establish their presence. But nevertheless, they manage. We're here on the open side. But the, the four-check defense is heavy from Jena, and they go in fiscally. You, you see how they, they work their way into the, the players. It's really well played here from Luxembourg on the open side, but the pressure is continuously working. Call from the referee. Blue, f blue free ball. For holding. Blue free ball holding. So it's a free throw against Luxembourg. And there the Vienna player comes. Look, they have already one waiting on the inner side. But well, well, great recover. We can tell that Luxembourg recovered a lot from the first half. They are finding themselves on the water a little bit better. They're, you see, now they are more in the bottom. They are coming together. We have now like counter attack with three players, two and a half. <laughs> And they're coming toward the close side. So, um, but Vienna is very, very strong in the four checking and recovering the ball because, th again, we had three people there from Luxembourg on the corner, and you need to have uh, more than the, the the opponent, right? If you want to uh, achieve a score, normally the the solution is you have more people on the water, and if that's not happening. Then we have Vienna now attacking one on one. That's one defender there, but uh, they're coming from above. Oh, oh that's great nice get from uh, Stiller. Yeah, uh, from Niels, from Luxembourg team. Oh, that the ball uh, snatched it away out of the hand of the attacker. Call from the referee. It's a sign. Is it? Is it a sign? No. Ah, free throw. Holding white free ball. Vielen Dank, Kingeborg. We're holding white free ball. Um, okay, free throw for Luxembourg. Let's see. Uh, okay, they are in the... Still, that's what I mean. If you get the ball, you go down. You don't go up. Ideally, I know that sometimes you're nervous. <laughs> you don't have air, you have to go up. But ideally, then you have to, you have to go down. Otherwise, you are a prey to be in attack. Look oh, the ball. Great counterattack from Vienna. Fast uh, counterattack stopped by forechecking. But still, we are already back at the. Uh, wow, great job from Luxembourg. Luxembourg is defending yeah. so much better. I mean, they're yeah. not getting uh, very organized uh, by the attack, but they are so much better than Forchek in recovering the ball and st start at least starting the attack before everything was not really working. And uh, the score is showing it 2 0, and Vienna couldn't score anymore since the first uh, minutes of the first half, even though they were close, but still. Uh, Luxembourg had a, a great recovery um, and they are, you know, regrouping and working a little bit more together. Well, we have now one attacker right underneath the goalie. Great. You see, you have two wide fighting against that uh, player. Pushing that was without position. ball. Mm -hmm. And what is Luxembourg uh, really white free ball improved? For holding. White free ball holding. What they really improved is uh, they, they are better to interfere in the attacks of uh, Vienna and like um, the, 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 the scene we saw where the ball was snatched out of the hands, the right moment to intercept, this is the point where you lose less energy 
if you have the right moment to get the ball away, and then you can go for the counter attack. So Luxembourg in ball possession. And they're reacting much better to the game of uh, Vienna. So they're now in the corner. From oh. the Vienna basket. Yeah. Vienna is defending. getting position, defending. We have one of the looks. Vienna is pushing a little bit too much with our ball, for my taste. But it looks like uh, uh, Luxembourg is more self-confident now, yeah. going yeah, yeah, into yeah. the game mm -hmm. and not accepting the game of Vienna like they did in the first half. But it's quite difficult uh, because uh, Vienna is leading a 2-0 lead. Oh, okay. Now it's a good chance two against one, but Come the ball arrived a little bit too late, and Vienna was there before any attack could be done. Now they're bringing up and trying to be in control of the ball, and uh, the um, Vienna team recovered the ball. I was trying to start a counter attack, but we've been uh, stopped by the Luxembourg defense. Nevertheless, they still are in ball position. Now they're trying to come forward. And um, they are stopped at three meters away from uh, Luxembourg basket, who recovered the ball and went uh, now in a counterattack against the uh, Austrian team. The ball being passed from above down to the other side and Vienna recovered the ball. There's a lot of initiative now in the Luxembourgian yep. uh, uh, game and uh, they, they, they're they getting better and better in and they're playing together. Yeah, and they're playing yeah. together and interfering And they're bringing the, with the, the game, game down. I mean, they're more uh, on the, and from the middle to the bottom and then they're up. Um, yeah, I don't surely you're nice. reading things that uh, after the game the the stream may be interrupted temporarily in case you haven't realized this red sign at the bottom yes we have two, <laughs> minutes, are not two minutes left we do a restart of the system yeah so you will be uh, the Offline. live stream will disrupted white so free ball worry. two minutes two Luxembourg minutes. really is now under pressure time out blue Time out. out blue. Okay, for Vienna. All right, interesting. Outside time out blue. You always win a little bit of time before the time really is stopped. Um, so it's yeah. They they have nothing to lose. Um, the two zero is a good lead. Yeah. Um, with, uh, and they are still, even though Luxembourg recover, they are still dominating the game in yes. terms of that Luxembourg had arrived to the basket more times and had, but. Mm, Maybe one or twice could just put a little bit of pressure in the Vienna side. And otherwise, even though they were under attack, they were pretty much under control. And, and I never saw really a big risk that they would get like a, like a goal like I saw by Luxembourg, even if it didn't happen. Yeah. So it's a little bit like I predicted, isn't it? You didn't predict it to zero. You said that Vienna <laughs> probably, is, and I said, look, if you look at the statistics, still, if Vienna uh, lost against Molde 6 0 and Luxembourg 12 0, this is a, I mean, I, I have the, 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 the feeling that Luxembourg built up a little bit and are playing yes, better than yes, they play absolutely. maybe against Molde. Come on, Luxembourg. Um, you have uh, one and a half minutes left. Use this last, last bit of power that is left and uh, start one of these attacks that could be able for you to score. Yeah, it's the last chance. I mean, the last minute and they should be really in control of the ball and try to create or oh, there. They, they have the there. one yes, player nice, attacking nice from position the here on and the they open keep side. passing and being in position of the ball. The next player from uh, Luxembourg, well played. Felix, is in position of the ball and trying to pass it to the next player. I mean, great defense by the Austrian team. And a nice but attack. better, better consolidate and and yes. and they, they they had like two three waves there on the side. Uh, they could control the ball, pass it farther, and and create tension. So that's the only way to force a mistake. Well, we have the next player trying to come on the close side, and attack or try to attack um, the one side of the goalie. Didn't happen, and there's still like next uh, player is 35 seconds. There's still building up and coming from every corner. The the fans here are, you know, uh, 
rooting for uh, for Luxembourg. They want at least a goal. If they continue like this, maybe they, they can force it, uh, this mistake in uh, Vienna that just recovered the ball. And there's 14 seconds, still in the half of Vienna. The Vienna players, now I see that the, 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 the Luxembourg players more in control and the Vienna players are a little bit more um, hectic agitated, and a little bit yeah. agitated. So Nevertheless, uh, they have the ball, they're going to... like is over and yeah. uh, we will restart the network. Don't worry if Two you're zero offline. 2-0 for Vienna. Congratulations the very much. Seconds. Yeah, 2-0. And we will exactly, be back. don't freak out if... Uh, the uh, streaming is out. Do you think everybody would freak out? Anybody of course. Freak out? Then I get the messages. Huh. Let know why it's not working. So we see the replay now um, of the scores. So, coming up, who's coming up? I don't think we're live right now. Well, I can see. Uh, we are still online. If um, I'm, I'm asking the audience if uh, the, the live streams break, they still can write comments, right? Let us know yeah. for the what I can see here on the channel. Ah, live stream offline. Okay. So, Nevertheless, we can talk. Um, I like to talk to you, Lorena. Do you? Yes. Really? Yes, yes, yes. But as do you like to listen you to me? <laughs> exactly. As long as you don't answer, I like to talk to you. <laughs> um, great game from Luxembourg. Um, they yep. really evolved uh, throughout the game. They really okay, recovered. We are back online. Really we are back online. Uh, we just uh, said uh, it was a really... Hola. 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 It was a really great game from Luxembourg and uh, the way they improved, there's, there's a lot of potential in this team and they did a very good job. Yeah, big heart back to you. Great, great uh, job really. They, they build up, they continue fighting and really it was, it was a very big improvement from the, from the first. Was. So next game coming up, Lorena, you wanted to tell me and I interrupted you. I'm so sorry about that, but can you tell me which... Who is coming up? Yes. Judy? And Firenze from Italy. Zurich against Firenze. Ah, yeah. interesting game. So they play earlier today against. Uh, let me see how they. Um, Firenze had Colombia. Against Colombia, but, but. as a rule of thumb, and at this uh, level of competition, if you are with nine, you are in a disadvantage. This we can say. Okay, Zurich in uh, blue. And uh, Firenze in white. What, what's your guess? Give me a guess. Lorena, come on, give me a guess. No, because then the, 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 the chat will get on fire. We can, we can say it like this, like a Buddhist uh, riddle. Everybody will win. Inexperienced. Uh, Whatever. And gray hairs. Gray hairs. <laughs> I won. Okay. Then, then I'm already winning here. All right, so, no, I really, I don't know. I have no idea. I don't have a guess. Uh, between Zurich and Fidenza, I think really anything is possible. And I'm very curious to see uh, how it's going to be. Any guess from the audience? Do we have uh, Italians? Do we have Swiss uh, fans I think watching? the fans from Switzerland <laughs> will say <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> Switzerland <laughs> will, and... The Italian fans will vote for their team. That's how it is. You yeah. think? Yeah. How I always think, but I think this, yes. So it's um, half past seven here in Berlin. It's already dark and uh, getting cold. Um, the teams are getting uh, into the area to play and go to their hotels at once afterwards. One minute to start. This is the last five games, including these, and then um is uh, until tomorrow morning where we start again at eight o'clock so we have uh the player so we have now the uh players of Zurich trying to attack but um didn't succeed and now uh is Firenze in a counter attack 
Uh, one player that's been held, and the next Italian player just arrived. That's Antonio, I think, trying to attack from the bottom. Didn't it's succeed, and yeah, and, and uh, uh, Firenze is, is dominating this game right now. Uh, but here we see a counter attack from Switzerland. And I just have to say it, and you to see a different, a different view. Okay, that's risky because I mean uh, the the goalkeeper Firenze was all was alone. More in, yeah, and was more in, in control, and, and just they were concentrating on the attack, and yeah. they they took them that too long close. to go back to defend their basket. So if this one player would have pushed uh, the goalkeeper up. That would have been a, a score for them. But now we're back in the middle of the pool. And holding without ball. So against it's a free Firenze. throw against Firenze. Throwing without ball. Low free throw. Firenze had a lot of chances on the, the Swiss basket, but couldn't uh, execute their, their uh, scoring. So we are now with the uh, to mm, drill really into right the defense, and no goalkeeper. The the attacker uh, managed to pull the goalkeeper upwards, and this is this is the point where, as a dominating team, like in the last minutes we saw, you really have to be careful when you switch from offense into defense, so you don't uh, catch the 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 ball, the the score here, because. Uh, you're too much on the offense side. Yeah, I mean, this switching from attacking to defending um, sometimes is what really... It's difficult, yeah. But uh, Italy is all alone, and all alone, and all alone, and, uh, and uh, lost the ball against the Swiss player. A little bit more than four minutes left in this first half. Now we have uh, one of the Zurich players trying to bring the ball toward the uh, Italian side, being stopped in the middle, brought back, and now they're fighting in the middle of the game, and one of the Italians is paddling to bring the ball and the people away from the Italian basket. And we have um, a cluster, I can see, I think it's the Italian uh, uh, player have been in position, being held by, but uh, the referees are showing, yeah, struggling, struggling, okay, struggling, uh, yeah, uh, and so free throw for uh, Firenze. So let's see, they're three meters away. So let's see if they can take advantage of this um, of this situation. Uh, it, it's uh, the it ball? It's I mean really they interesting. They, they didn't manage to score yet. Warning, blue team. Yeah. Rush behavior. Warning for the entire team. Yeah, so Rush warning. behavior. Why free throw? Uh, if uh, you are really under pressure, um, like, right like in this situation, you, you start to play rougher probably to look, fend off. Look, one of the Italians just uh, stole the basket and, and the, the Swiss uh, didn't take, you know, you have to have two meters away you have three from... three seconds to do the pass. Blue free throw. Oh, uh, don't tell me that Italy got... Lost uh, the free throw, the yeah. Three, okay. For people that is watching and didn't understand what happened just now, for the free throw, there's, uh, it has to be done within three seconds. The person that executing it cannot move. Uh, if the person moves or takes longer than three, they lose they lose the the chance for the free throw. That's what happened to Italy. But before then, what happened that uh, the Swiss team got um, got a warning because they were not. Uh, I mean, they need to be uh, at least two meters away, away from the one with the ball, so that the referee can allow the other team to have the free throw. That didn't happen, and uh, they, they were having like a rough be uh, behavior. So but now yeah, Switzerland is really attacking. But uh, Switzerland is really now attacking the basket yeah. and putting a lot of effort here and trying to score in the last uh, two minutes, and it's a uh, it's a pressure on the Italian basket. And Italy really has to get their stuff together not to catch a goal here in this in this last two minutes. Italy in ball possession, heavy fighting in the middle. And it's a really physical night round. You see a little bit of frustration the way the, the players play. There's a lot of... Uh, the movements are different uh, if you play in a, in a more aggressive style. 
And you see it in both teams. They are a little bit uh, frustrated and angry now. Cool. Call from the referee. Who is frustrated and angry? Why? Why free throw? And it's a free throw again. You know, with all Why these fault throw? playing, with, with the struggling and, and, and the strangling. And, and, One and minute left. Yeah. It, it is a sign that, yes. that both teams are well, most frustrated of the and overwhelmed. Most of the free throws are being for in favor of uh, Flo of uh, Firenze, Firenze of Italy see. that means that the Swiss are the ones uh, doing the most of the of the fault and so that's but the, the the game right until now is amazing from Switzerland how they uh, keep uh, Firenze off with nine players so they are must be really exhausted uh, in their uh, it's a third game yeah that's a third game for the day and uh, Firenze not yet managed to score ball is falling down and now no it's a Antonio. good chance no and again. pass it to the next one and they need to t try to get b there's one player underneath so if he can get the pass on the close side that could maybe be a that was close and now a um lot of pressure a lot of pressure on the swiss basket but they don't make many mistakes you don't see many gaps um for for yeah. for the for the italians to score in so it's okay half time well done yep uh, half time and uh, three minutes break, then the teams change side, and uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm curious, uh, the second half, if uh, Switzerland can, you know, get some strength out and, and use what they did in the first half to I push a little bit further. Okay. Well, the, 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 the thing is, Italy was like I expected, dominating the game with uh, more exchange players and more air um, um, to exchange. But um, yeah. they, they, could, they didn't succeed to score. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and Switzerland had its chances. At least I saw three chances for Switzerland. And they need they needed only one goal if, if uh, Italy doesn't score. So this is really dangerous. Uh, uh, what I try to say is Italy is dominating the game, but Switzerland does a good job in, uh, in every challenging them. Yes, yes, yes. So it's, it's totally open. I couldn't predict, uh, as you know, I'm a good predictor, but uh, in this moment I couldn't predict how this uh, game will end. Could be no, on both sides. No, it's open really because, again, even uh, Italy is dominating the game. The few times that Zurich arrived to their basket, it was very, very close for them to score. So um, we have to see if Zurich can, I don't know, uh, get a bit more dominant on, on the game and see if that changes. If we have seen in many of the, of the, of the games uh, that uh, the, the team that wasn't doing that great at the beginning then uh, start playing better, better to together and, and, and sometimes even you know, changed um, the, the, um, the score. So uh, let's see. Let's see if uh, Switzerland, but again, they have nine players. I believe Italy had 14. Um, and so, as we mentioned already there, they have a disadvantage. So, um, and it's the third game of the day. Today is no, still no. okay, but maybe tomorrow and after tomorrow. Six players. Six players in the water to start the game. 22 what? seconds until the beginning of the game. This is the, the second entire half. Team warning, shoulder in the basket. Okay, shoulder in the basket for Six players. the Swiss Six players, team. Oh, the white team, I think the white team. The they white uh, team? Yes, uh, I think it's the white team warning to the white team. Are you ready? Okay. I thought it looked are like we were talking to, sorry. All right, are you ready, Lorena? The game I'm starts. I'm always ready. Y you, was, you were born ready, I know. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, Italy first ball contact, uh, playing over the Swiss players. This could be a dangerous start if Italy really no, gets think, its stuff together and pushes hard mid with pressure on the Swiss basket. It's one of the teams has to score, otherwise their frustration will both be really, really high. Okay, from the close side attack now from Italy. Good ball control. They are still controlling the ball, trying to push in from the close side but there is a cluster building up yet two players fighting the italian player broke free S ball still in possession of 
Firenze, but they cannot really manage to leave their corner. And there is a player waiting on the open side. But uh, oh. now would be have the, the yeah, timing, yeah, but yeah. Uh, it was a little bit too late. And the player on the open side had to leave. And so it's taking a bit, of, a little bit of time. Now it's one against the goalie from above. Um, the, the Swiss uh, team really can, because it's not like attacking together two, three at the time. They're coming a little bit more in, in with the timing is a little bit off, and so the Swiss team can really completely mm, dis disrupt the the attack. And I don't see the Swiss tiring uh, uh, tiring down. Um, they they are really on spot. They are really the Swiss, you mean? yeah the Swiss and uh, they have less players. But uh, you don't see it. Uh, right now in the defending, they're really on spot. Hey, here we go. The goalie cut, caught the ball. Wow, and we got counter attack. And this is. Wow, this oh is yeah a one yeah on one yeah situation. Yeah yeah that could be a chance for Switzerland. Ah, ah he yeah threw yeah the ball yeah and didn't God. manage to put it in the basket. That it was, was uh, recovered by the Italian player who uh, is under immediate attack by a Swiss player. That was close and oh, I feel a little bit that sorry that for the player. player. I would he be put crying a lot tonight. of effort yes, into this attack. It was really great. So uh, lucky for Italy and uh, sadly uh, for for Switzerland. Yeah, because that moment. was great catch That's from yep. the... Well, very well done. Yep. And he put a lot of effort in it. I know the moment when you just uh, we had your chance and you, yes, didn't make it. And it was almost an empty basket. So yeah. anyway, something happened. But uh, you, you, you see the, the, the box of chocolate uh, uh, that Switzerland is. Rough behavior. Rough, Rough behavior. behavior. Free throw, throw, throw for Zurich. The what, what's with the box of chocolate? What are well, you talking about? Switzerland is like a box of chocolate. You never know what you get. So it's the moment they you thought, okay, now they count a goal and they go for a massive counter you attack. You stole that from Forrest Gump. I yes, I did. I, it, yeah. I, I admit it, I stole okay. it from Forrest Gump. Back in the game and Switzerland is really now uh, smelling blood here and going for the Italian goal. And it's, it's, it's tight here for Italy because Switzerland is relentless in their attack and they have a really good ball possession coming in from both sides. Not with this many players down there, but nevertheless, they put pressure on it. Then the defense of Italy is not that wide awake here. Uh, there's a lot of uh, possibilities. Yeah, that's and it's getting chaotic. And when it gets chaotic, it gets Yeah, and dangerous. it's getting chaotic in the favor of uh, Switzerland Swi here. Yes, yes, because Switzerland is coming really with, with a lot of uh, consistency. Yeah. They Amazing. They keep coming. Yeah. Respect to Switzerland for the last uh, minute we saw here. There was just... Uh, that was like the, the, the uh, I don't know, the English expression to tell something that really surprises you. And again, we are still um, at the Italian basket and we see gaps there. We see uh, the chances, but th this could be point of Italy now holds on to the ball and uh, take their camp right in the, in the, in the corner and uh, hold on to the ball. They could uh, wait until the end to score. So this is Three really minutes. yeah. This is like a like a, like a crime scene, yeah. <laughs> like 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 a thriller going on here. I'm really fascinated by both teams. Yeah, well, counter attack from Switzerland. That is coming up. Pass it to the middle. In Call the middle, the we referee? have the counter attack no, continuing. Yeah. Then the next player is on, and we have still you know Italian players in position, but. The uh, Swiss players coming from the close side trying to get to the goalie. Two other. Uh, how is it mit Spieler in English? Uh, teammates. Teammates, thank you. Um, it's really. Now, now, because of the bubbles, I can't see much where Robert the ball is. Balls. Why free throw? Okay, free throw for Italy. I couldn't see what happened because of the bubbles. What kind of uh, uh, fault was it? It looks like holding Robert without ball. ball. He has to show the ball. And when he shows the ball, the ball has to be in the surface of the water. And then remember, you have the three seconds, and then you have to pass it. You cannot move, otherwise, you do all these tactical uh, mistakes. It's a foul, and you lose the free throw. So we have Switzerland now that recovered that. And, and in theory, I mean, the free throw is an advantage for the team that has the ball. 
but a lot of times, sadly, it goes the wrong way. Like now, you can see after the free throw, Switzerland attacking uh, Florence. Colombia will be playing after this game, so in less than two minutes we yeah, have... Yeah, but we are still in this game, I Lorena. I know, but the, the, the fans are asking, uh -huh. so I'm clar <laughs> so clarifying And it, the time. it's not over yet. Um, Switzerland no, no, no. Is look, oh, look at this, this attack. This is really, really risky. It can happen so fast. Um, Switzerland is really doing magic yes, here. Yes, yes, yes. They really Amazing change. Guys. They they build up a lot. I mean, from from being uh, Italy uh, completely and or almost much in control. Now yep. mm, they are only reacting to the Swiss game. And remember, Switzerland is only with nine players. So respect. One minute left. One minute One left. Minute left. Quite amazing. Um, uh, really, all my respect to the Swiss players. Yep. So we have and the next Italy really is like uh, is holding all. on Both to the goal teeth. with their teeth. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a That's a funny game. Uh, well that was a little bit risky. Has to be careful with the with the shoulder because remember they got a warning and that means the next one that has the shoulder in the basket uh, means as a time penalty and they will have to put a, a, a player out because they got all uh, a team a warning with children in the basket. So you have to be very, very careful with that. Eh, Orcas juega luego de este juego. In 20 seconds, um, a little bit less uh, for this game. And then we have Orcas uh, that's going to play against uh, Triton Barum. So we have now Italy in a last attempt to attack. I mean, 1-0. They should be clever now. One second left. One zero for Firenze. Fantastic game for these two teams. I mean, Wolf and I were really sitting at the at the at the at the, at the very uh, um, corner of the chair uh, because it was really, really um, a great. Uh, it was like a thriller. Yep. So one zero. Fantastic effort. I mean, amazing how Switzerland built up. Uh, and uh, start putting really uh, uh, Florence in a, in a, in a, in a very um, tight spot. But they manage, they score the goal, they keep it, so uh, Firenze, mm, Italy wins over Switzerland. That was an uh, impressive game. Um, and uh, uh, even though I would say it was not a high quality game uh, from the from the play we saw you know the the, the, the tactic the, yeah mean, tactics not, not exactly not it was but yeah. it was was played with heart yes and it was uh, with great. everything there is and this is also the the spectrum we have in underwater rugby from this beautiful underwater rugby to this hard played with everything they have nine players switzerland amazing um i think uh italy earned this win from the first half? Well, it's I mean, I think Switzerland also earned it. I mean, both, I mean, they did a great job. And I mean, that was really, oh. Yeah. Mm. So uh, actually, it, it was very, very tight. At the, the last minute, we didn't know what was going to happen. So, wow, well, congratulations. And now is Orcas coming up uh, against, uh, from Colombia, against uh, Triton Berum from the Czech Republic. Yes. And that's going to be an interesting game. I'm allowed to say some things uh, in Spanish or are, are going the fans to get uh, Colombia. Se viene Colombia. I'm sorry that I cannot speak in Czech, but they can come and teach us some words that we can try. Um, the reason why I speak a little bit of Spanish um, is because not many Spanish people that audiences. are family yes. from the players and speak a lot of English. So I hope you don't feel that I'm not treating both teams equally. If I could speak Czech, I would. Wolf, what about us as next for next year Ooh. to learn a little bit of Finnish yes. and Czech so oh, we can do Finnish. some commentary? I prefer Czech, I guess. Um, yeah, this is, uh, like I said before, I'm looking forward to this game because there are really two different styles uh, meeting in the water. My guess is Triton Barun will have problems with uh, the speed of the 
Colombians. Not that Triton Baroon is a slow team, not at all, but with the, the game speed of the Colombians, that will be difficult for Triton. And what will be difficult for Colombians if they get in reach of the Triton Baroon players who are used to this kind of uh, physical um, contact playing. So I, w I will really be interesting and. Um, I tend to Colombia from uh, where I put would put my money, but um, you're going to put your money in Colombia. Yes, okay. I would put my money in Colombia, but Triton Baru brought me beer, so uh <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to travel with them. <laughs> yes, <laughs> really difficult situation for me, and I love the um, Czech guys. It's it's amazing their game and their their fun they have on playing. It's really yeah brothers in heart um, so huh, I'm curious I, I really want to see this game now because I cannot really identify the the way these two teams will react with each other do we have uh, Czech fans uh, in the audience tenemos a colombianos en uh, la audiencia que ya hace ya están hace 15 minutos conectados y me, me colapsan el chat, chicos. A ver, vamos. ¿Cuánta gente de Colombia está mirando? ¿Qué hora es en Colombia? And what about the Czech fans? Are you watching from home? How many people are there online? We have about 200 people. Um, In the last so year? All together? Mm, yes, yes, yes. So people In tell between, us, what is, what is your guess? Um, if you're neutral as we are, what is your estimation for this game? What, what are you facing here? In the you're asking me or you're asking the people? Uh, no, the people, the audience. What is the... Um, it, it, it's, it's not a... Um, uh, who's better or worse? No, but how, it's gonna, how but the dynamics what, gonna be, yes. right? What do you guess will happen when these two teams meet now? I really have no idea because um, <laughs> I think, if I remember correctly, in the past years when um, the Colombian team had to play against um, against um, God, uh, the Czech Republic, I remember that they had a hard time because yes. they couldn't go I through. So too, yeah. But it was Denmark yeah. too. Yeah, and I think this, uh, that that's the thing. Uh, um, like I said, uh, Colombians can play fast, but the 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 Peru players are when they they bunker in when they they defend massively, and this is going to be what interesting minutes? how One Colombia minute. with a fast play try to break open the defense. And if what happens if Triton Baroon breaks through and goes for the counter attack? I think the, the uh, time of ball possession will be more on the side of the Colombians, but I'm not sure what will happen here in the end. Are you excited, Lorena? I'm so yes. excited! Well, let's just get excited! I am really. I'm ready too. Here we go! All right, Colombia almost uh, the same time at the ball. Triton Baru in ball possession. Really fast game we are seeing here going forward to the Colombian basket. And it's a little bit chaotic here. One on one fights. And uh, you see both teams are uh, testing each other. Ah, and Colombia is coming attacking. to the basket of the Triton Baru team. Nice play, but uh, th we are on the open side and the Colombians do their usual back and forth game, but they didn't succeed that much. Oh, that was, was almost that was the first goal. They're coming one after Wasn't the other. In? I mean, it's non-stop. That was really Passing close. The ball, yeah, because the goalie was alone and they were attacking from the bottom and the Colombians can be good on that. Uh, However, the defenders are doing a great job from Triton Berum. Yep, uh, don't uh, underestimate their counterattacks if they break through um, with their really solid playing style. But here, Colombia is, is just a little bit ahead, it's a little bit faster on the ball, checking and going in. 
here on the other side, the open side, it, it's really burning here. There's really fire under the uh, basket of the uh, Czech Republic, but they it's resolved really it a breakthrough. Game. Yes. yes, really physical. Yes. We have, I mean, the Czech guys are big guys. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, they are used I with like this to contact. Meet them yeah. <laughs> it's, they are used to this contact playing. Yeah. The Colombians too. I think there there is no um, hesitation here. But nevertheless, that's a different style, and it's uh, amazing. Now we see Triton Baru for the first time on the Colombian basket, and uh, Triton player tries to be in the corner. Colombia takes it slow right now, and now we see the. Colombian starting their forechecking attack on the Trichon Peru players. I think they, yes, uh, ball back again. How fast they switched. Did you see that? How fast they went from the one side into the defense mode and already they are on the, on the basket of the Czech Republic and putting pressure onto it. It's not no help there. They really go and attack. What happened? Sorry, what did I miss? Warning I was away for a few minutes. Ah, hold on. Attack equipment, blue free throw. So it's a free throw for the Colombians because the uh, uh, Czech player attacked the equipment. It's, it's so fascinating to see how uh, Colombia is dealing with um, the Czech Republic game. It's, it's testing, it's like looking, where are the weak spots? Where can we go in, back and forth? Oh, that was nice, almost intercepted by Triton Baroon. Don't underestimate them, even if you have this, this effortless play here of, of the Colombians. Uh, the Baroon player are up for it, and that was an attack on the open side on the head of the uh, goalkeeper. Didn't succeed. Still the ball is in the... Oh, that is the score! Wow. That was, that was just that broke open the, the defense and put so much pressure in that there was no defender under the basket and uh, the player from Colombia pulled up uh, the Triton Baroon goalkeeper and pushed the ball in. Amazing. Fantastic game. Yes, I'm... I'm uh, wow. That was really about it has it took four almost four minutes to score. I mean, and, and the the... And it's not over yet. The Czech, no, no, ball no. Possession. the Czech team has done. Ah, this this fighting in the middle, call holding uh, from the referee, holding. call from the referee holding without ball. Blue free throw. Dangerous holding. situation now. Blue free throw free from throw. the uh, Colombians. They execute really fast. Uh, so they don't give uh, the, the opponent team time to reestablish uh, their dominance on their own basket and back again. Uh, Triton now Baroon tries to break through the forward checking defense of the Colombians, but they, they are really under pressure and they cannot establish any kind of uh, attack pattern because they are interrupted really fast. Ball is... Uh, on the ground, and here we go. Colombia is coming from above into the La verde basket area. Dani, por el lado abierto. Wow, these passes are so effortless and Están so fast. La de un Whoa, lado and otro. I said, no la ven los checos. Muy bien, el equipo de Orcas. I hope uh, we see that in replay. Look, look how he passed the ball scored. forward. He pass, passes him back, behind the back. El número cuatro. And he goes in and throws the ball from the top into the basket. And there was, again, a Colombian player on the close side to push the ball finally in. Wow. El número cuatro, Daniel. Dani hizo el gol. So, 3-0, and we have uh, one and a half minute to go in this first half. And uh, Triton uh, really has to put on their gloves, or put off their gloves, and uh, try to get closer to the Colombian basket, which is not easy against these uh, omnipresent players from Colombia. 
A ver, el equipo de Orcas que acaba de recuperar el balón no es fácil contra los checos. Los checos también son fuertes, eh, tiene un juego bastante físico, si bien eh, Orcas está dominando la partida, tienen que tener cuidado porque un contraataque de los checos podría ser también peligroso. Eh, a ver, con tanta burbuja no veo. So I, I'd say this is the first test of Colombia sí. um, in this uh, championship, this Champions Cup uh, 2022. And they, they definitely dominate the game. Y el ataque por arriba, pase wow. para el otro lado. Yes. Y gol. Wow. No sé al final si lo hizo el que estaba intentando pasar el balón. A ver. This, this level of teamwork, if you see it, where the one player comes mechanic. from the, the, the open yes. side and sí, helps bon the other one to score. There's always Pensé two players ready. Oviedo, pero no, vale. Él estaba tratando de apoyar a, al, al, que, a, al que venía con el balón. Así es. Okay. And Trishan Barun is going back here. Half time. And half time. Half time. Um, wow. Bueno, eh, wow in every direction. 4-0 para Orcas. Um, ahora estamos en el tiempo de 3 minutos para cambiar de lado. Y bueno, o sea, Orcas con un equipo fuerte, moviendo muy rápidamente el balón, recuperándose eh, de, lo, de los ataques de, de, de los checos. O sea, tienen completamente el dominio, tienen un juego muy rápido. Si bien los checos tienen un juego muy físico, eh, no están pudiendo reaccionar a la velocidad. ¿no? I'm saying that, uh, that Orcas has a speed, that even though Triton Berum is, has a physical game and, and they're good, I mean, the speed that uh, yeah. Orcas yeah. Uh, it makes it the, the Triton Berum players dizzy. They don't know yes, anymore. Yes, Eventually, yes. they're completely lost. And, and I think, and I remember, I talked to the Triton players last time and they told me they play you dizzy. I think that's exactly yeah. what they say because it's just like, yes, we are experienced. Yes, we know the game. Yes, we can play contact. But, but this is just... A little bit too fast to follow them throughout an attack or throughout this pressure because you have to deal with your rare, you have to deal with your position and you have to follow the ball and this is just uh, yeah, a little bit too much. Amazing uh, game Incredible. but also from Triton Baroon because 4-0 uh, is not that bad for the first half and they fought hard. But you can see the exhaustion and the level um, of demand. Uh, you, you think demand. that the team is already exhausted? Yeah. Or what? Well, Triton Baroon, they look a little bit like, wow, what is happening? I yeah, I think they look a little bit dizzy more than exhausted yeah. yet. At um, Colombia, ¿cómo vamos? 4 a 0 para el masculino de Orcas. Okay. Viene ahora, se viene el segundo two, tiempo, queda menos de un minuto. Los chicos de Orcas dominando el partido, sin embargo tienen que tener cuidado porque los checos son fuertes, eh, tienen bastante juego físico, entonces si se descuidan con un ataque pudieran hacer un gol. Sin embargo, 4 a 0, o sea, están ya bastante adelante, el marcador está bien, podríamos decir que seguramente ganan el partido, pero en estos juegos de la Champions nunca 